I wanted to catch you before you started the day's mad world. Now, don't get worried. I only want a little chat with you. I've got a deal with you, sir. So shut up. It's money in your pocket. Now then, I have got a line that you couldn't buy anywhere cheaper this side of Taiwan. Now, all I want to know is, will you be in that sumptuous office of yours about uh, 11 o'clock this morning? You will? Oh, well, that's great. Well, uh, tell that girl of yours to dust the scotch bottle off, get a clean glass out, and I'll see you there then. Yeah. <laughs> now, don't you plead poverty to me, mate. You don't even know the meaning of the word. That is the greatest gift that God can bestow on you, that is. The ability to chat up your fellow man. And your fellow woman, by the looks of this. So lipstick, I found it on your bathroom floor. Get away! And I don't suppose it's yours. No, wrong shade. Must be Elsie Tanner. She was here last night. She was? Yeah. You know, Hilda, you are one of those delightful people that can see bad in everything. I had to entertain a client, and Elsie was kind enough to make up the foursome. Oh, uh, she wasn't with you then. You was with somebody else. That's right. I was with somebody else. And I'm wearing my red briefs with a blue piping. Now, is that it? Well, don't think I'm nosy, because I'm not. No, I'm just surprised you took Elsie Tanner, that's all. Shouldn't have thought she was good for anybody's business. How did you get on then, kid? How did he get on well? Your night out last night with Mike and that other fella. Oh, was it on the radio? I missed it. Was it on the 8 o'clock news? Oh, come on, Elsie. You've lived round here all your life. Didn't you hear the town crier? Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. Yeah, we've got a good few of them around here, haven't we? No, as a matter of fact, it was very nice. A good time was had by all. Good. Couldn't have happened to a nicer girl. Was he all right then, your fella? No, no. I don't mind sharing my dolly mixtures, oh, but when Oh, like he... that, is it? Go on, up it. Right. Now, what do you want me to do with this? Do you want me to change it to get your money back? Mind you, it could be difficult, because it's not the same catalogue as last year. And this lot are a bit on the tight side. I could probably get your credit slip through, though. Oh, I'll leave it as it is. OK. By the way, hmm? did Frankie turn up at your celebrations? Mike's dad? No, why? No, I just wondered. He was in the Rovers last night, and uh, I thought happened he... But apparently he didn't. See ya. Oh, I suppose it's a silly thing to keep you awake at night. Oh, well, it'll keep me awake at night, I can tell you. Wondering how to spend it. No, I can see Emily's point of view. Well, I can see both sides, really. Look, Arnold caused you a lot of pain and suffering, didn't he? So why don't you treat this money as a sort of, well, like a reward, you know, for all the aggro? I don't want paying for that, Alf. In fact, it's because of that. I... Oh, I don't know. Why me? Two thousand pounds is a lot of money and I wasn't even his wife. Isn't it wonderful? I, I never thought I'd be able to talk about it like this. Well, you can. And listen, stop changing the subject. Get yourself off home, get into your glad rags, call yourself a taxi, get into Manchester and spend, spend, spend. Because in case nobody's ever told you, love, that's what money's for. She's right, you know. On the other hand... C can't I... you just tell he's a politician? <laughs> oh, it's the happy hour. Everything half price, is it? Oh, aye, we're full of them tricks. What do you want? Now, seeing as you're a pal of mine, I'm going to tell you. What were them cigars Baldwin smoked? Not Mike, his dad. Oh, these, you mean? That's them. Because I remember last time he came, we hadn't got him and he had to come here. Can I have a couple of packets, yeah. Al? Oh, well, I'd better get off. All right. Bye. 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 And, uh, thanks for the advice. Oh, why? What advice is that, then? Don't worry, she won't take it. Oh, keep it to yourself. Hey, and what, you up to? Sending old fellow some a late Christmas present. Well, he's up here, love. You saw him, didn't you? Yeah, but I'm not buying him no cigars. Ah, well, you see, I always believe in giving the customer exactly what they want. The minute they walk in, up to a point. Have a happy day. Sorry, Vera, what can I get you? I'm daydreaming. Oh, it happens to us all, kid. Did I have your in a biscuit? Yes, she did, and they're here. Oh. There you are. Hey, well, listen, can I take them now and you'll get money off her? Honest, she's not in today. She's got a terrible cold. We haven't got a biscuit in place. Aye, go on. Oh, thanks. You are kind. I wish everybody were like you. Why? Who's been getting you down? Oh, it's, it's not getting me down. It's just that when it comes to perks, some get locked, don't they? And such as us, we get no. No, like last night, Baldwin, you know, we're taking this customer out and he wanted uh, somebody to, you know, go with him, like make a foursome up. And uh, they were going to this big posh restaurant. And he didn't pick you? Do they ever? I mean, ask yourself. Do they ever ask people like me and I, don't know, with that flaming Elsie Tanner? When it comes to up like that, she gets flaming lot. She does. There's no justice in this world, you know. And I'm not just saying that, I mean it. Now, that just proves what I always say about women. You can't do right for doing wrong. 
What were he like then, this stock old fella? Very nice, Ida. Very nice indeed. Married, is he? Oh, yeah. He's got two grown-up kids. Where's that tea? How old do you reckon he is? 55? 56? I didn't ask him. You saw him. You know as much as I do. <laughs> I bet I don't. It wasn't like that. Oh, not before time. But it was very nice. We had a very pleasant evening out. Ah, but I bet it didn't cost you out, though, did it? I should hope not. I was helping out. Well, anybody could have helped out. I could have helped out. I dare say you could, Ida, but he asked me. Hey, she's trying to say no to happen with that stockwell fella last night. Oh, I Didn't it fancy you then? It wasn't like that, there. They're not all grab and tickle merchants, you know. All right. Out of my class, what I think. Well, work it out for yourself, love. They wore a collar and tie. Are you tricky, devil? There's more than you had the fair share of fellas, you know. Yes, but we don't grab them off market stall, all of us. Now, there's no wrong with Now, look here. I wish to goodness Mike hadn't asked me if this goes on. I'd have much sooner preferred a quiet night at home. <laughs> Bet you would. Yeah, me and all. If you felt like that, why didn't you say no? Then happen Baldwin and that's one of us for a change. <sighs> if it goes on like this, perhaps next time I will. Now, forget it. Oh, did Mike say... He took us all. It was his treat. No, I mean, which one of his girlfriends did he say? I know he didn't take Josie, cos I were here when she sent a message to say she couldn't come. No, it wasn't Josie. Well, all right, then. Right, that's Sonia that used to come in here. Look, leave it. It's none of your business. We're only asking yeah. you. Fayek, how close can you get? Look, we're entitled to a bit of gossip, cos heaven knows we're getting no else. Well, you'll not get it from me. Well, what harm does it do, eh? We're only asking. See, kid? I won't fire wrong, were I? What do you mean? Well, it was that Sylvie, wasn't it? Oh, oh, fella's bit of stuff. Look, William, once and for all. I mean, listen, if it had been one of his regular girlfriends, you wouldn't have kept it to yourself. There it I... would have. I'm telling you for the last time, leave it alone. Forget it. Oh, I will. And she'll forget it, won't you, Ida? But will the old fella forget it when he finds out? Because it might happen to interest you, he's up here. I happen to know he's up here, and he won't get to know from me, as a matter of fact. Nor from you, neither. Now, if you're feeling disgruntled because Mike asked me instead of you, now take it out on me, but don't go stirring it where there's not to stir. No, to stir? And he's taking his dad's girlfriend now? Oh, don't come the old acid. Nothing happened. Oh, well, in that case, there's no harm in telling him stuff. Do you want a refill? Who else it is? That is. Oh, that no, no. No, the thing is... It's a pity you're not as good at window cleaning. But then you wouldn't be, would you? You don't get as much practice in. Well, where are they turn pro, them fellas? What fellas? Fellas on the telly. There's money in that, you know. Is that your ambition? To play darts on telly with a pint of bitter in your hand? <laughs> Oh, what am I saying? Ambition, it's your idea of heaven, is that? No, joking apart. If I got my game on the right outside the board batter, I'd give them a run for their money, I'll tell you. They're only human. They can hit the wire just like us. And let's face it, you're halfway there, aren't you? I mean, you've got the belly for it. Ah, you may have. It'll be enough for you. Thanks, Fred. <coughs> How are things, Fred? How do you mean, how are things? Look, uh, tell me if I'm sticking my nose in, but... We are concerned. I'm just wondering if you had any news. What news? What about Eunice? Is she coming back? Oh, yeah, she'll be coming back. When County win the cup. Oh, could happen, Fred. Oh, it'll happen all right when she gets tired. You know, tired of that posh hotel, the posh cars, posh holidays. Then she'll come back to little Freddie, won't she? And we can do an outright. Fred. And when it gets chivied from pillar to post, oh, yeah, she, she's got a bread butter to Eunice. Give her a good idiot any day. Eh? She'll probably at the door now. See if it's there. Go on, see if she's there. I'm sorry, Fred. Yeah, so you should be as well, all of you. You all put your two pen in, didn't you? Oh, for a social worker, that wasn't totally successful. Well, you can't win them all, love. No, but I don't need to lose quite so comprehensively. Well, I shouldn't bother upsetting yourself all the same. I mean, he's brought it on himself. Fellows like that don't deserve wives. Here, is it true what we've heard? That Henry Bishop's come into a fortune from that Doolally husband of hers, or whatever you want to call him. Somebody said it were £50,000. Well, as I understand it, Hilda, it's 2000 And she doesn't want it. Not for herself, anyway. <laughs> she doesn't what? After what he did to her, made her life a flipping misery. Oh, I mean to say, I know money can't recompensate her for everything, but by the heck it helps. Do you that, Stan? You better leave her a packet. You can leave out your sarky remarks and all. 
What's she going to do with it then, all that money? Oh, don't ask me, Hilda. She's got an essential, blew it on something daft. I know I would. Oh, heck, it's all right for some, isn't it? And here's me wondering if I'll ever get a new stair carpet. It's true what they say, you know. One half the world doesn't know how the other half lives. Well, somebody ordered flipping beans. Well, it weren't me. I only have these. Oh, flaming marvellous, isn't it? I go up at flaming things and I end up with something I don't even like. Do you want half of my peas? Yeah, I'll have half your peas. Well, take half then if it'll stop you mithering on. Hello, hello, hello. Stand by your bed. Oh, well, well, look what wind's blowing in. Yeah. Did you find that lad of yours? No. No, I haven't. I'm still trying. I went round a pound of his last night. No sign. Again this morning. No sign. Is he keeps trying to avoid me? Could be. Yes. Hey, did you know your young lady's up here? Yeah, I know that. What do you think I'm up here for? Except to put a bit of excitement back into her life. <laughs> you never know. She'll be getting in her. You don't know her old folk. Anyway, he likes of my life. When that wandering boy of mine turns up, tell him I'll be round his place at one o'clock. I don't mean in the morning. Uh, Mr Baldwin? Yes? Uh, we'll tell him. Listen, don't you send me. I happen to think he has the right to know. Eat your chips while you can still enjoy them. <laughs> I know you're allowed to go out. You're a big lad now. That doesn't explain all this morning, does it? This morning I've been drumming up business and I'm taking down a few notes so I don't forget it. Oh. Business on the up and up, is it? It might be, if I don't foul this lot up. <laughs> you know, Sylvie's up here, visiting the old folks. Yeah? Do yeah. you uh, fancy a drink? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Have you seen her, have you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she popped in the pub, uh... One night, or was it lunchtime? I can't remember. Yeah. Seems not to talk about her. Uh, it's no use speaking about the bush. I've got a small uh, tax flow problem. Ah, now that's more the dad I know and love. Mm. Keep your ear on. It's just a small matter between me and the inland revenue. They want some money. More money. And they want it in readies. How much? 500. No way. Only for a couple of weeks. So let the tax man wait. It's never bothered you before, has it? I've never paid tax before. The longer I keep it waiting, <sighs> I've got to pay him interest, haven't I? So? Pay the interest? What, to them bloodsuckers? What sort of son have I got here? Haven't you got any principles, eh? It's not only me as well. It's the accountant. Sonny Lewis, you know him. You were in school with him. He's the best accountant on the south side of the river. You know that? You know what he said? I'd top myself, he said. Sooner than let any of my clients pay interest to the tax collector. So I'll lend you my black tie. You can go to his funeral. Do I take it you're turning me down, then? Ah, now we're beginning to understand each other. Sure. To them what as shall be given. Hey. I said, to them what as shall be given. Where'd you get that from? Well, it wasn't in the Sporting Chronicle, so you wouldn't know, would you? No, it's in the Bible, and it's very true, and all. I mean to say, she got left a packet when her first husband went, and blow me if second doesn't leave her a small fortune, and all. He wasn't her second husband. He's a bigamist. Oh, shut up. Oh, come on, Hilda, stand. Let's have your glasses, please. Got the horns? Come on. Flippy neck, you know, there's times I think we must have killed a policeman. Aye, uh, come on. See, Oggy. All right. You can hop it now, Bet, if you like. Not much to do, I'll manage. Have you had out to eat yet? Oh, I'll get some of myself. What's she left you through there? Bit up. Fancy a fry up? Go on, up it, I said. I told you, I'll manage. How does egg, sausage and chips grab you? Yeah, great. Coming up. And 25 rounds of bread and butter. Hey, Vet. You're not so bad, really, you, are you? You're not as bad as folk make out, really. Just watch how you lavish that praise, G. You'll have me scriking. One eight. Three kisses. Uh, Kermit the Frog, Popeye the Sailor, <laughs> oh my Frankie. <laughs> you cheated. <laughs> Is it how's the old lady? Oh, she's a lot better. Where are you? I'm at uh, Mike's place. I came last night. I would have phoned you, but uh, I had 
a business deal to fix up, which uh, didn't work out. Anyway, the sooner I see that cheeky little face of yours, the better. Have you seen Mike yet? Yeah, I saw him about five minutes. He said he'd seen you. He said you put her in the boozer or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. Uh, will I be seeing you later? Well, then, you of course. I think I'm voting you for. This is what I wanted you to do. Get your glad rags on, right? Be over here. Bring the body over here. Run about six-ish. Put the smile back on my face, OK? Don't I always? Of course. Bye. Bye. Baldwin. Oh, hello. How's it going? Oh. Well, when was this? No. No, I just told him that you called in at the pub one night, that's all. I know it's all a bad ball, but you know what he's like, don't you? Well, what did you tell him? Oh, well, let's leave it like that, eh? The less he knows, the better. I don't want to hurt his feelings either. He's my father, you know, no matter how big a con man he is. So, look, will you stop worrying? And I'll see you later, eh? Right. Oh. What's brought you in? Business, darling. You thought I was going to say you, didn't you? Bye, eh? Couldn't wait to get back to work. You must have made an impression. I'll make an impression on you in a minute. You could not skin off a rice pudding. Are us two going for a drink? Yeah, come on. Hey, take a look at that. Yeah. Love locked out. Right. So if we can... Uh... Right. Let them all come. I'm ready for out. 30 seconds yet. But well, what can you do in 30 seconds? Well, for a start, I could get my anky out of my coat. Long term, you know, 30 seconds. You should have told me, Fred. I could have done something at World Shattered. Right, near enough. We have lift off. Come on. For part time, I know it's cold. Come on, what's this? It's disgusting. Have you lot now better to do than stand outside pub doors waiting for them to open? Just do your job, we've done ours. Give us a couple of lagers. Bayek, it's neither one thing or other in that place. It's neither freezing cold or 100 and odd degrees in shade. Just feel that sweat. Go on, I'm saying myself. No, Elsie. If you can do without a lock, so can we. Oh, my God. Go away. Good evening. I, I thought you were here on business. Well, I was on there and it's finished, uh, so I thought, uh, aren't you going to ask me in? Oh, oh yes, come in. I thought it was uh, a pleasant evening last night. We were very pleasant company, so. Uh, who knows, with a bit of luck, if I ask her nicely, we could have a couple of drinks. Well, what a very nice idea. I'll tell you what, could the first one be tea? I'm dying for a cup. Make yourself comfortable. Let's sit down, lasses, eh? <laughs> Looks like a busy and Fred. Might as well be. Evening. Good evening, love. Oh, uh, hello, I'm glad I've seen you. Uh, I've been looking for you all day, only I found this this morning in a gentleman's bathroom, would you believe? Which gentleman's this, then? Oh, well, I can't very well say, can I? I mean, not with you, eh? And uh, being as clean, though, well, it's confidential, I can tell you. Oh, yeah, Kilda, you had me worried for a minute. It, she means Mike. Well, she had me worried, no. Did you hear that? Well, I couldn't help it, could I? Right, monkey. Bet. Are you expecting Matt Baldwin's old fella in here? Frankie, yeah, he said he might pop in after. Why? Are you after him? <laughs> I just wanted to pass on a bit of gossip, you know. Mixing it, are you? Me. Would I do a thing like that? What's up with you now? Nothing's up with me. Well, how come I haven't had a word out of you since you got back then? Well, perhaps I haven't got anything to say to you. Cool. Blimey, I don't know. Talk about Steptoe and son. Hello. Hello, it's me. Oh, right, come on. Perhaps you to you, yeah. I wouldn't bet on it. Come in, love. Hello, Frankie, darling. 
What's wrong with him? Don't ask me. Do you want to know? Do you really want to know? Yeah. You were out together last night, weren't you? Well, I didn't hear it from you. I heard it in the pub. Look, it was just a little dinner party, that's all. But why didn't you tell me? Because I know what a daft old burke you are. That's why, and it's showing. Nothing happened, so forget it. All right. I'll forget it. Will you come in? We'd prefer to go out with him. I'll belt you in a minute. <sighs> hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Tuckle. Yeah, yeah, what can I do for you? Wilf? Uh, no, uh, <clears throat> but he only left me about ten minutes ago. I, I think he said he, uh, he had another call to make or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very nice, thanks. You know, uh, we just had dinner, the usual chat about business, and... Uh, oh, I, I'm sorry if I kept him out too late. <laughs> no. No. No, he didn't say where he was going. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm sorry I can't be more helpful. Yeah. Goodbye. I can't just spend it on myself. I couldn't even begin to think about it. Well, keep your voice down, because Hilda's a great believer in charity beginning at home, as long as it's her home. Oh, I feel dreadful, really. I just don't want the money, but what do I do? I mean, I'd send it to a charity, but from what the solicitor said, Arnold wants it to be more personal. Oh, can't you help, Ken? <laughs> what a question. She means it, Ken. Well, um, if you're really serious... Oh, I'm not just serious. I'm desperate. I mean, I feel like burning it. Oof! Draw a cheque, love, and burn that. Sorry. Now, if you really are serious, I'm looking for a trampoline for the kids. Mind you, they're very pricey. Marvellous. Find out how much and let me know. Do you promise? <laughs> I promise, yeah. Hey, isn't it about time you were going home? Are you trying to get rid of me? No, of course not. Believe it or not, I'm enjoying myself. Oh, not much of that knocking about. <laughs> Oh, I thought you wouldn't leave us alone. What are you having? I'll have a scotch for you, Squire. Right. Look, call it with lover, boy, will you? What? I've had his wife on the phone. She's getting anxious, asking questions. What time did he leave me last night? All things like that. Look, he's a big boy now. He's also a big buyer. And we don't want that fouled up, do we? Now, listen to me. What happens in your office is one thing, and what happens in my spare time is another. Well, I'm telling you to ditch him. And I'm telling you to mind your own business. Look, I like the fella. He asked me out, so I go, right? You're heading for trouble. I know the road. I'm not worried about the Goldberg order. I'm worried about my dad. Now, has he been there or hasn't he? If he was here, I wouldn't be asking, would I? He should have come back last night and he never made it, and I'm trying to find him. Yeah. All right. All right. Ivy, all right. Now, listen. As soon as he comes in, get him to phone me, all right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Get him to phone me here. Because as silly as it may seem, I'm a bit worried about the stupid old Burke. Yeah. All right, love. See ya. Hello. Thank God for that. Right, come on up. Hi. Look. Isn't he with you then? Isn't he with you? Oh, well, no. No, he never came back last night. He meant it then. <laughs> meant what? Well, went out for this Chinese meal last night, right? And he, and he hardly ever said a word all the way through. He's got this strange notion that you and I are having some sort of scene together or something. <laughs> Now, what have I done to deserve a father like that, eh? He said he was going home, to London. Yeah, well, he obviously kept his word. I'm worried about him, mate. When he's seen him again, then? Never said I was. Yeah, but he didn't say he weren't. It's got more sense than getting involved, haven't you, Elsie? Especially with a married man. Listen, when you get to our age, what other thought is there? Eh, Elsa? Oh, can't we talk about your love life for change? What love life? Listen, ever since they put mockers on it, with that fella at Matt, I've had no sense. I don't even feel like a woman. <laughs> well, Mr Baldwin will pay you a compliment, won't you, Mr Baldwin? Go on, say something nice to her. Hey, I'll see phone call for you. Me? Yeah, don't be too long, eh? So, you want a compliment, do you? Yeah, just how fascinating and lovely and sexy I am. I don't want you to exaggerate. Well, how will 
You are the most curly haired, big mouth, future unemployment statistic I've ever seen, do you? <laughs> Mr. Baldwin, my hair's not all that curly. <laughs> right, then I'll see you at one. Oh, no, no. We can have something at my place. Well, like, there's plenty of stuff in. I can always put something together, can't I? Yeah, that, yeah, that'd be fine. Hey, uh, no, listen. You uh, didn't ring up and ask for me, did you? Oh, I said. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah, well, you know what a funny devil it can be sometimes. You're all right. See you. Bye. Oh, made your little social arrangements, have you? There's no need for the sarcasm. You know perfectly well he rang up about the order. And from what I gather, you've already got it. I have, yes. And I'm not unappreciative for your contribution either. But there I add that I might have got it anyway, even if you hadn't made up the foursome, on account that I gave him an almost unbeatable price. So you're just not, because I'm having private telephone calls in working time. May I remind you that he rang and asked for me? I am not not us. It was a reasonable request. What I am concerned about is that you will make your usual meal out of this. Now, I told you last night his wife was getting twitchy. And with an eye for future orders off the guy, the last thing I want is a twitchy wife on his back. And I told you last night, Mr. Bowen, that the last thing I want is getting you on my back. What I do in my own time is my business. And I'll thank you very much to remember that in future. Well, thanks for taking her to school anyway, love. Not at all. I enjoy the walk and I love watching them all go trotting mm. in. All so eager and innocent and, well, full of hope. Well, if you can't be at that age, when can you be? Oh, yes, but why does it have to end? Because we grow up, Emily, and we get married and we start washing socks and... I don't know, but washing socks seems to make you give up on hope a bit. Oh, I'll walk around barefoot, shall I? Will that help? <laughs> oh, no, I'll cope. I don't mind being a martyr, really. Trampolines! That's what I've got to do. Look at some cost, like I promise you. That is, if you haven't had second thoughts. Emily wants to buy a trampoline. Mm -hmm. Not for me, for the youth club. Oh. Ken mentioned that they've always said they'd like one, and I offered to buy one out of the money that Arnold left me. Well, I, I think that's a very generous gesture. Indeed it is. It is a lot of money we're talking about there, Emily. It's what I want to do. Well, good for you, Emily. And bags I first go on it, I'll take me frock in my knickers and I'm away. Can I come and watch? No, you cannot. I'm not letting my wife do that. Oh. No, I don't want her breaking the flipping thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give it some thought, Fred? Not if I can avoid it. No. Won't go away. As far as I'm concerned, Betty, I never met Eunice. She never existed. Listen, it happened. It didn't work out. A lot of things don't, so you can't pretend they never took place. I can if help me sleep nights. I'm not dwelling on it. I never said you should dwell on it. And I agree you should put it behind you, but it should be done in a proper fashion, lovey. What, you mean legal, like? Well... It's obvious, isn't it, that you can't get a divorce for quite a while, so I should have thought you could have put it on more of an official basis. <laughs> if I am. It's enough good to tell you we're married to a copper, you. <laughs> yeah. I dare say I got a lot of that from my Cyril. Hey, bless him. I've always had that kind of mind, you see, Fred. I like things nice and tidy. Yeah. Say you meet somebody else. Give over. I'm not going to be on that game again. You must be joking. You're not saying you never want a woman in your life again, Fred. I don't know, I dare say I'll be as big a mug again. We never learn, do we? No need to be bitter, you know. I mean, say a lovely little widow woman comes along, she'll be just the job for you. You'd be glad then that you tidied up all those loose ends. Well, why does it have to be a widow woman? Hey, I don't know, just saying it could be a 30-year-old career girl. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Heaven forbid. <laughs> Listen, Fred, lovey, you're not an old man, you know. What? And you've got a lot of living to do yet, so you don't want, you know, what happened between you and you to spoil your future chances. What about your future chances, then? Me, Chuck. No, it's a bit late for me, love. How about finding a nice little widow fella that'll be just a job for you, eh? Eh? Listen to me. I am still feminine enough to hope I might does that suit you. I mean, you should be thinking that way and all, lovey. Well, now we've got our futures settled. How about a cup of tea? Ah, go on. Hey, I'll have what? a cup of them mince pies you brought in. They were lovely, then. You know, Fred, perhaps you were right. Perhaps you were meant to be on your own. Oh, now, come on, Dad. Now, look, you know there wasn't a thing between me and Sylvie. Yeah, I don't understand it either. I'm younger, richer, more intelligent, and she still prefers you. No? <laughs> well, 
You should have seen her a little while ago, mate. She was standing in this very spot, crying her eyes out. She was crying tears so big they were shrinking a very expensive carpet. And all because of some stupid old Burke that got the wrong end of the stick and scarpered. Yeah. That's right. So what do I tell her then, eh? Oh, that's better, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're improving. Go on. Yeah. And what do I tell me? Dad, look, I cross my heart. I am telling you the truth. Nothing happened, right? I mean it. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell her that. Yeah. Right. Oh, and I'll tell you something. The first train in the smoke won't be quick enough for her, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, mate. Yeah. Right, well, you get down to that polytechnic and you get yourself some sense. All right. Right, well, look after yourself, Dad, and I'll, I'll see you soon. Yeah, I'll tell her. Bye-bye. <sighs> oh, hey, roll on dinner time. Hey, where we going, Elsie? You don't say change, go to the cafe. Just eat a nice steak and kidney pudding this weather. It's fattening. I know it's fattening, that's why I want it. I think I'll have a custard tart and custard to follow as well. Listen, eating's the only thing I've got these days. Don't be grudge me a bit of pleasure. Elsie? I won't be coming with. Oh, you're not going in, in that Rovers now yet. Grub's dead boring. No, I meant I wouldn't be coming with you for my dinner. Well, why not? You said you were earlier on. Yes, well, I've changed my mind. It's allowed, isn't it? Happen she's had a better offer. Yeah, happen she has. Have you? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. Bert Reynolds has offered to take me sailing down the ship canal in his yacht. Gives her the sack for taking personal calls in working hours. You'll come galloping up and rescue me, will you? Hey, you're not sack, you love. I'm a customer, aren't I? Oh, you enjoy that, don't you? Well, that little I... feeling of power. Waited long enough for it. The rights I should have been in this job years ago. Assistant buyer's got some clout, but not like this. Why won't you? You come straight out with it, don't you? Don't you? Fair enough. I dare say that's why we click from the off. Two of a kind. <laughs> I were born with a few things, Elsie. Ambition, brain or two in my head, flair for what I do. But what I wasn't born was chairman's nephew, or with a mouse to marry his sister. I see. Not what you know, but who you know. Well, there now, though. And I'll make a go of it. I'm sure you will. Why didn't you leave when you thought you were being passed over? Family pressures. Them look good. You can keep your steak, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Gets a bit out of hand as all this expense account eating. <laughs> I've been told to keep my weight down. Oh. Keeps an eye on you, does she, well, your wife? I don't think she wants me popping off with a coronary, not just yet. Oh. In all areas? I'm oh, not with you. She uh, rang Mike Baldwin. Wanted to know who kept you out so late the night before. He told me to cool it. What did Mike say? Oh, don't worry about Mike. He can take care of everything. Especially women. It's all right. You don't need to apologise. I wasn't going to. If I do have to apologise for, believe me, I'll be the first to say sorry. But I'm not responsible for what Dorothy does. Makes a habit of it, does she? Not to my knowledge. What did you say to him? I told him to mind his own business. I said we liked each other. And if he wanted to go out together, it was none of his concern. Well, it isn't, is it? It's not, love. I'd have told him the same thing myself. It, uh, it won't cause trouble for you, will it? No idea. Oh, do they ex that? How do, Carl? Are you coming for a drink? She's staying. I told you I wasn't. Oh, well, we thought you might have changed your mind, you know. We didn't like to think you sat miserable on your top, did we? Well, her idea to come. You know how she goes on? I do indeed. Well, thank you for your concern, but I think I can survive an hour without your company. Oh, can't we twist your arm, then? Oh, look, come on. I've had enough. My dinner's going cold. Oh, well, if you don't want to come out, we'll come in, put another couple of tea bags in the teapot. Look, a joke's a joke, Vera. Now, will you push off? Look, I told you we won't be welcome. Come on. Oh, do you mean she's got company? Is it anybody we know? I'll see you later. <laughs> Are you having a nice dinner, Mr Stockwell? Oh, you can pick up where you left off, love. <laughs> I'll swing for that woman. You heard her, didn't you? <laughs> They're a lively lot you work with. Yeah, but she knew you were here all along. 
Well, my car's just down the street. She'd not need to be no Agatha Christie. Now sit your bottom down and finish your dinner and stop mithering, woman. Don't tell me you can't take a bit of a joke in your stride. Oh, you don't have to work with them day in and day out like I do. I'll have to be going back in a few minutes anyway. I was thinking, why don't we have <coughs> a night out tonight, uh, uninterrupted for a change? Tonight? Yes, we could have a drink or go out for a meal or, or I could make you one, anything you fancy. I don't think I can make it tonight, Elsie. I don't know what the plans are. Oh, it was uh, just a thought. Well, a very nice thought too. I tell you what, why don't I see how it goes and give you a ring later on? What time you get home, as a rule? About five-ish. Right, I'll ring you before I leave the office. That's the promise. <laughs> uh, hey, Alf. Do you fancy a night out tomorrow night? How do you mean? Well, don't be so suspicious. It's a straightforward question. Well, are you free? Yeah, hey, play your cards, right? Get yourself fixed up there. Yeah. You keep out of this. I just fancy a night out, that's all. Oh, well, have a night out. I'm not stopping you. Yeah, well, you know, Alf, it's not so, it's not so good on your Todd, is it? Well, I'm not going with you to hold your hand. No, don't be daft. Look, I'm just suggesting a night on the tiles in that sexy little car of yours. Give over. I'm past that sort of lark. What do you think I am? Some dozy little teenager? Come on, Alf. You must have got it for some reason in the first place. Will you stop it? All right, it's a smart little car. What am I supposed to drive? A flipping hearse? <laughs> well, look, what's the point in having a smart little bird? Pull a like that if you don't try to uh, pull a few birds. Birds? Were well, you two in the front? Well, where the hell would you put them? The only birds you'd pull in a dinky little car like that would be a couple of skinny midgets. <laughs> Get over, we can't all have great big fancy cars like you, can we? Anyway, what's got into you all of a sudden? Nout. Well, well, it would better, you, wouldn't it? She was just saying that I ought to get out a bit, you know, and forget it. Oh, we can all say that. Yeah, but that was to keep a sense of proportion. There's no need to go flaming mad. Look, I'm not suggesting we go mad, go to a disco out like that. All I mean is, well, we could go to a nice little restaurant, somewhere classy, where you could... Uh, Pull a couple you know, of birds, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Silly friend, the only birds you'd end up there with are the sort that you wouldn't want to end up with. Unless you want to wake up in the morning with a thumping hangover and a empty wallet. Oh, well, you're just a cynic, aren't you, really? Listen, mate, I haven't lived 35 righteous years on this earth without learning something. How many? 38. <laughs> Listen, suggest something sensible, I might consider it. All right, then. How about a night out with Albert Tatlock down at the Legion? How's that grab you, eh? <laughs> now, listen, I did come in for a purpose uh, before I got sidetracked by the scintillating conversation. If it's another drink you want, mate, it's, you've had it for towels and on. No, I'm sorry it's not another drink. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I know you love saying no. No, it's just, uh, I wondered if Sylvia had been in this one. I thought she was your father's young lady. Well, she is. Hey, that's another thing. Where's he mizzled off to? I haven't seen him all day. Now, look, just forget I started this conversation, will you? I mean, to me, it was a straightforward question. Has she been in? Yes or no? Obviously, I was wrong. It apparently affects the whole security of the nation or something. Oh, the cocky little devil. It's all right for him, isn't it? He's got the lot, he has. What are you doing now? I'm writing out a cheque. Well, I've only just told you how much it is. I mean, all Ken said was pass the message on. So you passed the message on, and now I'm writing out a cheque. But hang on a minute, Emily. I mean, it's not just a few pounds we're talking about. It's 1,200 flipping quid. So you said. But it's a fortune. I mean, surely you want to think about it. Alf, you tell her. Yeah. I mean, 1,200 quid for a trampoline. I don't think even Ken thought it was going to be that I much. have thought about it, Deirdre. I don't want the money that Arnold left me, and I can't think of a better use to put it to than to give children pleasure. Now... Will you please give that to Ken? Alf? Well, it's Emily's money, love. I mean, she can dispose of it as she chooses. No to do with me. Well, actually, you can help, Alf, because there's still 800 left, and I'd like to use that to endow a bed at the hospital in Ernest's name. Can you find out how to go about it? I, I could do it myself. Yes, I'll but... do that, love. I must say, it's very generous of you. No, it's, it's not generous. It's the only way that I can come to terms with myself. Bye. Bye, love. Bye-bye. Oh, I'll pick Tracy up for a tea about five. I've made a chocolate blancmange. Why did it have to happen, Alf? Nay, who knows what went on in that poor fella's head. Anyway, it's going to a good cause, so that can't be wrong. No, I mean, why did Emily have to meet him? Arnold? Why did Ernest have to get killed? Why could she never have children of her own? I mean, she's got so much love to give, and it, it's all always gone wrong. Oh, I doubt if she'd agree with you, love. I mean, she's lots of good years with Ernie, you know. She's got that to look back on. And as for the rest, well, I could say the same about Rainey. Or you, about you and Ray. Or anybody who might be wondering why the, the real villains seem to get away with everything and good, decent folk die of cancer or get blown to bits by terrorist bombs. 
There's no why to it. You've just got to try and see it as part of some greater pattern, the good and the bad. We all got our share of each. That's what Emily's trying to do with this. Make sure it's shared. Yeah. I'll give it to Ken. Oh. Hello, love. You want to get him to take you to an Italian restaurant, you know, forget the diet, have the head waiter. You still haven't got over not being invited on that foursome, have you? When are you going to stop sulking? Well, Bob, we shouldn't have shown favouritism. I'm free. You're married. Or have you forgotten that again? Well, I don't see what difference that makes. This Will fella's married, isn't he? She's seen him against Sly Cow, I can tell. Well, she's a fool then getting involved with a married man. Anyway, what's the big attraction about married men? I thought they're not all attractive, love. I mean, look around, Jack. He's a married man, and he's dead boring. Oh, pride, innit? Because it was me. Or at least he thinks it was. You mean if it had been some other bloke, he wouldn't have minded it? Maybe not as much. Oh, thanks. You really know how to make a girl feel good. Here, get over it. Anyway, there's one thing I can do to help. What's that? Check. 500 quid. Don't lose it. I thought there was no way you were going to give it to him. I'm not. You are. My. Oh, all right, all right. I know he's an old so-and-so, but... Well, he is the only father I've got. A bloody stick of the mortar. Yeah, well, tell him not to count on it in future. I'm thinking of legally declaring myself an orphan. Well, I think you're both lovely. Are you going to give me a lift to the station, then? Yeah, at least I can do. Does he know about this? No. Nope. You can have the pleasure of giving him a big surprise. You know, your dad wasn't the only one that thought there was something going on between us. Fred over there does. Yeah, well, Fred makes it a habit to think the worst of everybody. Would it be the worst? I don't know. I think, given different circumstances, you and I could make quite a pair. Yeah, well, uh... If you want to catch that choo-choo. Slippery is a wet well. You're just like him. Come on. Hello? Hello? Um, is Mr. Stockwell there, please? What? Oh, uh... Well, what time did he leave? Oh, I see. Uh, we, there's nobody there at all, then. No, no, it doesn't matter. No, no, thank you all the same. It's all right. No, thank you for your trouble. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, heck, it's got a low back, hasn't it? That's the front, Hilda. <laughs> you are. I wonder you don't catch your death. I don't feel cold petal. When I weren't there, clients like that. The and Coronation Street continues to tomorrow at 12 noon right, here on Plus. Next tonight, one of the IMF gets like kidnapped to, in the original Mission Impossible. Male Ilda. Oh, I'd like to think it, yeah. But in 30 odd years of marriage, I've never found no evidence of it. Nachuk. Never mind Nachuk. And I don't count peeping down a barmaid's blouse neither. When somebody sups as much as you do, that's a flaming occupational hazard. Can I have my blouse back, please? I only meant you to admire me bargain, not start flipping World War Three. And in future, you just... Hello, Rover's return. <laughs> no, she's not in at the moment. She won't be long, though, if you want to ring back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll tell her that, then. Yeah. OK, mate. See ya. For Betty. Get us another drink in. Where are you going? Stanley. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, I like your blouse. It's smashing. <laughs> On our own tonight, are we? No, as a matter of fact, we're not. We've got a whole troop of the household cavalry with us. Oh, come on, Elsie. You can do better than that. Yes, I know I could, but I don't intend to bother. I come in here for a drink, not to get on the Morecambe and Wise show. Now, is that too much to ask? A drink? Of course it's not too much to ask. You'd be surprised how many people come in here for a drink. Usual. Yeah. What's up, Cock? You've lost your fizz. Nothing's up. Nothing that I didn't expect, anyway. Anyway, how did you go on at the sales? Don't tell me I've got it. You're changing the subject. Oh, whoever said you were stupid? Oh, hello. Not with your gentleman friend tonight, then? By gum, Milda, you might have a weak bladder, but there's no wrong with your eyes. That remark was completely uncalled for. 
And what are you grinning at, Stanley? Hey. Hello, love. Hiya. Hello. Oh, I'm glad you're not busy, lovey. I'll just go and take my coat off. Only, you see, when she asked me if I'd stop an hour with the kiddies, well, I couldn't say no. My mother's desperately ill, you see, poor soul. You're a good sort, Bettina. More folks should have neighbours like you. Hey, give up. <laughs> hey, Betty. What, lovey? got a phone call for you earlier. Yeah? It was from your garden. Did he say he'd ring back? No, there's no need, love. He said he'll see you tomorrow. He's coming up first thing. Great. No, look, just one of them daft leaflets. Your electrical appliances serviced and repaired on your own doorstep. No job too small. Reasonable and reliable. Just somebody trying to make a living, kid. Give us another fill up, do Yeah, sure. Hey, listen, uh, you're not doing much this morning, are you? Not a lot, love, no. Will you call the butchers for me? Yeah, OK. Get me three quarters of mince and I'll make us a nice shepherd's pie when I come in, all right? Oh, lovely, yeah. Ooh, we'll have to be post. Listen, love, if you like, I'll put shepherd's pie in this afternoon. I'm doing that. I don't mind. Yeah, all right, love. Oh, flipping heck. Somebody trying to sell me long woolly vests again. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get your name from? God knows. Oh, this one's for you, look. Me? Hey, love, it's a job interview. This morning and all. What's job? Warehouseman. Still a job's a job, Bert. Come on, it's only an interview. Don't mean to say I get a job, does it? I mean, I don't usually. Well, you never know, do you, love? I mean, they must think you're possible, otherwise they wouldn't bother sending you for interview, would they? Yeah, all right. Don't go on about it, love. I'm only saying you could be in with your chance, love. Well, at least it's an interview, love. I mean, let's face it, most of them don't even bother to reply, do they? I don't know, but I think I've got a bit of a feeling about this one. Oh, well, don't go on, kid, cos I don't want my hopes building up just to come crashing down again. Do you know, love, it's amazing. If you'd have told me two years ago that I'd gladly sell my soul to the devil for the sake of a warehouseman's job, do you know I'd have said you'd gone crackers? Do come in, mister. I don't believe I caught your surname. Alex, my name. Alex Trishan. Oh, I didn't get the surname, though. Electrician. It's a joke, you see, with me being electrician. <sighs> My name's Hobson, really. Alec Hobson. Mm, I see. Well, now, this is the tease made I mentioned to you, and it simply will not work. Right, I'll have a deco. And my toaster, I don't know, but it's, ha it's behaving in the most irrational manner lately. Right. You see, I like my toast just slightly browner than golden. But so how I adjust this, it keeps popping out ridiculously pale. Oh, well, we can't have that, can we? <laughs> I think I can fix it for you. Good. And that is number one priority. Because, as I say, however I adjust it, now all I get is scorched bread. <laughs> and I hate the smell of burnt toast all over the house. It always takes me back to being a little kid, that smell. My mum always burnt the toast in our house, every time. She put it under the grill and then turned round to do something else. Next minute, the bread's on fire and the air is blue. And I don't mean with smoke. Well, not that blue. She was always very ladylike, my mum, considering what she had to put up with. Well, like I say, I can fix them, but I'll have to take them with me. That's all right, as long as you mend them. Never fear. Alec is here. Very young to have your own business, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose I am, really. Mind you, before this, I was very young to be out of a job. The shop I was working folded up, you see. No jobs, so I started for myself. I admire enterprise, you know. It's true of nations, as of individuals, that without enterprise, nothing is done. You're right there. And another thing, if you don't ask, you don't get. Any chance of a cup of tea? Right, well, I'll get off for an early dinner then. Ta-ra. Bye. Right, hey, I want a bit of satisfaction. You'll get no satisfaction off me, Albert. Whatever it is, see Mavis. I'm going. Ta-ra, love. Something the matter, Mr Tatlock? Yes, there is. What's that? Well, it's a 
ballpoint pen. Well, go on, try and use it. Well, go on, try. Oh, yeah, you see, useless. Yes, well, I mean, it, it's just run out, that. So, I mean, all it is is a tube with ink inside it, Mr Tatlock. Never. Well, they don't last forever, you know. I know, but I'm dead with you above ten minutes. It's useless, it's a swindle. But are you sure you brought it here? Of course I am, and you served me. Well, I don't remember <laughs> you buying it. When was that? A few days before Christmas. Oh, well, you've used it up, that's all. I mean, you can't grumble about that. I've told you, I've hardly used it. I know it's signed three Christmas cards with that pen. When you get to my time of life, you know, you don't send ever so many. You can't afford it, for one thing. And another thing is, I don't spend money on a pen that won't work. Well, I can't see that you've got any cause for complaint. Oh, you please yourself. If I don't get any satisfaction, I'm off to town hall. That way to measure chaps will have a few rules about points. Well, and what do you want to do about it, Mr Tatlock? I want a new pen. Well, I'm not going to give you a new pen, because I don't think you're entitled. You are. I'll, I'll give you a refill. Oh, it's really lovely. Oh, it's growing up in Well, one last week, weren't you? Oh, can you have a sweetie? Not really, he's not at his dinner yet. Oh, well, look. Keep in these when he's in time. Oh, oh, oh you like a lovely little sweet. boy. Well, let's have a look at him. <laughs> there you go. That's Mr. Tuttle. You know, I, I've got a false return of myself, of course. Sitting on a big pile of rugs. <laughs> Were you in your birthday suit? Of course I was, I was fully dressed with a sash and all. I can just imagine it. You must have been a very demanding child. Will you keep your mouth shut and let me tell the tale? Uh, now then, hey, about this <laughs> photograph, you know. Uh, it was, I was just about his age when it was taken. He looks a bit like me, you know. When he grows up, he'll be a good looking fella. Just like me, he will. Oh, What's the matter? I'm still crying like that. Was <laughs> I can't tell you what's wrong with it. If you could. You'd not be asking me to mend it, would you? True. You haven't been using it to spray paint or anything, have you? No, I can tell. You're not the sort. Well, leave it with me, love. Trust the expert. Is it a mobile workshop or what? It is. And also my living room and my bedroom and my garden shed. You don't actually live in that mobile mucky, do you? I do. Well, if you can call it living. You, uh, you won't fancy sharing it, then? No, thanks. Or are you some sort of gypsy or what? I won't be fiddling with your hairdryer, would I? I'll be holding your hand and telling your fortune. And you can scoff, but this battered heap is home to me. Still, you come from round here, don't you? I mean, not far away. No, oh, Droylston. The posh end, mind you. Oh, naturally. This is posh side of this street. So you work all over the place, do you? Oh, anywhere within reach of Manchester. I'll be part round here for a couple of days while I see what work there is. Right, well, if you can mend my hairdryer, I'll recommend you. I was going to mend that for you. I know, you told me last June, my husband. Yeah, I could tell. The conversation I've heard a good few times, is that? Hi, Bert. Hello there. You only had to say, you know. I've been nagging you for weeks. Anyway, I've got the thing in bits now, aren't I, Governor? Any luck? You're joking. Oh, love, I am sorry. The flaming job had gone when I got there. What? But they wanted to interview you. I didn't even see the boss, love. A secretary, a bit of a kid, that's all. You know what she said? I'm sorry you've had a wasted journey, but the position's been filled. Oh, honest, they've no consideration, have they? Well, I don't suppose it was her fault. I think they must just give it to the first able-bloodied bloke that walks in, you know, as long as his name begins with A. You know, somebody higher up the alphabet. Tilfley's a bit of an handicap, you know. I think I might just change my name to Abercrombie or Aspinall. You know, how do you fancy that? Bird, don't talk like that. Love. You will get another job, I know you will. You've just got to keep trying. Oh, love, look at us. I mean, I don't even draw dull money now, do I? You're on four days working, where does that leave us? We'll manage. You know something? I used to think we were well off before. I thought we were middling along. I knew nout. Hey, we're still better off than three quarters at world, aren't we? I was thinking about that this morning. At least we don't go hungry. Yet. And we never will, Bert. Listen at that flaming length fair club banging away. Don't knock it, love. That's what work sounds like. 
<laughs> well, lager and lager, Rita. Rita. Thanks Thank very much. Hey, you might as well pull a pint of bitter for Lenny's right behind me. Oh, hey, did the telly our Gordon's coming up today? I did, did you did. last night. You did, Betty, yeah. yes. Yeah. Hello. I've got the drinks in. Oh. All you have to do is pay for them. I thought you might have treated me like your housekeeping. Oh, Give yeah. over. The housekeeping's gone the way of all flesh. Why don't you treat us to a couple of pies? Failing that, I can go home and rustle some of up out of a handful of rice. That's settled for the pies, thank you very much. Got to live in land. I mean, it never stops going up, Chuck. You don't have to tell me it's the age of the ten bob point, and I don't like it. You know, there's one thing full of me about you, Mrs. Walker. Oh, what might that be, Mr. Hedlock? Well, I never see you at post office. I mean, when I'm going to get my pension, I never see you. But what's it all about? Have you got a special arrangement or something? I have no time for idle chatter, Mr. Tattlebuck. Oh, oh, there's Gordon! No. no. Hello, Hello, mate. How are you? Oh, hey, what's he after? He's come to visit his mother, Mr. Tattlebuck. It's quite a natural thing among families. But he never shows his face unless he wants something. He's worse than old Billy for that. <laughs> It's your banqueting suite as well, eh? Uh, it might be just a tip heap to you, but it's home to me. Have you ever considered a leaded windscreen? Hey, don't you want your hairdryer back? Hey, you've not mended it already, have you? Yes, I have. It's right as rain again. Well, there couldn't have been much wrong with it, then. Well, it wouldn't go, would it? It can't get wronger than that, love. Well, what was wrong with it? You wouldn't understand me if I told you, would you? No. Come on, how much do I owe you? Well, uh, seeing as you're a new customer and nice-looking, two pounds. You don't do bad for ten minutes, do you? It's not the time you pay for, love. It's a brain. And the sauce. You'll be a millionaire, you. If I am, you can help me spend it. Hey, have you tried your look down Rosamond Street? That's the street at the end there. No, not yet. Oh, well, I have a little shop there. It's called The Cabin. If you're passing, call in. My friend Mavis might have someone that needs fixing. If not, she'll certainly fancy you. It is nice to see you, love. It's great to see you too, Mum. Hey, Gordon. What? Uh, you're not uh, any trouble. Trouble? What do you mean? Well, I couldn't help worrying, you know, when I'd heard that you'd rang up to say that you were coming up here. Now, come off it. I do come and see you sometime, you know. It doesn't have to mean I'm in trouble. <laughs> no, what I'd have noticed him. I'm just being silly. As a matter of fact, Mum, uh, it's just the opposite. Oh? Yeah, things are going great for me at the moment. And, uh, uh... well, I've come up to tell you some news. It's good news. Well, at least I think it's good news. I'm uh, thinking of getting married. Oh, God. Well, in fact, I'm not just thinking about it. I am going to get married sometime next month. Well, hey, God. Ooh. You pleased then? Of course I'm pleased. Come on, tell me about it. Who is she? Now, I want to know all about it. Well, um, she's a nice girl. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> her name's Caroline. Caroline. I like that name. <laughs> She's a smasher. You will like her. Yeah. What's all the rush? Eh? Well, it's not a shotgun job, if that's what you're thinking. I never said any such thing. Well, it's just that we... Well, we decided we'd get married. We thought no point in hanging about. You're both sure, lovey. How long have you known her? About a year now. Oh, yeah. She works at my place. Not in my office, like. She's a, she's old Argreaves, PA. Oh. That's uh, that's a high-powered secretary come assistant. Career girl, eh? Aye. Right. When am I going to meet her? Sooner than you expect. Oh. I brought her with me. You brought her up here? Yeah. Where is she, lovey? She's in the house. Well, I, I knew you'd be here, so well, I thought I'd come and break it to you gently. Ah, God, you're full of little surprises today, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> Hello, Len. Hello, Come in, mate. Right. Hello, Len. Hiya. Oh, hello, Len. Shift this. So gone quiet. <laughs> Hey, I've just had a fella delivering a jack. He's given me some hot news about uh, Longshaw's foundry. He reckons they're taking on fitters. Longshaw's? What, in Bessemer Street? Yeah. Oh, right, thanks, Len. I'll try and nip there this afternoon. I mean, you never know, dear love. No. Well, you can't take it as gospel. You know how these stories get around. But I thought as soon as he mentioned it, I'd better come round and tell you, eh? Thanks, thanks. Hey, sorry about the noise there. I bet it's driving you up the wall, isn't it? No, no, I hear it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Here I am. I found you, you see. Not difficult. We're not camouflaged around. I didn't realise it was a news agent yet. Very handy, is that? Now, this is the young man I was telling you about, the wandering electrician. This is Mavis. How do you do? Hello, love. Listen, about you being a news agent, it could be important. Oh, yeah. Who for? Me. I was thinking, you deliver papers door to door, right? Yeah. Well, deliver it, I have to do. Bingo. So it's no trouble to them to stick one of these through every door where they deliver a paper. What is it? A damn good service in your own home. Told you were cheeky, didn't I? Ah, but be fair, though. I do a good job, don't I? Well, you did with my hair dryer, yeah. So there you are, then. If you've got it, flaunt it. So, uh, how much fix with your delivery, lads, then? It'll cost you. How much? Two quid. Oh, yeah. So you get your hair dryer repaired for nothing, eh? Give over it two quid for delivery, lads. 50p each. You're on. Honestly, it's like watching two high-powered executives wheeling and dealing. Well, this is what makes the world go round, love. No, 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 no. It's love what makes the world go round. Of course, you would think that, Rita. Don't let Mavis fool you. She may sound as if she disapproves, but she doesn't really, as long as there's ribbons on it. Oh, Rita, this is neither the time nor the place to discuss my personal views. And especially not in front of a strange young man. Oh, I'm not strange, love. Well, not compared to a lot of people. All men are strange to Mavis, love. Would you like, like an Eccles cake, though? No, thank you. You're not watching your figure, are you? Oh, come on. An ounce or two won't hurt you. No, really, I have had quite sufficient. Oh, well. Come on, Gordon, you can see this lot off, can't you? She thinks I live on the edge of starvation in London, you know. Whenever I come up here, she stands over me to make sure I eat. You can't like worrying about a lad on his own, though, can you? But now I've met you, I know it's going to be looked after properly. Do you like a cup of tea? No, really, thanks all the same, Mrs Turpin. Can't have that, can we? You can't call me Mrs. Turpin. <laughs> what would you like me to call you then? Well, I don't fancy being called mother in law when all them daft jokes put you off, don't they? I tell you what, you call me Betty. My name's Elizabeth, but, well, nobody ever calls me that. <laughs> Except Mrs. Walker. You know, she's my boss, the landlady at the, oh. the pub where I work. She doesn't think that Betty is posh enough for her. <laughs> <laughs> she's not bad, though. No, she's fine for me, really. Listen, I'm not too sure about you working all these long hours, you know. In fact, I'm not too sure about you working at all. Maybe you and I could sort something out. Oh, give over. I'm not going to be a burden on you. Not now you're getting married. Not now or any time. I like working at the Rovers. Keeps me busy. Well, I mean, you work, don't you? Yes. What are you going to do when you get married, have you thought? Well, I shall carry on working. Oh. You'll not be starting a family straight off, then? <laughs> I don't think so, Mum, no. Oh, well, I mean, it's none of my business, is it, really? <laughs> I shan't mind, you know, if you make me a granny. <laughs> you don't mind me saying that, do you, love No, of course not. Oh, I am looking forward to the wedding. Oh, I'm that glad our Gordon's found a nice girl. Oh, I am pleased. Hey, well, i better get shaping. Got to be at the Rovers, you know, for about six o'clock. i better get my skates on. Oh, listen, you don't have to go to work tonight, do yes, you? Yes, I do. Look, it's Bet's night off, lovey, so Mrs Walker's going to be short-handed. And if you'd have told me her earlier on, I could have made a swap with Bet. I'm not letting her down. OK, then, I'll give you a lift. Oh, lovely. Oh, bring Caroline. Everybody would love to meet her. They'd be glad to see you. Oh, I thought we were doing... Oh, no, come on. You know, just to wish you and our Gordon all the best, lovey. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll just pop in for a minute or two. Have the one drink, eh? Yes, please, Mrs. Walker. Hey, you look pleased with yourself. I've got good reason and all. Hey, I'm back in the land of the living. You got that job at Longshore? Yeah, it's right what you said. They were ah. taking people on. I bowled in. They take me on there and then. I'm actually on the payroll. I can't believe it. Right. Come on, then. Thanks. Have a drink with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pleased for you. Thanks, Rita. Pinch me, will you? I want to make sure I'm not dreaming because I don't want to wake up. It's all right, mate. It's real enough. I'm delighted for you, Mr. Tosley. Really delighted, because I know how hard you've tried. Thanks, Mrs. Walker. Listen, you'll have a drink with me, won't you? And Rita, and uh, I think I'll have a scotch. You're going to be skint. I don't care. What is this? A blooming celebration? Yes, it is. Give Albert a double run, Mrs. Walker, as well, will you? What's that in there, though? Well, I've got a job, Albert. Oh, is that all? Uh, is Albert? If you... Oh, forget it. It's no good talking to him, Hey, I bet Ivy's pleased, isn't she? I don't know. I've just been in town. She's not there. I think she's shopping or something. Oh, thanks, Mrs Walker. How much do I owe you, love? Nothing. It is on the house. Oh, no, 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 no. I Come absolutely on. insist. You're very good help. Oh. Oh, well, thanks, Mrs Walker. And yours as well. I knew you'd get a break one of these days. 
You know that young travelling electrician? He shows a lot of enterprise. He lost his job and then starts out in business on his own. Yes, yeah, very good, very quick, unlike some I could mention. He's got my teas made and my oh. toaster. Is it, uh, is it that young fellow the van you're talking about? Well, our dear, you know, she gave a vacuum cleaner to Fedor. She never see it again. What do you mean? Well, he slid off and left his van, hadn't he? You know, it's your stuff again. Oh, surely. Oh, he was probably in Manchester by now. Oh, give over. Lad's all right, oh. Mrs. Walker. Well, see you. I have another one, but no, I want to get home till I've the news. Hello, Hello, best. Hello, Oh, I am sorry I'm late, Mrs. I quite understand this. I'd like to meet our Gordon's young lady, Mrs. Walker Caroline. Please, oh, Rachel, dear. And may I wish you and Gordon every happiness. Thank you. Thanks, Mrs. Walker. Well, I'd better get my sleeves rolled up. Are you going to have a drink? No, we won't, thanks, Mum. Uh, we thought we'd uh, nip into Manchester for the evening. Oh, and you stop in here for a bit? No, we thought we'd see if we can get into the Shoker Palace. Listen, uh, we'll probably be in after you, so uh, we'll have supper out somewhere. OK, enjoy yourself. Bye-bye, right. though. Bye-bye, dear. Solicitor's daughter, eh? Wonder if she fancies having a barmaid for a mother-in-law. <laughs> Wondered where you'd got to. Now then, don't stand there with your mouth open. Cop for that. Bert, what is it? Bert, we can't afford this. Oh, yes, we can, love. Have you got a job? Yeah. Oh, love. Is it marvellous, kid? Oh, love. Hey, and it's a proper job. Not brush pushing her out like that. A fitter, kid. Oh, love. Oh, Bert, a fitter. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Love, I've never said out before, but I was beginning to think you'd never work again, honest, I was. Don't say out, love, but neither did I. I was that frightened inside. I have been for months, you know. Still, it's over, isn't it? It's all over. We're going to be all right. <laughs> See, what's it, his Longshore's foundry? Yeah. Are they a good firm to work for? Who cares? Well, your working clothes are ready for you, you know, love. I know that, kid, and thanks. When do you start, then? A week on Monday. Oh, yeah. Hey, and I'll tell you something, we're going to have a good holiday this year. A proper one. Whatever you Bert. want. Get the brochures. A week on Monday? Yeah. Do you mean 25th? Yeah. Why, what's up? But that's... You've got to court, love. That's the day you're in court. Oh, my God. Oh, love, what the hell am I going to do? I mean, I can't not go there, can I? I can't not go to court. Oh, hell, fire off. I mean, I can't go to Longshaw's and say, I can't come in on Monday, I'm due in court for fiddling the dole, can I? What the hell am I going to do, love? Well, whatever you do, don't tell them that. Well, what then? Tell them out, Bert. Tell them, tell them somebody's died and you've got to go to funeral. Look, if you tell them truth, that's that job gone. Have you got somewhere fixed up? You know where you're going to live when you get married. Well, we'll, uh, we'll keep my flat on for a while. You know, while we have a look round. Oh, in London? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you won't want to be too far away from your work, will you? Yeah. Good morning. Hello, my love. Did you sleep well? Yes, thank you. Good. How are you? Lovely. Mm. Mm. <laughs> look, would you like some uh, bit of bacon and egg and some cereal first? Do you think I could just have some toast, please? Not for now. I don't normally have much breakfast. Of course you can. <laughs> Some coffee, would you like? Please. OK. <laughs> Did I say the wrong thing? Yeah. They like feeding you up up here. That quilt. What quilt? <laughs> that eider-down thing I had on, it must have weighed about a ton. Ah, ah well, yeah, they like to keep you warm, too. Oh. Feed you up, keep you warm. Oh, That's I what see. it's all about up here. Oh. There you are, my love. I've put two slices on. Is that all right? Yes, thank right. you. Help yourself to sugar. And as for that alarm clock... What? Well, it was like sleeping next to Big Ben. I couldn't do anything about it, so in the end I opened the window and put it outside in the windowsill. You never. I certainly did. Brought it back in this morning, though. I know it's not stereo or anything, but it does play 78. There aren't a lot will do that nowadays. No, I bet they're not. Oh, I hope you can mend it. You know, it seems to go all right for a bit and then it starts just to reject everything that you put on it. I haven't it's trying to tell you something. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Tattlock. Like a mods reunion in here today. Give us a quarter of mint imperial. A quarter. Hey, 
I bet you can remember record players older than this. Remember what? Record players. Oh, ah, yes. I can remember them as far back when they called these phonographs. You know, the first we had, we had to wind up with handle. And we used eighth horns, not needles. Mm. Then you had to get that dog to sit still in front of it, didn't you? We never had no dog. Mm. That's 30p, <laughs> please. Hey, who were your favourites in them days? Oh, they were marvellous records, they were. You know, Harry Champion, Murray Lloyd, yes. Florrie Ford. Mm. You know, she'd have went a long time, did Florrie, up to the 1940s. Well, which were your favourite? Whose name did you embroider on your cap? We didn't do it like that. We weren't dotty, made idols of them like they do nowadays. See, that's put you in your place. All that slobbering you do over Engelbert Umperdinck. I do not. Mr Tuttle, have you happened to see that electrician around this morning? You know that one with the van? No, I haven't seen oh. him. And I don't reckon I'm likely to either, since I went off with everybody's stuff. Oh, no. Why? How did we give him a vacuum to fettle, you know? she would never see it again. Oh, isn't that an awful trick to play on people when they trust you with the possessions? Hello, Puddy. Hi, Hi, love. Is it cold enough for you? It is that. And he won't keep his mittens on. Oh, aye, yeah. hey. And why won't you keep your little mittens on, eh? Hey, just one minute, love, and then I'll be with you. No worry. Do you know something? I think she enjoys being on a four-day week. I don't think she wants to go back to five. An extra day for shopping, isn't it? Exactly. Sit down. Hey, listen. I've got something to tell you. Well, you're going to need a few clues, like, but just guess. I mean, uh, just guess out of three million unemployed, and it's somebody you know very well who's been on the dole for over a year. Just mm. guess who's been offered a job. Honest? Yeah, Longshore's found Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, but mind you, there's a bit of a snag. Um, what? I'm well, I'm supposed to start a week on Monday, right? Yeah. Well, that's the day I'm due in court for non-declaration of earnings. Oh, so, no. he tells them he's going to his grandmother's funeral, and you start work on Tuesday instead, all right? Hello, Daddy. Hey, uh, who's got a little cold nose? Excuse me, clever clog. Somebody is bound to tell them, aren't they? How are they going to do that, Bert? Well, love, it could be in the paper. Somebody will say something, won't they? Come on, there's 101 ways of them finding out, isn't there? Yeah, but there's always a chance they won't, love. I mean, if you tell them, that's your job up flaming swanny, that is, and right. You don't know that, do you? I mean... Yeah. Uh... What do you think, love? I'm right, aren't hey, I? look, I don't know. Oh, I'll tell you what. Tell her how many put in for that job. Go on, tell her. Well, I heard it was over 70. Over 70? Yeah. So there's going to be no shortage of replacements, is there? I know that, love, but if but I just go Bert, in... think on, love, before you start telling people you've been in court. I mean, you'll be a fool to yourself. Love, I've got to tell them summit, haven't I? Will you listen to him? He's been after a job all this time and now he's going to chance throwing it away just for the sake of a little white lie. Well, I hope you manage to keep it. Thanks, love. So do I. Listen, keep your eye on that oven for ten minutes and then turn it down to number two. Yes. It'll not want altering then till I come back all right. No. Say bye-bye to your granddad. Bye-bye, yeah. Pudding. Bye-bye. I'm sorry for shouting at you. Ta ra yeah. Oh, Len. Yes, love. Have you got a minute? Yeah, of course. I was wondering, have you seen anything of that uh, travelling electrician, uh, Hobson, whatever his name was? Oh, yes, I know who you mean, yeah. But I haven't seen him or his van. Oh, dear. But there's no reason to suppose he won't turn up. I mean, all that stuff he collected yesterday. Yes. Well, I shouldn't think it's worth his making off with it, is it? That stuff he collected, as you call it, included my tea's maid. Ah, yes. And yeah. my toaster. And I can assure you that neither of them were cheap. Uh, no. Did I was just thinking what he might get second hand for them, though. I know, but still. Did Rita give him anything to repair? Uh, yeah, hair dryer. Well, then. Oh, it's all right. She got it back off him yesterday before he skedaddled. Did she suspect him of something? No. No, she just happened to be passing the van. I'm wondering whether to call the police. Oh, well, it's up to you, Annie. I mean, what's the world coming to? I think I'm doing a young man a good turn by patronising him instead of a shop. And my tea's maid may have disappeared forever. But will we see you at the Rovers later on or what? Oh, I dare say we'll pop in for a minute or two. Yeah. Listen, hang on a sec. I'll give you a lift. It'll only take two minutes. No, no, walk. It'll be the only bit of fresh air I'll have today. Okay, then. Bye bye, Caroline. Love. Oh, bye bye. Tarlo. <laughs> see you later then, eh? Okay, my love. Bye. Ciao. Oh, we don't really have to go there this lunchtime, do we? Oh, well, we, we don't have to, no, but, well. 
Honestly, the way she talks about it, you wouldn't believe it was just a tatty little backstreet pub. Oh, come off here. Eh? Does give her an interest, you know. She's on her own here all day. Going to Rovers? I can't imagine you coming from round here, you know. I can't, honestly. Well, I did. I don't know how. You'd be surprised. Hmm. But we don't have to go there this lunchtime, do we? Hmm? Well, you could be anywhere by now, even in Yorkshire. Imagine going through life, deceiving, lying, cheating everybody you meet. This what he wants locking up before he pinches out hotel. I agree with you. And now that Elizabeth's here, I intend to put the wheels of the law into motion. Oh. Everything all right, Mrs. No, dear, it is not. And if you'll kindly hold the fort for a minute, I intend to do something about it. Yes. Yeah. What's up? Well, I reckon she's bringing up the coppers. Oh? Telling about this electrical fellow that's pinched everybody's stuff. They never has, has they? Well, they reckon so. Oh, and he seems such a nice young chap to me. Oh, but we had a chaplain in the army, you know. Full orders and everything. Dog collar and all. And he were nicked for pinching candlesticks. <laughs> you were. Yesterday. Mm. Well, there were electric lights, which you see, that he promised to have repaired and returned. Oh, no, no sign of him or his van. Yes, I do, actually. Hobson. Alec Hobson. Mm. Oh, 23, 24, not older. Yes, it was orange, in rather bad condition. Rather old, I should think, generally. I don't know, give us a pint of drip in Betty, look, will you? Okay, don't. You gonna have one, Albert? I oh, got an a rum. Give him one and all. Okay. Have you seen him then, Annie? Good day. Sparky, the disappeared electrician. Yeah, he's outside. So the whole thing was a false alarm, wasn't it? Oh dear. Oh, it's all right, love. He's back now, there's nothing to worry about. I've already called the police. Oh well. Well, what was I to do then? I mean, nobody'd seen any sign of him. Everybody oh dear. We up here. here we are, the Mrs. Walker. Tea and toast for you tomorrow morning. No problem. Very quick. Oh, I am sometimes that quick. I repair them before they've had a chance to go wrong. <laughs> and how much do I owe you? Well, that's uh, two quid and one fifty. Say three fifty for cash. That seems very reasonable. Uh, will you excuse me while I just go and get my purse? Elizabeth, will you give this young man a drink while he's waiting? Oh, ta. Pint of mild if you like, love. Then, Up to Prez, yeah. Gonna have to do something about that van, though. Like, put a match to it. <laughs> Very hard, up. Cheers, I'll come here again. Uh, I will see you not so late next time. I think we can forget about that now, Albert. Must be cold, though. You're sleeping there. Freezing. I feel so daft and all. There I am, surrounded by electric blankets, electric fires, and I'm catching frostbite. Oh. Well, if you take my advice... What's that, then, eh? Well, you've got more careful now they've got your name. Now that who's got whose name? Well, the coppers have got yours. Do you know, eh? he was on the sideboard all the time and I couldn't see it for looking. Yeah, but hang on, what is all this? What's all what, dear? Coppers haven't got my name. Mr. Tatlock. Well, he wanted telling. I still do want telling and all. Mr. Hobson, I must admit that there has been a tiny misunderstanding. But it's all cleared up now and you have nothing to worry about. I wasn't worried until I came in here. Bert, have you made your mind up? Yes, love. I've decided to tell him the truth about the court case, everything. I see. Love, look, I know you think I'm a fool, but you can see why I've got to do it, don't you? Well, I know it. I know you would. I said as much to Gail this morning. But you can understand why, can't and they you? And like Bert. Look, there ain't one of them men that applied for that job that had a chance chucking it away after it had been given to them, except you. You don't know that, Oh, don't do you? I? Anyway, don't matter what I say, you're going to tell them, and that's that. Yes, I am. Oh, and knowing you, I suppose you'll be dashing straight round there after your dinner. Well, they do say there's no time like the present. 
So I might just stroll in this afternoon if that's all right with you, OK? No, uh, Caroline uh, thought she'd like to have a look round, you know, do a bit of shopping. Yeah, she does right. So I said we'd see her back home later on. She don't want to be stuck in this smoky hole all the time. She'll go back with a right impression of us, won't she? <laughs> yeah. Well, time it wasn't here. See you around, Lou. Yeah, cheers, mate. Goodbye, Mr. Hobson. Yeah, goodbye, Mrs. Walker. Oh, and don't worry. I've had a word with my legal advisor, and I've decided not to sue after all. Cheers. Yeah. I presume, I mean, you know, from what I gather about this wedding, it's going to be a fairly posh do. Well, Caroline's family are a bit, you know, that way inclined. <laughs> Only, you see, I was wondering what kind of a dress to buy. Listen, I was actually thinking myself. What? Well, it's going to take an awful lot of facing for you, all that, you know. Give over. Wild horses won't keep me from being there. That wasn't that. What, what I wondered, well, uh, would you like to bring someone with you? I mean, there's all the travel all that way. Yeah, wouldn't mind a bit of company, I must admit, love. I thought, what about, um... So do I. Mrs Walker. What's well, yeah. up to you? I don't mind who you bring. Oh, yeah, I mean, she, you know, she likes to go to those kind of do's, but uh, before I ask her, Gordon, what? have you mentioned any of this to your Caroline? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, no, I haven't, not yet. No, no. Well, we'll settle that first, shall we? And if she's in agreement, lovey, then I'll put it to Mrs Walker before you leave tonight, eh? Please. I don't know. Remember me? Oh, yes. Oh, I see you found something for me then. Oh, no, well, I mean, that is, um, well, I, I don't want to put you to any trouble. I've... Well, it's no trouble, love. It's me living. It's when folk don't want me to repair stuff I'm in trouble. Well, yes, but I, I, I'd rather not bother. But, I mean, does it need repairing or not? Well, yes, but I'm, I'm just not in any hurry. I, I just don't want to have it repaired yet, that's all. Oh, you're hoping it's going to get better of its own accord. No. Uh, spontaneous recovery, like. I just don't want to have it repaired, thank you very much. Oh, I see. Well, I don't see, but I don't think I'm going to do either. Hello. Hiya. Your hair dry all right, is it? Perfect. Great. Mind you, I haven't used it yet. Are you not giving him your record player? Oh, retail. Oh. Well. We're hoping it's going to um, heal up on its own. I know. You think he's going to run off with it, don't you? Oh, great. The lad's all right. He was just late back, that's all. He's even got the Annie Walker seal of approval. Is that good? Round here, it's a bit like by royal appointment, only harder to get. Oh, I am sorry. Oh, he'll think I'm ever so peculiar. No, not so. Uh... I would like you to repair it then, please, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. What exactly is wrong with it? Well, it just keeps switching itself off, you know, rejecting the records before they're finished. Oh, I'm with you, love. Oh, well, I am sorry for thinking, well, what I did think. That's all right. Yes. Yes, all right. Well, see if you can make it up. No, don't talk to anybody about overtime yet. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. OK. ta -ra. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. One of them days. Well, uh, what were it exactly? Well, I'm supposed to start here a week on Monday. Well, that's as... The maintenance uh... fitter. Oh, yes, yes. Uh... So, uh... Well, you see, um, the thing is, uh, well, the day I'm supposed to start here, well, I'm due up in court for non-declaration of earnings life. Well, non-declaration? Yeah. And what's that when it's at all? You're doing a bit on the side, drawing dole and saying out, is that it? Yes. Mm. We've got a problem then, haven't we? Well, there were only bits and pieces, you know. I mean, I just did a bit of decorating for a mate and then a few days plumbing, that's all it was. You weren't secretly employed as chairman of ICI or out like that? Oh, no, no. No. Though, as I recall, you didn't mention this when you were interviewed, did you? No. And why not, then? Well, to tell you the truth, I just thought it'd be over and done with, you know, before I started here. But you might know in my look. We had a lot of applicants, you know. I know. Skilled men and all, most of them. None of you rubbish. I know that, too. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that if we'd known about this court business, you'd probably not have had so much as a sniff at the job. 
Look, um, I'd better just go and have a word with Mr. Slater, see what he thinks. I won't keep you above a minute. I usually put my feet up and have a cup of tea. <laughs> Sounds like a civilised way of spending an afternoon to me. Yeah. Don't look as if Caroline's back yet. No. I'm up here. Oh, hello, love. What are you doing? I'm coming down. <laughs> I had a bath. I hope you don't mind. No, love, you just make yourself so. <laughs> oh. Mm. oh, you smell great. Oh, you don't. You smell like a broom. <laughs> oh. Did you get your shopping done, love? Shopping? Oh, yeah, uh, I thought you'd uh, gone shopping, you know. Oh. Hey, listen, Annie Walker. Oh, yeah. Well, we were thinking, um, it's going to be an awful long way for me mum to come, you know, to the wedding, all that travelling. And uh, when she gets there, she's not going to know anyone, is she? Oh, but I'll know the two most important ones. Mm -hmm. So what we thought is uh, she might like to bring someone with her. And we thought that Annie Walker, you know, the woman who uh, runs the... The Rovers, uh... yes? Yeah, but we, uh, we haven't done anything about her, have we? Not until we checked on you, like. I mean, not if we've already got too many. Oh, though. no, of course not. I mean, of course I can see your mum should have someone with her. Yes. Mm. <laughs> see, what did I tell you? It is kind of you, love. Thanks, dear. Shall we have a cup of tea? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm surprised they're not bringing a coach trip from the Rovers. No, a shara. An outing in a shara to our Betty's last mm. wedding. We're Crater Brown Ale in boot. Mm. Kettle's on, up. Thanks. Mm. Don't worry. You'll soon get used to us northerners. How often are we going to be up here, then? Well, when we've got that uh, big family you're so keen on having, huh. they will want to come and see the grandma, <laughs> won't they? <laughs> hey, look at this. Has your daddy bought you that, eh? Is it? That's it. Oh, aren't you a clever boy? You put that one in there. Can you do that one? Hey. <laughs> Did you say you come straight home? Well, I'll see why not. I'll have to think about getting Nicky's tea ready. That means not keen on coming home. I think you'd come home and tell us whatever happened. Thank you, Gail. Hello, my sweet. It's nice to know that somebody's got some faith in me, you know. Hey, you. What are you doing creeping up on us like that frightening life activist? So what happened? Well, I sneaked in the back way, you see, to avoid all the pressmen and all the reporters, cos they all want to interview the man who told the truth and got away with it. Oh, Bert. Do you mean they're keeping young? They are, love. They flipping are. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, Lord. I couldn't believe it when he told me. I thought my ears had gone wrong with summer. Oh, Lord. Oh, I'm not relieved. Hey, come on, what are you scratching for? She, you're supposed to be happy. I am, I am. I said... So what happened? I mean, who did you see and everything? Oh, the works manager, uh, Mr Swift, I tell you, I thought I'd had it. Why? Well, he said, and he told me straight, he said, I would never have got within a mile of the job if they'd known about the court case at the interview. Oh, no. Anyway, then he gets up and goes out. He said he'd got to see somebody else like, and he leaves me sitting there like piffy. I tell you, I nearly got up and went. Oh, well, I thought I'd lost it, love. Thank God you didn't, love. But he comes back and he says, look, he says, it proves one thing, he says, it proves that you want to work. He says, and it proves also that you're honest. He said, you told the truth and uh, you didn't tell some cock and bull story. I, I wanted you to say. And then he comes out with a little joke. He said, provided they don't send you to jail, like, he said, you start on Tuesday instead of Monday. 8.30 sharp and not a minute later. Oh, Bert. Oh, bless him. <laughs> oh, love him. Well, it's going to be a big wedding from what I can gather. Her parents want to do things properly, you know. Oh, nice. Yes. And they've asked me if I'd like to invite somebody to go down with me. And I was wondering if you would. Oh, how kind of you. Be a very nice day out. It sounds a charming one. Yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh. I'm delighted to come with you. Lovely. Going out, he said. I don't call this going out. Of course, it's flipping going out. We're not in, are we? So it must be going out. Hello, baby. Hello Hello's again. <laughs> Can we have a vodka and tonic and a pint of bitter, if you don't mind? I don't mind at all, Trevor. If going out, man, going out in fresh air, we could have sat in the backyard. Well, why the hell didn't you mention it? I could have got the deck chairs out and we could have opened the curtains and watched telly at the same time. One drink in here, Fair Club, and then we are going out. We're going out, right, we're going out. Hey, there's another couple going out, I know. Hey. Hello, Mum. Hello, love, Caroline. You remember Lennon, Rita, don't you? Yes. Of course you do, yeah. Tell your mum what you're going to drink. No, we won't. We've just popped in to say to her. Just back off to the smoke, actually. Uh, well, that one before you go. No, no, driving, you know. Uh, don't you encourage people to drink and drive? I'm only going to buy one. <laughs> Look, are you sure you haven't forgotten anything? Yes, I think so. How nice to see you both again, although I gather it's not for very long. Well, five minutes more, actually, Mrs Walker. <laughs> well, while you are here, may I thank you for that kind invitation? Oh, we're both looking forward to having you there, aren't we? Mm. Yeah. And so am I. 
pie enormously. <laughs> and we would have liked to have been there enormously as well. Oh, sure, oh. Only we can't make it this time. <laughs> oh, what a shame. I'll tell you what, though, we'll come to your next one, eh? <laughs> okay. Hey, now about that one solitary drink you're going to have. Oh, we did say we were going to That's off. right, we did say. Uh, Got to get on with the motoring, you know. OK. All right, then, well, it's Ramo. Sure. And thanks very much for looking after us. You're always welcome, Marlowe. <laughs> Well, Caroline, it's lovely to have met you. Oh, and we hope to see you up here again soon. Thanks very much. And we'll see you at the wedding. Yeah. And you, Mrs. Walker. Indeed. Yeah. Ta-ra, then. Ta-ra, Ta carefully. We will. Ta-ra. 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 Well, they've their own lives to lead, I suppose, haven't they? He's going to have his hands full there when he's wed. Haven't we all? No, oh, but there's so much about her I don't like. I can't imagine what that is. No? Oh, well, happen it's something you have to be a woman to uh, appreciate it. Oh, shut up, Hilda. Why should I? Because I live here and I say so. Foo, don't I know it and all. There's mucky footprints, greasy head marks, fag ash, bus tickets, tops left off, old betting slips shoved in every crack, look, you see? Know, I don't know what's worse, Hilda. You're singing or you're flaming parroting. Listen, you only live here because you work here and I clean here because I work here, so we're equals, aren't we? So what? So you shut up. Well, there's no there for you. I'm only looking. It's not for me, neither. Oh, you're not still hoping for a reconcilement with your Eunice, are you? Cos you've had that. Do you know, Hilda, you're about as subtle as a ten-pound hammer you are. Can't you see I'm fed up to my eye teeth? Well, can't you? Oh, I'm sorry. Fed up of being nobody. I've been nowhere to flipping go, and I'm fed up of not having any peace and flaming quiet, and I'm sick of you reminding me, Hilda, so shut up! Now, Fred. Well, what's it all about, Mrs Walker? What's it all a flipping bout, I ask you? Oh, well, you can get put those letters down, Mrs Alton. You know how I hate the mail being mixed up. Oh, I... Thank you. I'm sorry, Mrs Walker. <laughs> well, I was just looking to see if you had any interesting stamps for me philatory. Eddie's found me an album, you see. It's a bit messy-like, but it'll come up nice. As will my premises if you give them some attention. <laughs> oh, that's nice. What's that, Mrs Walker? Newton and Ridley request the pleasure of the company of Mrs Anne Walker and guest at their 200th anniversary celebration banquet at Cornbrook Hall on January the 27th at 8pm, RSVP. Répondez si vous plaît. Oh, fancy. <laughs> Who will you be taking with you, Mrs Walker? Ah, well, that will require some thought. Well, if you're stuck, I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> so I have noticed. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was only joking. I'll get off and do upstairs, seeing as you're both up. Fred! Yes, Mrs Walker? Put the kettle on, there's a love. Hey, hello, Joe. Oh, it is nice to see you, lovey. Not quite enough since our Gordon and Caroline went. When did you go, Cock? Oh, last night. I wish they'd have stopped a bit. You know, I don't get a lot of company. I'm that excited about the wedding, you know. And I didn't want to be by myself. Well, you know how you get. Well, here I am. Half catalogue will travel. <laughs> I'll tell you this, Betty. My arms are hanging off. Oh. They ought to provide us with wheelbarrows for treks like that. <laughs> Come on, let's have a look, Joe. Hey. <sighs> Do you know, it's a lovely winter, is this? Yeah. Stunning view of that lamppost. Little garden, all dead for winter. For all these curtains, Betty. Hey, what about them? Oh, they let you down, love. Now then, there's a lovely floral laminate with drawstring and padded pelmy. 20 weeks at £1.8 to be a devil. What do I want looking at curtains? I don't want curtains. I'm looking for presents for our Gordon's wedding. Might just treat myself and all to a nice new outfit. Fair enough. Spend, spend, spend. No. Well, it'll be posh do, you know. Well, you saw Caroline, didn't you? Oh, hey. Look at that there. Oh, that's you, Betty. Yeah. It is. It's you. Oh, hey, do you think they do that for the fuller figure? For the fullest, give it here. Mm. If you listen to what it says. Yeah. The look of luxury. <laughs> dress and jacket by Bimby in luxurious Loratex. Oh. The dress has pleated skirt with trim top, matching the outline trim of the superbly tailored jacket. Twenty weeks at one pound twenty-five. Oh, it's not a lot though, is it? For what it is. Not a lot. Right, lovely. Right. That's you fixed up, flower. Yes. Now then. 
What were you saying about Prezzy's? <laughs> yeah, well, I want to get something for their home, you know. Right, Betty, you're playing a blinder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, would you believe it? Oh. Yeah, did I? I know them electric stew things, you know, you put all the food in and leave it cooking all day. It'd be smashing with them both working, you know. Right. I'll just note that down, Chuck, while I think about it. Well, there's no need, love. I've got my order forms on me. I'll put one in on way back. Uh, uh, well, I'll not be getting them from you, love. You are? No. No, I'll be getting them all from Ashworth's. I'm cheaper, you know. Well, it was you that said it, love. I'll bring my catalogue round and get a few ideas out of it. Now, shut up, Mytherin. Well, I'll get my notebook. Do you want a cup of tea? Yes, I do. Good. Seeing as I'm getting now, tells. Well, there's a few things, so I made a list. Right. Oh, Emily, it's come. What? The trampoline. It arrived last night while the kids were in the middle of youth club, so they've sent an instructor with it to show them how to use it, and how to put it away and all that, and they love oh, it. Oh, good. Oh, it is good of you, Emily. Oh, I wonder if Arnold would agree. Well, it's too late now. You'll never get it back off them kids. <laughs> yeah, I might shut up. Shut up? Potato face, then. Oh, oh Emily, I've organised it about the hospital bed. Oh, good. Now, the hospital committee will buy it in your name, and then they'll be in touch with you later. It'll be about £500. Is it all right? Oh, fine, Alf. It's such a relief to have disposed of it all. It is generous of you. They're very grateful, you know. In fact, they wondered if you'd like to go down to the town hall to have your picture took for the Gazette. Oh. No, well, it's just they need all the help they can get, you know. And perhaps it would, you know, it would uh, help other people. To... No, well, perhaps not. She's done enough. Oh, she has, she has. More than enough. Well, I just want to wash my hands of the whole thing now. Of course you do. It has taught me something, though. Arnold told me that he was able to go through a form of marriage with me because he'd put his wife completely out of his mind, just blotted her out as if she'd never existed. I was beginning to do the same thing with him. And then all this happened and, well, I don't know. I can understand a little better now. We are all capable of these things. I'm going to do some damage today. I can feel it in my bones. Listen to me. I've said I'm sorry, and I don't know why I should. It was you that said to come through my catalogue. I was hoping to make a few bob commission. Oh, and I thought it was just friendship. It's not just you, Betty. It's the whole world that's against me. Oh. But by heck, I'm going to make them pay. Now, what are we in for? <laughs> Good morning, Mrs Walker. Morning, dear. Nothing serious, is it, Betty? No, Mrs Walker. Just a normal day. <clears throat> Mrs Walker, when will you be free to go shopping for our Gordon's wedding? I've chosen what I want. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what she did? To save going wrecking in town, she chose what she was going to buy from Ashworth's out of my catalogue. What a good idea. Excuse me, ladies. I'm off to the bathroom for a scream. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Mrs Walker? Well, forgive me, dear, but just at the moment I have rather a happy little event of my own. Oh? Yes. Newton and Ridley's 200th anniversary banquet. Oh, very nice. <laughs> so I have to give it priority, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. But I'm just going to ring up Billy and try to get him to come over so that he can escort me. Yeah. And after that, I shall give my full attention to your son and his nuptials. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <clears throat> Hello, Billy, love. What? No, dear, everything's fine. Excuse me. What is the matter? Oh, uh, I was waiting to ask you some... Uh, what? Uh, shall we open? Is it time to open? It is. Yes, then, go and open. Right, Mrs. Walker. Sorry about that, love. I'll come straight to the point, Billy. Newton and Ridley are holding an anniversary... We had to push this one out at closing time last night. <laughs> hey, Fred, have you heard about the anniversary, do? Of course I flipped it up. So were you. Hit me head on the door, you must know. <laughs> Do we send for Fairclough? Go on, you can laugh. Do you wish it were you that were going instead of Billy? Oh, that's who she's checking, is it? You wish it were you, don't you? Oh, give over. I don't like hobnobbing with a lot of toffs, you know me. What's wrong with toffs? I mean, you could call our Gordon's Carolina top, but she's not really, though, is she? No, she's just stuck up. <laughs> Are you all fixed up, then, Mrs Walker? No, I am not all fixed up, as they so crudely put it, Beth. Unfortunately, and to his deep distress, Billy is unable to get away at such short notice. Apparently, his diary is teeming with business appointments. Oh, ain't that a shame, Betty? I bet he'd have loved to have come. Mm. Oh, poor Mrs Walker. Never mind, dear. Other fish in the sea. Yes. Fred? <coughs> Yes, Mrs. Walker. Would you pop that into the dry cleaners for me? Oh, God. Fred wants to go to the do. Do I, Egg? You do, you lie, I can tell. Rubbish. <laughs> Come on. Ain't a bad advert, that, 
isn't it? Set yourself up as handyman and you can't get your van started. I'll get it going. I'd have it going now, only I have to keep stopping to blow my nose. I really need some new parts, but I'm short of cash. Uh, hey, you haven't got out that won't work, have you? Well, yeah, but it'll take more than you to get him going. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, can I help you at all? Oh, I was looking for number three. Oh, Mrs Bishop. Yes, yeah, next but one. The one with the yellow interface. Oh, thank you. She's usually in about this time. Unless she's gone into town shopping and decided to stop for a dinner. Oh, here she is. Yes. Thank you. Emily? Yes? Uh, I'm, I'm Margaret Swain. Um, Arnold's wife. Oh. Could I... Make... Oh, yes, yes, of course. Please, come in. Nah, not my scene, that wedding. I prefer happy occasions. <laughs> I, you'll never guess. Arnold Swain's first wife's just gone in Emily Bishop's. What? Oh, dear. Hey, where are you going now? Tell him at the factory. Mm. Tell him what? Arnold Swain's first wife's just gone in Emily Bishop's. They have stopped for the dinner, have they? Oh, yeah, but most of them bought butties. You'll be all right. They'll be glad of the one o'clock news. Oh, just you celebrating, is it? Celebrating what, Hilda? Your new fella. I heard him talking last night. Must have been midnight, cos I just woke Stan up and sent him to bed. Mr uh, Stockwell, isn't it? Hilda, who pays me social calls is none of your business. If it was a social call, where was Mrs Stockwell, then? Oh, fella visited on his own. That's not socialising. That's mucking about. What about the latest Casanova, was she? Mind your own business. What is he like? Not to do with you. I was only going to ask you if a son for me. Oh, go and fetch us a packet of crisps and less of your lip. Here. Still playing it cool, I hope. He's still a good customer. I'd hate for him to get the wind up and scarf her. Neither of us would, would we? Mm. And, uh, this is where you live together? Uh, yes. Yes. You're staying with Arnold's sister, you say? Yes. I don't get on terribly well with Flora, but is it still a pet shop? Oh, yes, she owns it now. Arnold left her his share in his will. Yes. Well, I assumed uh, it's like sleeping in a zoo. Peculiar little hoots and squeals all night long. I don't like the smell of rodents, so I'll just stay tonight and then I'll get back. To Worthing? Yes. She's a funny one, is Flora, and no mistake. I've wanted to know what you were like for a long time. Thank you. <laughs> You see, Alf, I couldn't show it in front of Elizabeth because she's so smug about how considerate their Gordon is. But I really am furious with Billy. Well, I he'll change his mind. Well, I forgot all about it by now. I'll bet you he rings up to apologise. I bet he does. I assume you've been invited. Me? No. Why should I? Well, as an ex mayor. Oh, come on, Annie. Ex mayors are ten a penny. If they invited every ex mayor in the sales area, there'd have no room for nobody else. We'd like to have gone. Well, it sounds like you're right nice, do I? Well, then. Well, then what? Oh, well, spare me the indignity of asking you to escort me. Oh, oh I see. Uh, would you allow me to escort you? I should be delighted. Smashing, so would I. <laughs> when is it? January the 27th, 8 o'clock. Oh, that's all right. Oh, but uh, just a minute. But what? No, I've just got a thought about the, uh, the oh, 27th. Oh, wow. Here, there it is. Weatherfield Sports Club. Bowls meeting. Bowls in January? Well, it's the AGM, isn't it? But it can't be a matter of life and death. No, but I'm the president, you see. It's one of them dozy jobs you get lumbered with, but I like to take them seriously. I see. Here, dear. Any other day, you see. What a shame. I really would like to have gone, you know. Yes, I'm sure. Hey, have you heard? Arnold Swain's first wife's in with Emily. Mrs. Alden, do you mind? I'm having a conversation with Mr. Roberts. Uh, what does she want? I've not found out yet, but as soon as I do, I'll let you know. Meantime, give us a packet of Charlie cakes. Then I'll leave you to your conversation. I was at rather a low ebb when I met Arnold. Oh, yes, Flora told me about Mr. Bishop. I'm... And then Arnold came and 
He seemed so strong and supportive. I, I really believed that through him I could start to live again. But then it seems the minute we got back from the honeymoon, everything changed. Where did he take you? Isle of Wight. Really? Is that so odd? It's where he took me. No. Lombard's Hotel Newport. Oh, my God. You too? What kind of a twisted mind would do a thing like that? You shouldn't condemn him like that. Not when it was on your account. What was on my account? Well, I, I, I'm not blaming you entirely, but Arnold's state of mind does seem to have originated from the time you left him. Go on. Well, he was so weak and proud. The, the only way he could cope with your rejection of him was to pretend that it hadn't happened. And he did that so successfully that in time he really believed he was free to marry again. And then, when he was suddenly confronted with the truth after all those years, it was too much for him. Do you want to know what really happened? Well, we were on Southampton Station, Arnold and me. This was immediately after our honeymoon, on the way home. We were sitting on this platform, waiting for our connection. We were chatting away as nice as you please. And Arnold says he wants to go away and get some magazines and sweets, so off he went. And while he was gone, this other train comes in on this platform. And not our train, going the other way. And I was just getting to think that Arnold had been rather a long time when this other train starts getting ready to move out. And the whistle goes... And there's Arnold sitting on this other train, waving and grinning at me all over his face. And the train started moving out and I shouted. And he blew me a kiss and that's the last time I saw Arnold alive. Tells Mrs. Walker from the door. What's to do? Oh, don't tell me Alf can't do it either. Councillor Roberts has a bulls meeting. Now, this is the price one pays for being too generous. One gets taken for granted. Now, when Alf Roberts was mayor of Weatherfield, I gave up hours. What am I saying? I gave up a whole year of my life to slog from function to function as his mayoress. And what thanks do I get? I ask him a small favour, and he cannot put off a stupid bulls meeting. Fred could do it. This is not a joking matter. No, I was only trying to cheer you up. I know you were. But don't you see, you have pinpointed the whole horror of my predicament. It could come down to that level. God forbid. Oh, no, I mustn't let it. I must find somebody. I must. Of course you will. Fred, your paddle boat has just come in. Your chance of a lunchtime. No, you have not won first prize in a pig show. You are the lucky winner of an evening for two with the one and only Annie Walker. Oh, shut it then. She had it up for you today. You are, it's true. She was asking me, do you know which fork to use? Of course I know which fork to use, flipping cheek. And have you got a bow tie? And not one that twirls round and lights up? If she wants me to go there, she can ask me straight. I'm not going to be tret like now. I won't be second fiddle to nobody, mate. You'll not be that fresh. You'll be about 15. She's getting desperate. Reckon I'm in with a chance, do you? Well, I'll tell you this, Fred. Your name was mentioned. Hey. I've never really been able to trust anybody again. That's why I never bother getting divorced. I wish I had now for your sake. For all our sakes. I'm sorry I judged you without hearing your side of it. Never mind, we'll put it all behind us now. It's just that me still being his legal wife, it fell to me to bury him. And you can't just throw someone in a hole in the ground, can you, whoever they are? Well, I hear from Flora, he left you £2,000. Yes, he did, but, but... Oh, 
I'm not asking for charity, Emily. I'm not thinking of contesting the will or anything like that. Heaven knows you deserve it. After all, he did to you. It's been upsetting, hasn't it? Still, it's made things a bit clearer. Perhaps it'll be easier for us to accept it all in time. Yes, that's right. Bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye then. So I decided to call it a day and push it round to Gaddy's in the morning. Anyway, I just rigged up my electric blanket and I was just getting ready to snuggle down when you wouldn't know it. What, love? Flipping leaking roof. Oh. Well, I mean, that's it, and it starts to pour down. So I've patched it up against the floodlight, but I reckon if I spend another night in there, I'll get pneumonia. So I've decided to look for Dick's. Oh, you've left it a bit late, love. Well, have there no rooms here? Ah, right, plenty of sunshine. They're all full. Well, it doesn't matter, you know. It's only for tonight. Have you volunteered in Elsie? Well, me, I'm still pulling myself together after my last lodger. Uh, I'm very sorry, love. Besides, he wouldn't like it if he had a lodger, would he? He might find it inhabiting. Do you know what I like about you, Hilda? What? Note. Um, but this hasn't solved my problem, has it? Well, uh, come on with me, lovey. Oh, Bertie, I'm just letting him get really desperate before whisking him off with me. Why, <laughs> he'd have to be desperate and all, wouldn't he? <laughs> Are you sure, Bertie? Yes, lovey. You go and pack your things and we'll go on the shop. All oh, right. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot. OK, drop <laughs> Hey, Betty, oh. are you sure you know what you're doing? Oh, yeah. Be a bit of company for me. I've been dreading going back to that empty house all day, love it. Oh, hey, Adrian. Ah, he's in dark. Thinking. Well, I've just got our Tracy off and I've left Uncle Albert giving Ken a good thrashing at drafts. Honestly, if they ever make that a tally sport, we'll have a superstar in our house. Ah, I just thought you might like a bit of company. Um, what does she want? Hilda saw her coming in. Oh, yes. Everybody knows, I suppose. Trust Radio Hilda. She wants money. She didn't say so. Money? Honestly. Some people. I hope you told her where to go. I would have, but he left her, Deirdre, right after the honeymoon. He left her. Yeah, but still, Emily, you're not obliged to give her anything. I mean, he left that to you. I know that, but she's obviously very poor, and she's obviously suffered just as much as I have. Are you sure? Yes. I want to give her something. You've already spent more than half of it on the trampoline and, and the rest promised to the hospital. Oh, I know that. Oh, Arnold, when am I ever going to be rid of you? This is all done! Would you give Fred a call, please? Yeah. Hey, Fred! A ladyship wants you near! I bet I know why you want him and Elf. You want chauffeuring into Altrincham, don't you? Is that right, Mrs. Elton? Well, you always go to Altrincham when you want something nice. Oh, they got some lovely shops in Altrincham. Much of fact, they have. Mm. Mind you, I'm only going by what folks say, because I've never been there myself. Really? Well, I've been, like, but only to the bus station. And that wasn't really where I wanted to go. <laughs> Mind you, it was very interesting how I come to be there on that day. Cos you... Do you want me, Mrs Walker? Yes, Fred. I wanted to ask you to take me somewhere. Well, you know me, Mrs Walker. I just got you to the end of the earth. <laughs> only as far as altering them. Right. So, would you get the rover out? Right, yes. You don't mind, do you? Don't mind at all, Mrs Walker. My pleasure. I would drive myself, but, you know, those little streets are so pokey. And as you know, the multi-story is a nightmare to me. Do you want me to hang about while you do your shopping, Mrs Walker? No, thank you. I'll get a text about because Elizabeth's coming with me. Good morning. I just thought I'd come in here casually before I took my coat off so that you could all notice that I've come in here early. 
You may comment on this if you feel so disposed. Uh, I don't mind, Mrs. Walker. I'll wait all day if you like. Fred, is there some reason you want to go to Altrincham? No. Because usually when I ask you to wait for me while I go shopping, you have a face like a wet weekend. Well, no, that, that, that's not altogether fair, Mrs. Walker. You have your own special way of being long-suffering. Well, look, Mrs. Walker, here I am. I'm offering to take you from door to door, waiting your pleasure. And I'm very grateful. He must be after some at Mrs. Walker. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Look, it isn't every day that Newton and Ridley's, the brewery, have a, have a do like the 27th, is it? I mean, after all, that is why you're going to Aldringham, isn't it? To get that's... kitted out? Yes, and Gordon's wedding, of course, as well. And we want you turned out properly, Mrs. Walker, because, after all, you are Newton and Ridley's first lady, so to speak. If I can be a humble service, it'll be a privilege. I must say, you do boost one's confidence. Oh, oh, you listen to Smarmy Arthur. Uh, Fred, uh, well, why are you wearing a bow tie this morning? Huh? Well, I just felt like it, that's all. Don't you think it suits him, Mrs. Walker, the bow tie? Very becoming, gives him quite an air. Thank you. Stand up to wearing a bow tie once, you know, just after the war. One of them what clips on. I stopped him wearing it in the end, though, because I thought it made him look shifty. Well, I'm afraid I think it looks good, and I'd like to see it more often. Wear it any time you like, Mrs. Walker. You know, Mrs. Walker, you're very lucky, really, aren't you? I mean, these two do's coming so close together. You'll be able to get one outfit what'll do for both. Well, no, hardly, Mrs. Ogden. You see, in good society, one does not try to outshine the bride. Mm. That is the golden rule. Elegant, but never showy. But, of course, a gala evening is a different approach, because there, a little glitter is in order. <laughs> and I don't often get the chance to glitter. No. Well, it's very nice if you can afford it. But, I mean, these days, you can't have a different thing for every do, can you? It's like the paint, isn't it? One coat covers all. You know, Mrs. Ogden, I remember when the world was so different. It's like that thing on television. To think that it used to be like that. What was that? Oh, didn't you watch Brideshead Revisited? Brought it all back to me. I'll go and get the rolls, Mrs. Walker. Now well, then, should have taken my umbrella. Would you take your umbrella? I don't know. I've never had one. Yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> Mind yeah. you, I've got that great big motorised umbrella that don't go. Oh, is there a lot wrong with it? Well, I can fix it. It's like, you know, getting everything together. I'll go round the scrapyard, see if I can pick up what I need. Oh, wouldn't it be better buying from a proper dealer, lovey? If I had the money, aye. But, I mean, they scrap these cars, yeah. and if you work it out, practically everything in them's still OK. Oh, well, if you know what you're on about, eh? So that's what you'll be doing today? Yeah. What time will you be back, love? Oh, I don't know, really. I mean, what suits you? Oh, no. What suits you? I mean, you can't stop on the streets, can you? Now then, can I, uh, Can I trust you with Mickey? Well, well, it's up to you. If you're not happy, you know. Yeah. Of course I can trust you. But you be careful, won't you, lovey? I mean, you won't lose it now, will I'll you? look after it, sir. Well, I don't trust everybody with Mickey, you know. Well, I'm nobody special. But you can trust me. Yeah. See you later tonight. Oh. Right, ta da. Ta da, my love. So, what's she like? I didn't get a chance to see her. Did you meet her? No, but I hear she's very, um, nice and, um, stuck up. <laughs> well, you know what people around here are like. She probably isn't at all. Mind you, Gordon was always very keen to better himself. Oh, good luck to him. He was supposed to be very bright, wasn't he? Well, he was certainly clever. He wasn't so much highly intelligent as a good hard worker, you know. Not the same kind of intelligence as Ken, for instance. At least he had the nouse to get out from round here. I didn't know you wanted to get out of round here. Well, I don't. Well... Only sometimes, anyway. But you see, he could have done, and that's the difference. I hope you're glad he didn't. Oh, why? Oh, don't give me any biscuits. They're fatal, then. I'm going to stop coming round if you keep putting biscuits in front of me. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm past the stage of worrying about the odd inch. And if I don't care, well, there's nobody else to. Oh, no, but it's bad for you all round, isn't it? I mean, you finish up having a heart attack or summer. I mean, there's no point in downing a bed at the hospital and then filling it yourself, is there? Well... Don't credit me with that just yet. There's nothing finally settled. Oh, I see. And is this since the first Mrs. Swain came round? 
first, Mrs. Swain. Oh, that's a rather tactful way of putting you it. You don't want to listen to her, Emily. But she is his wife. Was a long time ago. Now she just suddenly turns up and all she's doing is cashing in. I don't think you can really judge her like that. Emily, you do not owe her a thing. That's not really the point. The question is whether Arnold owed her something. What? You're joking. Listen, love, whatever the rights and wrongs were all them years ago, you're the one. You're the one that he, he felt he had something to make up for, and that, that's why he left you the money. But I don't want it. Well, you're not keeping it, are you? Trampoline for the youth club, bed for the hospital. Just tell her she's too late. Well, certainly too late for the youth club. Well, there you are, then. If she comes round scrounging, you just tell her the cupboard's bare. I didn't really get the impression of someone scrounging. Mm, just as well under the circumstances, isn't it? Oh, go on, then. Give us one. <laughs> Thanks. I think you've nearly cracked here with that bow tie, Fred. She was knocked out. Didn't do any harm, did it? <laughs> Very subtle. I think you ought to wear it more often, all it suits you. She definitely hasn't got anybody to go with, you know. Betty asked her in the car. Oh, aye. What did she say? She said it was uh, invidious. What was? Well, choosing between rival claimants, like. That means there aren't none. Your stock is definitely on the up, Fred. Have you seen it in trade, Rag? Uh, well, what's he say? Well, they're saying it's going to be a terrific thing, like. Says Newton and Ridley director, Basil Stainrod, mm -hmm. we intend this to be a memorable evening. After all, we intend to be around for another hundred years, despite current trading difficulties. No less than four generations of the Ridley family will be represented at the centenary celebration. See what I mean? That's where you want to be. Casual word in the right ear over the trifle like. Saves all them interviews and letter writing. Oh, that's how it's done, Lynch. Well, they'll all be there. Entire top brass. If you can just. Yeah. If I can just. You'll only show yourself up. You're a potman, Fred G. You always will be. Don't know why you're fooling yourself. See you later, Yeah, well, that's all. Turn up. Hey, this thing of yours out here, you're not going to leave it there till it rots, are you? What? That is home to me, you know. Yeah, well, we've had cars abandoned in this street before. They're a flipping nuisance. I'm not going to abandon it. I'm going to fix it. It's a very good vehicle. Oh, yeah. Where well, are you going to fix it? Out there? Well, not if I can get it towed somewhere more convenient. Um, how are you fixed yourself, mate? I've not got nowhere. Take it to a garage. Oh, I thought, you know, seeing as you don't like it where it is, you could give us a tow. Did you hear that? Cheek. Well, have you seen his car? It's only titchy. Yeah. Well, is there anybody round here who's friendly who's got a powerful motor? Oh, there's a fella walked in who's halfway there like. Oh, you're talking about me again, aren't you? You've got a powerful motor, haven't you? True. Well, he's looking for somebody with a powerful motor. Oh, yeah. Go on. Oh, uh, I'm looking for a tow. I've broken down out there. Oh, that's your heap out there, is it? Well, you don't need a tow. You need a set of roller skates and a southwest. You'll be better Thank off. Thank you. That is a very good vehicle. All I need is a tow. Listen, the last time I was anything like that tied behind a car, it said just married. Sorry, sunshine. Well, I didn't really expect any help from another capitalist. What do you mean, another capitalist? You a capitalist? Oh, aye. At least I will be when I get it fixed. And when I'm in my roller, and you're broke down on the East Lanks, I'll give you a very friendly wave. I'll point you out to chauffeur. I'll say, I used to know him. I hope you get the chance, sunshine. Here, I'll tell you what. Come here. <clears throat> Go across the loading base, see the boys, uh, they're fixed up. Tell them I sent you. Say you. Well, Mike Baldwin sent you. Hey, oh, right. It's our. Thank very much. Nice lad, mate. Well, he's got the right idea, eh? <laughs> ah. Oh, dear. Ah. Oh, good you did. <laughs> yes, come on. Give it. Thank you. That's taking up a lot of room. Well, it certainly wasn't here when we came to you this morning. Did you get everything you wanted, then? Well, more or less, Chuck. Hey, I hope this is all right, by the way. But, I mean, uh, it's not here for keeps, like, you know, just till I get it fixed. I mean, I could do it in the road, but people just keep running over your legs, and I like them the way they are. Mm. I mean, uh, 
You don't mind, do you? Well, you've got to do it somewhere. Oh, it won't take long, you know. You put it a bit more than I thought. Hey, you must be perished. Here. You must be dying for a cup of tea. Come on in and get your feet up, and I'll put the kettle on for you. I'll just go and scrub my hands. Won't be a sec. Oh. oh, well, he means well. Mm. I think his heart's in the right place, you know. Yes, well, I wish I could say the same for that broken down old van of his. Well. Or his feet. How do you mean? Well, they get too far under the table, far too fast, in my opinion. I mean, on first acquaintance, he's quite charming, like a lot of other stray cats. Once start feeding them, and they're very hard to get rid of. Not at all as you feel that this one's house trained. <laughs> anything else, you know. I'd have hated it if I'd only seen you once. I'm glad you could come back. Oh, well, it was no trouble. It was on my way to the station. What are you going to do when you get back to Worthing? Oh, what do you mean, do? Do you work at all? Oh, yes. In the hotel trade. It's seasonal. And, and what are you doing now? Well, I'm waiting for the season to start. In the summer, you know, I try to put something by if I can. And I was working at Christmas time, not too bad, but I, but I hope this summer's better than last. Mm, that must really affect you. Oh, it does. Mm. And otherwise, you're unemployed at the moment. Oh, well, I'm better than most. I, though I say it myself, um, I'm quite well thought of in the hotel. And Mr Harrison, you know, he's, he's more or less guaranteed me work when things pick up. Mm, it'll so, make a difference getting the widow's pension. Yeah, uh, yes. Well. And the money that Arnold left me... Do you think he should have left it to you? Well, I didn't say that, did I? Do you? Well, I, it was up to him, I suppose, but I think he owed me something once. Yes, I do, because he, he made a mess of my life. But then he made a pretty mess of yours, worse, much worse. Except that the harm he did to me, he did when I was young. And then by the time I'd got over it, I wasn't. Well, he turned me against men, and that's the truth. It shouldn't be the way he made me, not when you're young. And I was brought up very narrow. I knew nothing. And then after that, I didn't like what I did know. I was bitter. I was stupid. Oh, I know it was terrible what he did to you. But when you knew the truth, you knew that it was him. That it was him there was something wrong with. You had no reason to think that it was you. Oh, I do understand what you mean. Well, still. Plenty of people have things go wrong on them and it doesn't turn them. It was just me. It was just, it was just the way I was. <laughs> and you think... Arnold did owe you something for what he did. Well, I, I can't deny that. But that doesn't mean I think you owe me anything. You needn't think that. Well, I think he does owe you something. I think he owes you at least this. Oh, God. Oh, Mrs. No, I Bishop, I thought no. about it. I decided last night, really. Oh, but this is all the money he left you. Yes. Well, I can't possibly take all that. Well, no. I, I'd be glad if you would. I suppose he was trying to put something right, but you must realise perfectly well that money doesn't... I don't want it, and it so happens I don't need it. But well, in a way, I'm glad he left it. Having it didn't do anything for me, but getting rid of it does. Oh, yes. I thought you were going to Ashworth for that Luritex dress and jacket. No, I have to have persuaded her out of that. Ashworth may be all very well for kitchen furniture, but they fall a little short when it comes to haute couture. <laughs> yeah, I decided on altering them for me outfit. I couldn't make my mind up, though, could I, Mrs Walker? I mean, it was either this, you see, or a dark blue one. Well, I know the dark blue slims you off a lot, but I thought, well... Blow it. Oh, you did right, yeah. love. It looks really nice yes. on you, that. I bet it cost you. Oh, I wouldn't like to tell you, love. I didn't like Mrs. Walker knowing she thinks I've been in the till. <laughs> well, you don't get many excuses, do you? Well, that's what I thought. I mean, it's for a big day, isn't it? And if I don't get any use for it afterwards, well, it's been well worth splashing out, you know. Are you going to show us what you got, Mrs. Walker? Way. Oh, it's lovely what she's got for the do. It's gorgeous. Let's see it. All in the fullness of time. 
Right now, I'd be glad of somebody behind the bar. Oh, Fred's happy. We're not so busy now. Yes, well, never mind about making Fred happy. Make me happy. Yes, <clears throat> Mrs Walker. Um, Mrs Walker, I hope you don't mind me asking you, but what is it, love? Look, when we go to London, you know, for the wedding, well, I was hoping to make a little break of it, so... Mm. Well, how if I don't come back with you and I stay down there for a few days? What do you think? Elizabeth, dear, while you're asking me is, would it be convenient for you to have a couple of days off your holiday? Yeah, that's right. And the answer is, it would be very convenient. Ah, oh, good. <laughs> you see, dear, I've been toying with the same idea myself. I don't get to London much these days, and then I thought, well, no, not without company. Oh, you're thinking of stopping over yourself? Now that I know you are, yes. Oh. Well, after all, Elizabeth, so much to see, mm. so much to do. I mean, think of the galleries. Mm. One could spend a lifetime just catching up with this country's artistic mm. heritage. Yes, I'm sure you could. And so much better in company. Mm. I'm so glad you asked, dear. <laughs> Oh, she is funny, you know. She won't show us what she's bought. You know why, don't you? Because Betty's in there in all the finery. She'll show us tomorrow. You mark my words. Well, I'm not bothered if I never see it. Well, you should be. You want to be there on a big night, don't you? Fat chance. Oh, Fred G, talk about faint heart. Well, any road, why should you want me to escort her? The same reason any woman would want you, because she's nobody else. So? Oh, you're doing all right, Fred. You just show her that you don't eat peas on your knife, and I reckon you've cracked it. Anyone working around here? What is your pleasure, my precious? Yeah, well, let's just stick to the drink, eh? Scotch and mate, show you. A large one. Oh, hello. Did they see you then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, tired very much. It was very handy. They fixed it for you. Oh, right, well, you know how it is. It's always a bit more than you think. But uh, it's no problem. Find a bit of please. Ordinary. Best. That is the best. On me, friend. Oh, tired very much. Again. So, a bit of a handy lad, eh? Turn me on to anything, you know. And a scotch. As well as being an electrician. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, reckon you can fix uh, sewing machines, that sort of thing. Oh, I reckon I can turn me on to anything, really. There you go. Well, I'll tell you what, the bloke that does my maintenance is ill, so uh, why don't you pop in and see me in the morning? Hey, I'm really glad I bumped into you, you know. I've really landed on my feet round here. I've got terrific digs and all. Hey, you won't catch me sleeping in that van again. Not in order. So you like it round here, then? Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to stick around. <laughs> well, no, she's gone back to Worthing. Empty handed, I hope. Be honest, dearie, I think that's a matter between me and her. You're quite right, I said no. Well, she's only thinking of you, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, I know, I'm sorry. Anyway, did you tell her that the, uh, the money was all accounted for? If you must know, I gave it to her, but I'd be grateful if that didn't go any further. You're daft. You gave her it, the lot? Well, she needs it a lot more than I do. Well, how do you know that? I know what her circumstances are. Oh, from her? Did anybody else tell you? Listen, if she'd cracked on, she was hard up. Well, that's not surprising. She would, wouldn't she? Of course she would, Emily. I'm sure she told me no more nor less than the truth. It's obvious she's not very well off. You could tell from everything about her. You do realise you might have been conned? Well, I don't think so. And the slight chance that you're possibly right won't cost me any sleep. I'm glad to see the last of that money. Well, what shall I tell them at the hospital? That you're not going to donate the bed? I mean, I can be discreet. No, I've said, and I'll do as I've said. Oh, Emily, it's, it's a lot out of your own money, you know. Nobody will expect you to. I've said. And anyway, now it'll be just to do with the memory of Ernest, and it won't have to do with any other memories. So I'm happy. And can that be an end to it? I see. So you and Betty will be swanning round London and us galley slaves just keep rowing, eh? Hey, take the notice, Mrs Walker, no trouble. You deserve all do you do? Well, you know, I've always thrived on work, but I do find that I enjoy the odd little break nowadays. Yeah, you have worked. How long have you been with Newton and Ridley's now, Mrs Walker? Oh, longer than I care to think. Yeah, well, they've been keeping tally, so you'll be at that do. Well, they've got to reward the old war horses sometimes, Fred. You get stuck in there, Mrs Walker. Get that nose bag on. Oh, did I tell you I've heard about the table arrangements? Oh. No, well, it seems the top people are all at different tables. Nellie Harvey's with the head brewer and his wife. Oh, who are you knocking elbows with? Well, actually, one of the Ridley family. Oh. Yes, Sarah Ridley. 
Nelly Harvey will never speak to me again. Oh, 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 okay, that's chuffed her. <laughs> Should chuff you and all. Me, why me? Well, wangle this, Fred. You'll be sitting at the same table as Sarah Ridley. She's worth a fortune. I'll give over. She's probably old man Ridley's grandma. <laughs> Where have you been all your life? She's his granddaughter. She's the same age as me and no cracks from you. She spends most of her time in the Caribbean. And she's single. Get in there. She might just go for a bit of rough. I'm trying, aren't I? I'm trying. Hey, Lynch. You sure she's, uh, she's single, like? Cos, uh, well, you know, birds of that age, they uh, <laughs> generally go for me, you know. <laughs> oh, hiya. You're in. Hey, you know that fellow at the factory? He's a really nice bloke. I got some work there just like that. Hey, what's up? Hey, is that a telegram? Is it bad news? What is it? I won't be going to no wedding, lovely. Have they called it off? Split up? Well, it happens, doesn't it? The wed already. In the registry office. It says, decided last minute business trip to America. Honeymoon on the firm. Tell you in a month. Love, Gordon. What happened to the big wedding? He just didn't want me there. Bert, it's no use. I'm not going into work. I'm coming with you. Look, just put your coat back on. No. Will you do as you're told? Bert, I said I'm coming with you. Look, I do not want you in that courtroom, love. You won't be doing me any favours. You know what it's like. You know what it's like with our Brian. I mean, we'll just be sitting there like a couple of lost souls on public view. I'd be worrying, love, about you worrying. Just get your coat on, go to work. Give yourself something to do, take your mind off it. You must be joking. Bert, what's going to take my mind off you standing in that court? Folk who aren't fit to lick your boots doing you down. They could even send you to prison. Please, Ivy, I don't want you there, all right? I just... I just don't want you mixed up in it, love. Bert. Please, love. Yeah, you're right, love. Will you promise me that uh, you let me know as soon as you know how to... Yeah, I'll give you a pause. Hey, I love you. Good luck. Morning, Hilda. Morning. Any developments? I don't think so. Morning, Fred. Lynch. Well? well she's gone out, hasn't she? So, I haven't had a chance. Well, where could Mrs Walker have gone to at this time of the morning? Gone to buy a wedding present for our Gordon. Oh, you'd think it would a gift for Charlie and Diane instead of Betty Turpin's lad. I know he thinks he's a cut above the rest of us because he lives in London, like, but uh, we all know which side of the blanket he were born on, don't we? Not nice, Hilda. No, true, though. Anyway, Lynch, I don't think I'm too, uh, I'm too keen on this brewery dudes now, you know. It's too many stuffed shirts and lardy down and all that, you know. You what? Yeah. You don't want to swan about Carnbrook Hall looking like you're on a fairground? A big cigar in one hand, glass of champagne in the other, Mrs Walker hanging on your arm, not to mention your every word... Unless, of course, you don't think she'd ever consider you as an escort. If you ask me, she's more likely to consider Yogi Bear. You know what I think, don't you? I think she wanted to ask me in the first place, but she's too scared that I turn her down. Well, you could always put that to the test, Fred, by volunteering. Well, I will. As soon as she comes back, I'll have a word. That Renara squeak killer, Hilda. I thought for a minute there we'd lost us fish. <laughs> Whale more like. <laughs> Andy Walker's scared of Fred. Yeah, it's like saying I'm scared of Stan. Well, you are, aren't you? Well, only when he turns over in bed. Because if he ever rolls on me, I'll be done for. Flat as a pancake. <laughs> There'll not be enough left of me to scrape up on a butter knife. <laughs> Hello, oh, Betty. Look, we're just having a bit of a light do, aren't we? <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, come on, Betty. Where's that happy, smiling mother-in-law to be? Betty? They got married yesterday, lover, in a registry office. I had a telegram from our Gordon. Oh, dear. Poor Betty. She was that looking forward to it. What did I say? I said he was just a jumped up now to pound, didn't I? And she's no better neither. Fancy doing that to his mother. 
I'm sure everything will turn out all right. Well, they can't hang you for it these days, can they? They're going to catch your mouth shut. I know that, but I'm not made that way, you see, look. No, neither am I, Mr Tilsman. Oh, well, if you can think of something quick to confess to, you could go to court with her, too. I'm sure they'd be only so pleased to fix you up with a summons or two. Look, it's not funny, Vera. No, I know it ain't. Hey, good luck, kid. Ciao, so, love. And uh, if, if you need any money, you know, for bail or anything, well, I'll willingly lend you some, if you know what I mean. Yeah, thanks, Mavis. Hello, Ray. Oh, I was just coming to find what, you. What, wish me luck? Yeah. And I bet you were, weren't you? Hey, Pudding. Hey, I'm having a kiss this morning. <laughs> All right, then. See you in Dartmoor. Ta-ra. You'll all be fine in one day. Of course they will. And listen, if they do it, we'll all march down to the police station and spring him. I was going to do that if Brian was sent to prison. I was thinking of smuggling a gun to him or bribing the warder at the gate. Oh. <laughs> hey, listen, give us some facts quick. I've wasted enough time already. Yeah, I thought you were late. Yeah, well, it were in one day. Forgot to put alarm on. He reckoned he thought it was Sunday. Well, every day is sunny to so that lazy pig. Bar of Turkish Delight, please. Uh, hang on a minute, love. There's a lady before you. There's two. Yeah, I can't stand sassy holes, can you? No. Oh, I'm sorry I'm a bit pushy, ladies, but I've got a job working in industry at that factory on Coronation Street. Have you? Hey, I work there. Oh, they didn't tell me that, otherwise I might not have taken it. Hey, watch it, sunshine. Look, now you're both served. Oh, thanks. Hey, I'd walk with you to the factory. Only people might think you've got grandchildren. I can see Baldwin's not going to be big enough for me and him, kid. Sir, <laughs> Ooh, there'll be sparks yeah. flying there. He's a nice enough lad. Oh, he's very personable. Well, what do you want? Oh, um, have you got any bun cases? Oh, are you making buns for Brian? Yes, I am. Because he likes them and he deserves them. <laughs> hey, I like your shoes. Yeah, everybody likes them. Only ought to, the best you can get. I bet you'll feel like a brass monkey in there, don't you? Yeah, I do. I can imagine. <sighs> Brian, uh, you're not prone to fainting, are you? No. Of course, I've got some bad news for you. Bad news? Immediately followed by some good news. So which do you want first? The bad news. I'm selling up. You are? I'm disposing of my assets. I'm going liquid. What? Hey, Ron, what about me? Well, that's where the good news comes in. You're coming to Quattar with me. Where? I thought you wanted to know where Quattar is. I didn't know where it was myself till this morning. One at Gulf States, oil country, Middle East. Sun, sand, camels, the odd belly dancer. Plenty of shekels. Look, Ron, do you mind speaking plain English, please? Well, I thought I were doing, but I'll have another try. See, I've sold petrol station. It's just a liability to them. And I've just got a customer for this place. You know him, Alan Pickles. But he works on his own, so it's Tata O'Brien. Now, that's where Quattar comes in. I've just landed a contract to service a vehicle pool for their government, and they reckon I can bring me own mechanic with me. That's you, innit? And by the way, it's 200 quid a week, tax-free. So what do you say? Say? You know, move your lips up and down. What do you say about it? Well, I can't just say like that, can I? Not like that. Look, Ron, I've got to know more about it. I've got to think about it. I mean, what about Gail? What about... How long's it going to be for? Well, it'll be six months at least. Six months? Look, Brian, it, it's good money. It's a change of scenery. You're going to get some sun on your back. It's not forever. Just think about the alternative, eh? More than likely, it'll be straight on the door. But don't take too long to think about it. There's some bump in my office. Go and have a look when you're finished here. Hey, Ron. What? What does your wife think about it? <laughs> She's already packed my bag. Go on, then. Prove it, mastermind. Yeah? It'll be boiling in no time. Oh, yeah. Oh! I've had a shock. I've had electric shock. Rubbish, you can't have. Hey, I'm not even a tickle. I have, I tell you. Listen, I ought to know my arm's tingling. Rubbish. 
Oh, you won't be saying rubbish, will you? When you've electrocuted everybody in the factory, it's lethal, that thing. So what's so fascinating about a kettle lift? It's Einstein here, Mr Baldwin. He's nearly electrocuted me. Well, she's imagining it, Mr Baldwin. It's as safe as houses. So check the plug. I've only just put a new plug on it. So check it again. These ladies are very sensitive, very delicate. Nothing, and I repeat, nothing must upset them. Well, they get the union in. OK, but there's no wrong with it. Right, come on then, back to the grindstone. Mush, mush. Well, I don't think I'll be, be able to do much work. I mean, my arm's tingling. So what's new? Hey, did you really get a shock off that? Did I, Eric? But he wanted bringing down a peg or so he did. Do you want to go home and wait? No, thank you. I've only been worse there. Left on my own, I'd probably be pulling holes out at curtains or something. I am all right, honest. I've got some time sheets to see. Well, here we are. And it was quite a successful expedition. I bought a lovely tea service at Fisher's Sale, and Mr. Fisher kindly knocked something off the sale price. Not that they'll ever know. Where's Elizabeth? Uh, she's in the living room having a cuppa. She'll approve. It looks very expensive. Mrs. Walker. Yes, dear. She's had a bit of bad news. Who has? Betty. Wedding stuff, isn't it? I knew that girl couldn't make up her mind. I saw her looking at Gordon as if she'd never seen him before more than once. No, it's not off, Mrs. Walker. It's very much on. In fact, it's already happened. Happened? They got married yesterday in a registry office. I don't believe you. What about us? What about Elizabeth and me? We bought virtually new wardrobes, including us. And this, well, they won't see that. Betty's very upset. Yes, of course, she must be. Oh, bad children. You'd think they belong to another species, not the same flesh and blood. Oh, dear. Put that upstairs when you live out of sight. Yes, Mrs. Walker. Oh, back is she? Right. I'll go and put her out of her misery. I wouldn't, Fred. Not just now. I suppose Bet's told you. I'm very sorry, dear. Well, there's nothing that could help, really. Oh, well, no. He had to go on this business trip to America and, well, he'd have been away at least a month, so... I thought they might as well get married sooner and make it their honeymoon, you know. All expenses paid. I see. I'm very disappointed, though. Like you must be, Mrs Walker. Not really, dear, no. Oh, I mean, what about all those clothes you bought? Look, let me pay for them. I don't want you to be out of pocket. I pockets. wouldn't dream of it, Elizabeth, not coming for something. Mm. Maybe a christening in the autumn. I'd be invited to that. Yeah. You never know. Do you know what my first thought was when he told me? He was ashamed of me. He didn't want me to go to that posh wedding. That's why they did this. Now, that was a very silly thing to think. Yeah, I you know. Actually, I mean... We might just have been the stars of the show, me and you. I'm sure we would have been. I bet it felt real good, you know, rushing off to a registry office with a few friends. And she had the chance, you know, that wonderful wedding. The day to remember all her life. You know, Elizabeth, I think that you and I must be very old-fashioned. Yeah. I think we must be. I'm going to give you for your dinner, eh? Not chocolate pudding, that's for sure. Any more chocolate pudding and you'll start to look like it. You will. Uh, Go on, then. Why not, if that's what you like? Time enough to worry about what shape you are, eh? Do you know I spoil you rotten? Eh? I do. It's because you're beautiful. You are. You're beautiful. Hiya. Hi. Got any cheese and onion? Is that all right? Yeah, great. Hello, Tarzan. Hey, do you think we'd better stop calling him that? He might start swinging from the lampshades. I think he'll start doing that whether we call him Tarzan or not. You could be right. Do you know where I found him this morning? In the wardrobe. Gail. Right inside. What? Uh, what would you say if um, I said I was going to go working abroad? Well, you're not, are you? Well, I could. Ron's going to work in Quasar and he wants me to go with him. Ron's going to work in where? 
In Quetar. I've never heard of it. Where is it? It's the Middle East in Saudi Arabia. Well, he can't. And what about his garage? He's selling up. What about your job? Is he selling that up and all? Yeah. You're halfway there, aren't you? <laughs> There it is again. Some mothers do have them. This kettle, is that safe, mother? You could shake hands with the element and you wouldn't get a shock. I'm not touching it. I'll bring a flask first and stop calling me mother. Don't you understand? I've got amps in my veins, not blood. It's not your veins I'm worried about, it's your brain. Oh, very good, that. I suppose you'll be going to have a lie down now, won't you? I bet you'll never add a mother. <laughs> You'll have to get up very early to get one over that one. I laugh, last laugh, don't you worry. I've a lot of she's set and wrote in there. Uh, she'll be better off coming for a drink with us. Shall I go and ask her if she's coming? Yeah. Now, he's not going to ring up now, is he, Ivy? He'll know it's your dinner hour. Yeah. He'll ring home now, won't he? That's if there's hope to ring about. They might have shut shop and all. So why not come for a drink with us? Oh, I couldn't do that either. What, go for a drink with Bert, where he is? Thanks for asking, though. Hello, Bert. That's me. What happened? Why didn't you ring me? Hey, which do you want me to answer first? Oh, come on, Bert. What happened? Hey, I got fined, didn't I? And, uh, believe it or not, I couldn't phone because I couldn't find a phone box that worked, even in a court building. Oh, thank God for that. Hey, aren't you going to ask me how much I got fined? Don't care how much you got fined, love. All I care is seeing you back here. Well, I care. It's me that's had to pay it. They fined me 30 quid for doing that job for Len, yeah. 30 quid for decorating for Ken, and, hey, 30 quid costs, and I've got to pay back what I fiddled. 90 quid? Cracky, that's a bit steep, isn't it? Didn't think I'd get costs, you know. Whew, I don't know. They do you, they find you, and then they ask you to pay for it. Talk about there being more than one way to skinning a cat. Yeah, but still, it's all over now, all of it. Yeah. Except that... Oh. Well, I think it's going to be in the papers. There was a, a reporter there scribbling away like mad, you know. Oh, I can hear him now. <laughs> Have you seen this in paper? Look, Bert, all has been done for fiddling on the hole. And his wife's working and all. I don't know, some people are never satisfied, are they? Hey, come on. Well, that's what they will say. Truth is, Bert tells us that blooming honest is a fool to himself. Well, at least I can hold my head up. I don't know. You'll never get on, you know, Bert, not in this world. I'll manage, don't you worry. Especially now I've got a job, eh? Oof. Hey. Come on, tatty Ed. I think we'll just celebrate with a kiss and then I might just go out and get pie-eyed and all. Good idea. All right, love. Of course I'm all right. I'm not a child, you know, sulking because you can't go to a party. I know you're not. At least I'm sure they'll ask me to go down and see them once they get back from America. Yeah. Who knows? They might build a granny flat on to where they're living. You! I'm not a granny. Not by a long joke. Sorry. Seems to have slackened off, dear. <laughs> yes, it has. Well, I think I'll leave you to I've got a lot of paperwork to do. Right. Well, heck, you got off lightly, didn't you, mate? Well, I wouldn't say that, Fred, no. Well, you must have done one or two other foreigners, you know, like you did for Fake Look and Barlow. Know what I mean? <laughs> no, I don't know what you mean, Fred, because I didn't. All right. Still winning friends and influencing people, are you, Fred? Oh, you did, oh. Yeah, but it struck home that, didn't it? You know, since he's been on the door, he's got that much money stuffed under his mattress, he gets dizzy when he goes to bed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd let you know, Mrs Walker's in a sanctum and available. Well, I can't leave now at middle of dinner, can I? Well, if you don't strike soon, Fred, she'll find somebody else to take her to the ball. She will. Mm, she hasn't had much luck, I must admit. I think I'm being used as, like, last resort. I don't like that. 
Can't you bring yourself to do that poor woman a favour, Fred, a kind act? Well, to put it like that. Good lad, off you go. Gee, you could talk him into standing on his head in a bucket of water if you tried, couldn't you? Hopefully. <coughs> I can listen while I'm working, you know, Fred. Oh, well, it, it's just that, uh, well, I've been thinking, you see, Mrs. Walker. Uh, <clears throat> oh, Fred, do get on with it. Uh, well, uh, it, well, it, it's about the brewery door, Mrs. Walker. Now, I understand that you've got nobody to go with you. Uh, you know, with your Billy being engaged like, and, uh, well, there aren't many unattached fellas of your age around these days, are they? And, well, rather than waste an invitation, Mrs. Walker, I thought I would offer to squire you myself. <laughs> what do you say? Squire me? You? Yes, well, I mean, I'm like you in the trade, aren't I? You know, I could get myself a nice new whistle and flute. You know, I am from Moss Bros and that. <laughs> I think we'd make a very handsome couple, you and me, Mrs. Walker. A bit like Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn. I never liked Catherine Hepburn. Well, uh, Gary Cooper and that. Uh... Fred? Yes, Mrs. Walker. Thank you for the idea, bizarre though it may be, but I have got a partner for the brewery dinner. Oh. Oh, well, uh, well... A it... fellow licensee, as it happens, mm. from Presbury. And he will be squiring me. Oh, well, if, uh, if you're fixed up, Mrs Walker, well, that's OK. It's, uh, it's not really my sort of a booze-up, you know. I, I just uh, didn't want you missing out, that's all. Thank you, Fred. Well, well, don't feel as if you've let me down or anything, Mrs Walker. I mean, I'm not really bothered. It's just... Uh... I'll, I'll, I'll get back to the bar, Mrs Walker. Gail? I just got you to bed. You was tired, huh? You were asleep on the floor. That's how I feel. Brian. Yeah? It's up to you. That's hardly fair. No. But I can't be fair or practical. I know it's good, Mommy. I know it'll put us back on our feet again. I know it's better than being on the dole. I don't want you to go. I don't want you to leave me and Nicky for six months. No way. Do you think I want to leave you and Nicky, eh? No. I think you think you should. Hiya. Have you heard? Uh, no, oh, we, I was going to ring, but Nicky's been a right little devil today. Yeah, when I've been out all afternoon. Well, how did Dad get on? He's just a fine, love. Well, when I say just a fine, I mean he's got 90 pounds to find altogether, but ain't it smashing news? Fantastic. Where is he? Sleeping it off. He's had one or two too many, haven't he, this dinner time. But can you blame him, love? No. Where's Babby? He's upstairs. Is he all right? Yeah, he's just tired. Can I go and have a little peep? I have to tell her. What can I tell her if I've not decided? I think you have decided. Well, we all kid ourselves, don't we, all the time? I mean, well, we'd never get through if we didn't. Put well, that on. He don't tear much. She stops eating cream buns because they make a lot of crumbs. Perhaps I'll buck up in the spring. And you said that last spring. Then you found that dead lamb when you went on a walk. Yes, that little lamb. I mean, why? I mean, nature gives us all that beauty with one hand and then it takes away life, the means to enjoy all that beauty with the other. You know, I was feeling very happy a minute ago. Me too. Oh. Hello. Can I have a light ale, please? You can, sure. You can have it on me for being so cheerful and looking it. Oh, thanks very much. Well, you have to try now and again, don't you? <laughs> hey, yeah. Has he asked Mrs Walker yet? Yeah, he's been cuckolded. He's never. She means Mrs Walker's got somebody else to take her. Oh, no. All will be revealed when he picks her up tomorrow night. <laughs> He's not from the same escort agency as you, this fella, is he, Fred? Oh, get knotted, Lynch. Good okay. evening, ladies. Mrs. Walker. Hey, yes. Uh, we believe Prince Philip's taking you tomorrow night, after all. <laughs> not quite, dear, no. I just was speaking to the gentleman who's taking me, actually, on the phone, finalising the arrangements. Which reminds me, Fred. Yes, Mrs. Walker. I shall require your services tomorrow night. Oh? Yes. To show for Mr. Bannister and myself. Safe getting a taxi. <laughs> Don't look at me now. I'm off, Gail. Hello. That's just to say 
whatever you decide, it's all right by me and Nicky. Hey, you know, I might get another job, you know, if I hang around. I mean, one will give me a good reference. And you might not. I'll see you later, though. You're a lovely mover, Hilda. All that's lacking is a roll stuck between your teeth. Yeah, and the rest. Lack an invitation to the ball. How's our very own Sid Charisse this morning? Oh, well, what do you expect? Fancying herself even more than normal. And Fred? Oh, there's no sign of him. No, no, he'll be lying in bed with his face to the wall, wondering whether to run off and join the circus. Poor old <laughs> Fred. Now it ever seems to go right for him, does it? No, he's not on his own, neither. Do you know, I was saving up for a new woolly vest, and Stan went and paid the milkman with the money this morning. Mind you, he's not been paid since Christmas. You're a rum pig, Hilda. What are you? <laughs> Morning, Mrs Walker. Tonight's the night, eh? Yes, indeed. Bet you're looking forward to it. <laughs> not exactly a new experience for me, you know, dear. I have been to grander affairs. Ah, but not with a new bow as well. Now, come oh. on. Hardly a bow. It's just my escort. Though, of course, he is a widower. And you're a widow. Case of the right foot meeting the right welly, I'd say. <laughs> well, I must be up and get my hair done. Any sound of Fred? Not according to Hilda, no. He's sulking in bed about having his nose pushed out tonight. You do know he wanted to escort me to the dinner, do you? Yes, he did mention it. I tried to talk him out of it. But you know, Fred, stubborn. As if. Fred, indeed. What is it they call him in the town pubs? Flash Fred. Flash Fred. He ought to think himself jolly lucky I'm letting him drive Mr. Bannister and myself. I'd say he was privileged, Mrs. Walker. Fred? Fred? Yes, Mrs. Walker? Didn't you hear me calling you in the hall just now? No. You must be asleep in your ears. Now, anyhow, I want you to clean the car this morning inside and out. Well, what about my cellar work? That isn't as important as the rover. I don't want people saying that Mr. Bannister arrived, arrived in an old banger. So, lots of elbow grease and spit and polish. And the same thing goes for you, Mrs. Ogden. I don't want Mr. Bannister tripping over the dust when he calls for me. Excuse me. Do you know, she thinks she's running chats for fat one instead of a scruffy little backstreet pub. And a comment from you, Fred? I'll shove that car in a car wash and leave the flipping windows open. I bet you don't. <laughs> oh, and Vera's complaining that her machine's into me. It's all right when I check it. Probably an excuse for when her work's rubbish, so have, have a butcher's, will you? Well, no. Use your loaf. I don't want it stopped now, do I? It's taking all this time to get into full flight. No, stop it now. She'll go into a coma. Have you got a good opinion of any of your workers, Mr Baldwin? No. Uh, just asking. Oh, uh, just one thing. If I work during my dinner hour, will I be on double time? No. Hey, I didn't think I would be. Vera is not going to like that. What? You letting him loose on her machine. She reckons he can't tell a fuse from a chick butter. Vera won't know, will she? She'll be reading a dirty book in the laundrette wherever she goes for lunch. That's what I like to see. Fingers are blur. My machine's been acting up again, Mr Baldwin. Well, sing to it or something. Tell me, uh, what love story are you reading this week? It's called uh, The Virgin's Fall. That's my girl. What did you want to know that? Oh, search me. Hey, I'll bury that when you've done with it, kid. I shouldn't bother. She don't fall very far. <laughs> Hello, look. What are you doing here? Have you come for a job? I, hey, you can have mine, kid, and I'll look after that little beauty. You? You wouldn't know a gent to hold him up. I would when he performed once, sir. Hey, hello, my little touchy. What brings you to here, then? I don't know how to tell you this without upsetting you, Ivy. Tell me what, love? I'm only here because I thought you might get to hear from someone else. You know how news travels round here, like it's got wings. Get to know what, girl? Brian's thinking of going to work abroad. Work abroad? Abroad? No, Ivy, it's only for six months. <laughs> Why, girl? I mean, well, he's got a good job here, huh? Not for much longer. Ron Sykes is selling up. Oh, no. 
He's going to work out in the Middle East. Yeah. He's offered to take Brian with him. Same job as here, good enough. Well, well, what about you? Will he be taking you and Nicky with him? No. What do you mean he's leaving you behind? Only for six months. Six, six months is six months, Gail. Look, come on, you've not but this minute been wed. I don't want him to go either. I'd be happier if he never went further than the front door. But I don't want him on the door the way Bert was, so he's got to go, has not he? This is 1982. The world's getting smaller all the time, isn't it? It'll only be like he's down the bottom of the ring, really. Yeah, yeah, of course it will, love. I mean, uh, well got to think about my Uncle Bernard. He went to work abroad in Peru. He only made a fortune. Right, I'll be on good money. Where they are then? Has he definitely decided? Not definitely. He's going to see Ron this morning. Ron? I hope so. I'm just thinking, one thing I'll regret leaving behind this car. I've had some good times, me and her. Business-wise and... Uh, <laughs> Well, everything wise, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Well, it's decision time, lad, isn't it? What's it going to be, eh? Big wide world or the daily trek down at job centre? Coming with you. Well, say something. Well, I'm surprised. Why? Well, I had you down for the job centre. I wouldn't have said that six months back, but. Well, I don't know what we all this trouble you've had and then your domestic burdens at home. It just seems to have squeezed all bottle out here, Well, it hasn't, mate. And I'm prepared to take a chance. So was Gail. Well, I'm very pleased. Because I reckon me and you was going to cut a right sway through that Middle East. But with my good looks and your repartee, <laughs> we were like Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. You reckon? Yeah, I've already bought me a new cosy. Dead snazzy. When you've got a minute, Give this bird a tune up, will you? Because I've got a punter coming to have a look at it this afternoon and I want it to be dead right. OK? Hey, can I ask you something? Right. Why are you going to go? I don't know, I, I just want to have a go. While I still can. There's got to be better places to live than this. Right. Someone else has not told you. You don't know who my favourite author is, do you? Hey, I didn't think you could read. Good yard, Kipling, lad. On the road to Mandalay, where the fly is we just play. And the dog from the shop. Well, it's very pretty, Mrs. Walker. Well, I think that accessories are so important, don't you? Mm -hmm. I always say don't spot shit for half of the time. Yes. How much do I owe you, Melvis? It's £9.20, I'm afraid, Mrs. Walker. Ooh, as much as that. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's a Sunday's, isn't it? Then where would Sunday be without a browse through the heavies? Hey, I like news at World and all. Is that a Sunday paper? Mm. £10, dear. Thank you. Well, I wish I was coming with you tonight, Mrs. Walker. Do you, Mavis? Oh, yes. It's ages since I've been to a really swish affair. Yes, I must say, it's rather nice. Dressing up and going to meet the best people. <laughs> oh, Fred chauffeuring you as well. Can't be bad. He can be useful in his place. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, have a good time. Oh, I think I can guarantee that Gerald and I will have that. Bye-bye. <laughs> She's a stuck-up old bat. Come on, Ad. You're only jealous because you're not going. I suppose I am, really. I never get invited to these ritzy doos. Nearest I've ever been to a Gerald is waving to Geraldo once when he were at Locarno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing my best to understand, Brian. Well, I just don't know what I say, do I? I mean, it's such a shock, this, isn't it? Well, I know, son, I know you can't have any choice, but where the hell did you say it was again? Quaytar? God. Eh? Yes, of course I'll tell your mother, son, but I mean, what the hell is she going to say? I don't know. Ah, well, all right. I'll tell you what, we'll try and come round Friday night. Try and sort it out properly. Yes, of course, I understand. Look, don't worry about it. All right. I'll see you then. Bye, son. Oh, 
How did work go? Oh, thank you. Uh, I've almost forgotten what it's like being on Dole, you know, a nice set of lads and that. Look, Bert, love how Brian's been on. Oh, you know then. Yeah. Has he definitely decided? Yeah. How did you know? Well, Gail came around at factory. Little love didn't want us here in its second hand, you know. That was thoughtful of her, wasn't it? How do you feel about it, love? Well, how do you feel about it? Well, I mean, I don't want him to go, do I? But, well, apparently the lad's not got much choice. Well, I'll tell you honestly how I feel about it, Bert. I say, good luck, twin. Could be making of him this, going away from here, away from this country. I think that's what young folk today should do. Do you? Even if it means you won't see much of it? Yeah, yeah, even if it means that. I see. Ivy Tilsley, I don't believe one word you've just said. But I admire you for saying it, though. Well, you better start admiring two of us, then. Because young girls saying just about the same sort of thing. What do you think? Well, it's very nice. Words fail me, Mrs Walker. Don't you like Mrs Walker's hair, Fred? I didn't quite hear what you said, Fred. Oh, I do hope he's made a good job of that car in the Moody's, and it's very doubtful, you know. He'll have left something like the mm. number plate. He can be so childish at times. Oh, give us a quick gin and tonic, and I'm not stopping. I must go to the laundry today. His shirt's beginning to think there's a drought on. Good afternoon. Oh, you look a million dollars, Mrs Walker. Yes, I know. Pensioners morning at Dorothy's Air Fashions were in. I have no idea this was done by Solomon Pierre. <laughs> oh, of course, it's that brewery do tonight. Hey, well, that should be a good do, okay? Plenty of booze. Make sure they bring you home legless, Mrs. Walker. Won't show you my do, Oh, lovely. Don't you realise, Vera? It's like the grand ball in Cinderella, what she's going to. Well, I'm the rest. What? With the Lord of Landlords there? Be more like the grand binge. Are you going to this soiree then tonight, Fred? Do me a favour, will you, Duckworth? Go and have a lie down on the fast lane of the M6. What's up with Chuckles? Well, you see, he thought he was in with a chance of taking her when nobody else was willing. But she's trapped this bloke from Presbury, a landlord called Gerald. Oh, Gerald. I was sure a fella called Gerald, you know. Never wore any socks and always put his cash in his purse, you know. Well, what a bit he had. <laughs> I bit the same fella. <laughs> so, Flash Fred has been recruited to drive the glass coach instead. Well, no wonder he's got a face like a lemon. Hey, how's young Alec doing across there? Oh, don't mention him to me, kid. He nearly electrocuted me yesterday. Everything you touch now in that factory get a shock. I thought he was doing so well. Well, he is, and I like him, really. Mm. It's just that he thinks he's a comic, and I'm supposed to be comic over there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Rover's return. Bet speaking. Who, cop? Oh, uh, just a second, Mr. Bannister. Uh, Mrs. Walker, it's Mr. Bannister. Gerald, how nice. Get back to Elizabeth, will you? Gerald, I'm here. How nice to hear from you. <laughs> Pardon? Your voice is a little faint, Gerald. You've got what? Well, how severe is it? How high? But, Gerald, what about tonight? What about me? Gerald? Something wrong, Mrs. Walker? It was Gerald. Oh, so we gathered. He's got acute tonsillitis. He can't take me tonight. Dear God. Oh, Mrs. Walker. Well, he's left it a bit late in the day to tell you, auntie, Mrs. Walker. Still, you've got a substitute, haven't you? Who? At the eleventh hour? Well, I thought I heard somebody say Fred. Well, oh, Fred, we're dying for a sec, yeah. You're going to miss him, though, kid, you know. Yeah. Not as much as little Gail will, though. <laughs> There's that little babby and all. I think he ought to have his daddy where he can see him. I wish you'd shut up, Ida Clough. 
Look, I'm not of at moon about our brain going to work abroad, but we'll all have to make the best of it, won't we? Well, I don't blame him, really. I could have gone to America when I were his age. I could have been a GI bride, me. Oh, a cattle baron from Texas, were you, Ida? No, a full-blooded Cherokee Indian from Chicago. But why didn't you go with him there, love? Because I missed my bus one night, going to meet him, I never saw him again. Do you know, Ida, that's the saddest story I've heard in a long time. I know. Oh, I'm sorry, Ida. So hey, listen, I nodded off it, laundry. Do you know, honestly, I remember when his underpants whizzing round. Do you know, they advertise me. Funny that. They never do when he's wearing them. Have you heard about Annie Walker? What about Annie Walker? Well, you know that boyfriend uh, that was supposed to be taking us to that big posh do? He's let her down at last minute, so she's had to ask Fred to step in. Fred G and Annie Walker. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine it? I mean, it's like Selwyn Froggy taking Margaret Thatcher to a, a garden party at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> anyway, shut up, let me get on with her. Oh! It's blown up. My machine's blown up. What's going off? It's blown up, either. It's nearly killed me. Who oh, yes. heck? Look! You know something, don't you? No, I don't, Vera. What's happened? I'll tell you what's happened. Vera's machine's just gone boom. It's you, isn't it? It's you. You've been messing about with it. I only serviced it. Serviced it? You've turned it into a flaming bomb. Hey, bet. I got it. I bought an Alf's dinner jacket. Oh, did you try it on? No, I didn't bother. It'll fit me. It's all right. Same size as me and Alf. Fat? No, powerful. Hey. It's all right. As long as it fits where it touches, that's the main thing. I'll go and tell Mrs Walker she'll be shoved to little mint balls. What are you going to do about your dancing pumps? In here. When we come a bond. <laughs> Well, you just have to keep your eye on him. You know, steer him through the evening. Not my eyes I'm worried about. It's the hundreds of other eyes that are on him. Oh, Elizabeth, I don't know. I bought that new frock. I've had my hair done. Still feel I'm tempting fate and I ought to call it off and go to bed. Well, I mean, as long as he keeps his mouth shut. Well, fairly shut. And he uses the right cutlery. He uses a spoon for almost everything. There you are, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> Jack Buchanan, eat your ass out. Bit ancient. Well, I'll sell it about 20 years, Mrs. Walker. Must be a good one. Really? <laughs> right, well, I'll, uh, I'll go and sort myself out. <laughs> I'll have a shower, shave, and that, you know. I've got myself a nice new deodorant. Moose, it's called. <laughs> Moose. <laughs> Don't go sitting me next to any excitable young ladies, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> <laughs> See you for cocktails. It's going to be a night to remember this. <laughs> Moose, did he call it? Yes, Mrs. Walker. I shall just have to think of England. <laughs> and how long do you reckon? Oh, about half an hour. Do you hear that, Vera? Oh, I don't think I better use that machine now. My nerves have gone. I don't believe it. You got more nerve than a money lender. I could put in for compensation, you know, for shock and distress, and I'd get it. Come off it, Vera. You're not all that shook up. Do you know what I feel like? Shelly. I do. My stomach's churning round even while I'm sat here. I'll be on tranquilizers for a week. The expert out there, who I had to hire at great expense, says that you wrongly connected a single phase motor across three phases, and that is where the trouble was. I could have done. You did. The expert said you did, and I have to believe him, don't I? Because you are no expert. I do all right. All right. Blowing the place up. That's all right, is it? I made a mistake, Mr. Ball. Anyone can do that. That's right, they can, sir. Once. And you made it. What do you mean exactly? I mean that you are fired for making one mistake. Oh, come on, Alec, mate. You've been rumbled. You're no electrician, are you? I mean, where are your qualifications? Are you city and guilds and all that sort of stuff? I serve me time. <laughs> where? In a shop, electrical shop. Yeah, electrical shop. Hair dryers, toasters, that sort of... This is industry, son. Some industry. Now, listen, don't you get sassy with me. You are out because I cannot afford to have you in, right? Now, thank you for everything, apart from... Uh... Well, there'll be a week's money in the office, and that's not bad, is it, for two days' work? Can't you give me another chance? Yeah, of course. If you get the necessary qualifications, we'll talk about it. I will. Someday. And when I do, I'll be back. It's lumming rough on him, weren't you? I mean, after all, this is partly your fault. You set him on, obviously, without checking up on him. Oh, by the way. Anyway, if he's got any sense, he'll profit by this experience. I'll bet you the next time he comes in here, he'll be wearing handmade shoes. Like mine. Everything has to be hard school, you know, don't it? That's right, Ivy. 
because it's the best. I can't believe it, her going to a big do with him. Never in this world. He's a human being, Vera. I mean, he's not a dummy. Oh, is he? Well, I, we didn't know, did we? <laughs> One of them life-size blow-ups. Yeah, if he does show her up, she can stick a pin in him. Oh, Fred's all right, you know, when he's dressed up. Oh, yeah, you can be cruel, you lot, you know. <laughs> well, we don't mean it, do we? <laughs> yeah. Come on, Mavis, let your face slip for once. Hey, you lot see me fine. Have they gone? No, you've not, Mr. Milder. Last turn, Mrs. Walker was powdering her neck. Oh, Fred is powdering the top of his bones. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Will the way is with you, thing? Hair piece, please. Oh, oh, oh three, sure. Oh. Oh. Are you off then, Mrs. Walker? Yes, dear. Now you will make sure everything's secure before you close up tonight, won't you? Yes, I will. Come along, Fred. After you, Anna. Well, I think you look very well together. Very Oh. Oh. Mm. oh, Mavis. Zoodle Pips. <laughs> Anna and Frederick. I don't think they're the cabaret. <laughs> <laughs> What are you crying for, look? That's oh, all right. Just a bit of wind. He's going uh, down again. You know, I can't believe it. I mean, we're just sitting here and everything normal. Maybe it's all a dream. But it's not, though, is it? No. Still, I mean, it's only six months. What, six months, eh? Think of all those people at war. I mean, some of them were away for years. Yeah. I'll just have to keep gathering bits of you up during the next few days. Storing you up for when you're not here. Hey, I get one of those life-size photos done if you like. <laughs> Don't go too far. I'm all right. Really. I even envy you in a way. You like an adventure, won't it? Ah, yeah, I hope so. I'll miss you though, Brian. And Nicky will. Hey, I'll be back on before you know it. Is it? Out of the tail of the dog, Hilda. Uh, <laughs> worth getting togged up for then, was it? <coughs> oh, it was fabulous. I've called Newton and Ridley some names in my time, but when they put a door on Hilda, oh, by God, it, it was nothing short of lavish. Is uh, Mrs. Walker up yet? Well, I took her some tea ten minutes since. She was flat out snoring like a tugboat coming up the Mersey. <laughs> <laughs> tugboat, Anna, yeah? Yeah. Morning, playmate. Don't bang that door. Hello, feeling rough, are we? Had a good night last night, did we? Ooh, belter. Saw him, didn't you? Dicky bow, monkey suit, best patent leather. Yeah, of course I did. Uh, Alf Roberts' stuff, wasn't it? And he got it second hand off an undertaker's assistant. Oh, drop dead, Ill. Credit were credit, Stu. Mrs. Walker may have had her misgivings, but me and Betty, we felt proud. We did really that a lad from the spit and sawdust end of the trade could be in there what you might call mingling with the top brass. Mingling? More like creeping, I'd say. Told you drop dead, Hilda. Well, she couldn't get Mr. Bannister, so you were obvious, weren't you? What do you mean, obvious? Well, you're a bit short upstairs. Bannister upstairs, do you get it? It's all right, yeah, and I'll tell you what, I could have done myself a little bit of good there. Proposed, did you? Proposed, did I, yeah. No, soon don't turn. No, I only got to dancing with that Sarah Ridley, you know, the brewery heiress, no less, giving it the old foxtrots and that. <laughs> Till this burk of a director came butting in. So you were foxtrotting with the director and you get your own pub tomorrow, dear love? All right, all right, you can joke, but I made a good impression there. Oh, she says, Mr G, she says, for such a well-built man, she says, you're very light on your feet. And that's what comes of being light in the pocket. Uh, all right, Hilda, I'm telling you, I could have clicked till this burke of a director fella came butt in and had to, uh, well, go and pull myself another bird then, didn't I? Her to the Guinness fortune, no doubt, dripping in diamonds. <laughs> yeah, double diamonds. <laughs> no, I got the feeling I could have sown a few seeds there, you know, Lynch. I got that... That warm, satisfied glow. Mm. I bet there were a few words said on way home, Fred. Oh, I didn't come home with the nibs. How did you come home, then? Uh, oh, taxi. It's all a bit blurred, you know. Was Rover, then? Oh, suppose she came in. Suppose it's left outside. Not outside now, Fred. Well, the sooner I move on. But you're welcome to stay in. You know that. I'd better be shifting. 
Yeah, you know, full is a rash of exploding kettles, air dryers blowing up, weather field blackout. Yeah, just cos that Vera Duck had got a bit of a tickle. Ooh, I bet she played that up for all it were worth and all. Now, I don't understand what she was moaning about no. herself. I mean, she gave me the impression she liked a bit of a tickle. <laughs> if she fancies her chances and you don't play ball, she's the sort, you know, that could turn very nasty. Look, I'll go and freshen this tea up, though. Yeah. To be honest, you know, I'll hold my hands up, she did get a bit of a belt. See, I don't know that sort of work, really. Factory work, industrial gear. Oh, Mike Baldwin can say what he likes. But my vacuum, it's picking up lovely since you did them brushes. And you know, whatever you call them. Well, I served me time to appliances, see. I don't know anything about this industrial sort of thing. You know, for, I did it for me city and guilds. Yeah. Do you fancy another round, lovey? Oh, I better not. I'll get spoiled, won't I? Because the next digs, you know, it could be one measly slice burnt to a frazzle. Oh, I think it's a shame. Given half a chance, you could have done very well round here. You'd have had your own little business in no time. Yeah, well, maybe. But I did want to travel. And here I'm not three miles from where I grew up. One mistake and that barn pot Vera screaming blue murder. And the others chucking the clogs in and all. <laughs> Let them come to me with their cracks. <laughs> and he's off to Quaytar tomorrow, you know. I mean, we had the day in London first, thanks, Alf. Yeah, getting all his jabs I expect and all his papers and that sorted out. There's no time wasted, is there? Oh, they don't stand on ceremony. I could hardly believe it this morning. I'm stood on the platform and... Train's pulling out and there's our brain gone for six months at least. Did you all go then to see him off? No, just me and Gail, cos we were starting this new job. I didn't want to start having mornings off, you know. Anyhow, I'd better get my skates on. Just popped on for a cup of tea and then went off up to Gail's. Anyway, when you write, give Brian my regards. And mine, yeah, well. Tell him if he gets to Tobruk or Benghazi or the bazaar in Cairo, watch out for a sign. Stan, the desert rat, was here. Listen, you'll never mind your desert rats. My brain will not get up to tricks like that. Oh, the desert, the desert, you know, the wind and the Arabs. That desert gave me the taste for drink, and it's never left me. Hmm. By ex -dad. If tact was water, you'd be flipping Sahara with knobs on. Well, it's right. I rang Rommel and she in the brewery. <laughs> that desert does something permanent to your throat. Hey! I thought you was wondering. Sat here, you could have had your cart pinched. Oh, no, I couldn't. I've got the bucket on the cart, on the angle, and the slightest nudge, and it'll fall off. It's a plastic bucket, you clown. What sort of noise is that going to make? Now, come on. You could have had your car pinched. You could have lost your business. I've seen two young fellas up Morton Street with chamois ladders hanging out their pockets. Now, that chair wants burning. He could be right, love. What was he after? Do you know, I come to think of it, he never said. Oh, mm. just exhausted, I think. I'll give him exhausted. You'd think he'd be after a few bob, what, with my birthday coming up. Ah, well, you never know. Oh, I know what I'll get. Sam Ferry Ann, that's what I'll get. You know, you hear of these folk having these do's and splashing their money about, but, oh, give us a large slice and half a pound of marge, please. I can tell it from butter, but I can't afford the butter. No, we always seem to miss out, though. I mean, coronation time, we never even got a souvenir mug. Give over, Elder, you'll have me crying. All right, sing us a song. No, it gets up your nose sometimes. I often think, you know... Is that when the smoke comes out? I often think somewhat went wrong with this country after the war. She's right, you know. It does make you think. Onions make you burp. Crusts make you hurt. What makes you think? No, 40 years ago, fellas like Stan were out fighting a war in the desert. And now fellas like Brian are there earning a fortune. Oh, so they are. Oh. Good morning. Morning, Bet. I'm afraid there's nothing good about it. We just brewed up, so I thought a cup might be welcome if Fred's out to go back. Don't talk to me about Fred. Sopping from the finger bowls, I reckon. If there had been finger bowls, he would certainly sucked off. Do you know, dear, I had no idea he talked so much. It must have been the champagne. Was he really that over the top? Over the top? I have no words to describe the horror and the embarrassment. Does the name Frank Randall ring any bell? Delivers calls, does No, he? he's a comedian between the wars. In my opinion, a very low, vulgar comedian. Well, being escorted by Fred was like being escorted by Frank Randall. Do you know, I think I've seen him at the flicks. Did he have a squint and one tooth and always wore a shirt with no collars? It wasn't his dress, it was behaviour. Threatening to make speeches, lurching about, telling terrible jokes. And when he wasn't butting into people's conversations, he was dancing. I bet that killed the cabaret stone dead. 
Do you know, he even asked Sarah Ridley, my dear, you should have seen her face. And when finally she got out of his clutches, he asked a waitress. Didn't know she was a waitress, of course. And there he was, charging round the floor, doing the tango. Enough, as they say, to make an elephant laugh. Oh, I'd have been so much better on my own. You know, if I had my way, dear, I wouldn't see him for at least a week. But unfortunately, I've got some shopping to do, so I need the car. You know, Betty, I can't think where that car is. She must have drove it home. I mean, she had the flipping keys. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. She definitely came and asked me for them keys. And a face like grim death saying that, well, saying I was in no fit state. Mm. Perhaps you could see it doing a tango around the lamppost. Bit of jealousy, if you ask me, touch of the wallflowers. I was meaning to ask the old girl for a dance, but, well, I was booked up, weren't I? Ah, uh, with the likes of Sarah Ridley. Hey, I say, you don't suppose she's put it in the lock-up, do you? You know, Her Majesty, the motor like. Oh, I can't see her traipsing round there that time, my night, lovely. Hey, Fred stay. you wanted. What's to do? It's the car, in it. Come in. You wanted me, Mrs Walker? After last night's exhibition, want is hardly the word. Exhibition? So? You like me dancing, then? If that was an exhibition, all I can say is that dancing is a dying art. However, I am in no mood to discuss your ballroom technique. I'm not boasting about me dancing, Mrs. Fred, it's just the orchestra was playing. I understand from Bet that there is some question as to the whereabouts of the rover. Well, didn't you drive it? I did Mrs. not. Walker? Well... You came to me and asked me for the keys. I was talking to this Fred, car servant by the smoke Fred, cigar window, before you... you go any further, all the events of last night, as far as I am concerned, are a closed book. Yes, Mrs Walker. Now, I have no intention of holding an inquest on your behaviour. All I can say is I would have wished for more decorum and discretion. Well, I was just holding my end up, Mrs Walker. It could have been worse. How? Could have bust me braces. I'd have been holding my trousers up there. Fred! Because I allowed you to take me to one social function doesn't mean that you have carte blanche to treat me as if you were my equal. <clears throat> yes, Mrs Walker. Right, now to go back to the question of this driving. I did not drive the car home. A long evening frock and high heels makes driving difficult to say the least. I wouldn't know about And that. another reason I went home in a taxi was that you had not told me where you had parked the car. Well, didn't you know where we parked it? You left me at the entrance, and then you went and parked the car. Oh, did I? Of course you did. And I sincerely hope, wherever you parked it, that it is still there. Because if the police have towed it away, and they did on one occasion, you remember... They won't tow it I away, Mrs Walker. I said I hope not. Because if they have, I shall hold you personally responsible. As ever. And whatever the costs may be, they will come out of your pocket and not mine. What a mess to come over to. Well, you sit down, love, and I'll clear this lot away. I can't quite take it all in. It's happened that quick. Up this morning, taxi arrives, and there we are on that cold station. Oh, I know. Misty, wasn't it? Misty and damp. Brian saying goodbye. I had the time to kiss him before the train started moving off. Well, you'll get leave in six months, love. It's gonna seem like six years, isn't it? Here, let me do them pots, Ivy. No, look, Gail, you sit down. Look, try and get that baby off to sleep. I've got to do something, Ivy. I'll get weepy. Oh, Gail, don't you start getting weepy. I'll start, start getting weepy. Look, love, I know it's I know it's awful coming out at blue like it has, but well, you are gonna be better off, aren't you, financially? I mean, you're not be short of company, love, cos there's always a bed at our house if you feel a bit lonely, you know, or a bit nervous at night. Well, not get nervous. Anyway, I'll clear these things away and then I'll boil us an egg. Because I promised Baldwin that I wouldn't take home morning. I've made a resolution that I'm not going to get morbid about this. I'm not going to sit around moping. You'll have to be like my mother, love, during it war. I mean, she went on munitions. I'm sure as agree with munitions. Mind you, I mean, with war, well, it couldn't be all, could it? It was just there, it was declared. I mean, fellas like me dad, well, they were just called up. Hmm. As for this lot, well, I mean, our brain's got no choice, has it? It's out that desert at door. Yeah. I won't mind, but he's never been any further than Isle of Man. And now he's there with these Muslims, or whatever you call them. <laughs> and if they catch you having a drink, you know, they're after you with cat and nine tails. And I'll tell you what, I can't see that Ron Sachs being much of help. I wouldn't trust that fellow with his yeah. grandmother's pension. Betty, what? Well, it's a police do. The car's been nicked. 
Fred's in there getting a Chinese burn treatment and she wants MI four and a half years sharpish. I'll pull the other one, you might win a crew it. Oh, well, it'll worth a try. Yeah, you know, if it just got a ticket. Not even a ticket, right where he left it. What's he doing? Teaching the nibs of the foxtrot. Downtown doing the shopping. Fred trotting behind a ladyship with his little basket. All he needs is a poodle. <laughs> Hello, One space invader machine. Now, where do you want it? That's a good question, Loft. Sure you got the right place? You've got the dock in here, darling. I think you're wrong, you know. I mean, Mrs Walker wants to order a thing like that. One space invader. Rover's return. As per verbal booking by Mr F. Just drop it over there, Harry. What is that? Goldberg's a place to take liberties, you know. That will take up the space of four customers, I'm oh. telling you that. Oh, what? Get a crowd oh, round that. Get it tight. Have a break. Fred, look. Hey, Fred. <laughs> no. Yeah, we'll get the ladies over there. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. The big lump of He's got a pass as a fortune, is that? Anything flipping charge, you should ease there on the oak. Joe Muggins. Well, you need your pumps really for playing that thing. Chucking good money away. Yeah, I've never cottoned on to the idea myself. Oh, the idea is simple, isn't it? Yes. I used to play it years ago on Red Red. The raw tin cans on wall and bum bricks are tough. It's no different. Well, they never take the piss of coconut shards, them things. Hey, I was taught to shy coconuts by this fella off Dodger. Oh, I know the type. Sideboards down to here. Tattoo marks on his arm. No, you see, you get folk puddled with ale, then wheel one of them in and bang their skins and you've cracked it. Get a bit of practice in his <laughs> Gold Space Invaders, Mrs. Walker, and it certainly invaded yours. Mrs. Tanner, your capacity for the obvious quip never fails to amuse me. Now, where has this monstrosity come from? It seems it was ordered, Mrs. Walker. Last night at the do, special instructions. Yeah, he must have sold some stuff, Mrs. Walker. Oh, I know these these brewery dudes. Come the okey cokey, nobody's say. Oh, can cutter and tin it. Your idea of brewery dinners is very fanciful, but pertinent as your comments may be, I wish to speak my stuff and my stuff alone. Do you agree, Mrs. Walker? Yeah. Well, signed by the Foxtrot King, I mean Fred. Didn't think he'd do it off his own back. No, we thought you must have okayed it. Hey, a space invader. Great Fred. stuff. Yes, Mrs. Walker. I would like to see you in my living room in ten minutes. Hi, Elder. How are you fixing yeah, a drop? What do you mean till Friday or till Nelson gets his eye back? Yeah. Come on, sunshine, let's see how it goes. Oh, oh, now, what do I do? Oh, look, look. Uh, Afternoon. Ertie Mixer was on the blink. How do you do that? Well, uh, I've got this detector, haven't I? On my van. No, uh, I think your dad said. Mrs. Tilsley. My dad? Oh, you must mean Bert. He's my father in law. He told me a few days ago, actually, but I've been busy. Any road, I was up here wiring the socket, so I thought I'd call. You've been working at the factory, haven't you? Ah, that's right. Uh, you know Ivy, who works there, the supervisor? Oh, I. I know Ivy. Well, before you say out, she's my mother in law. Not a peep, is there? Could be the brushes. Can you fix it? Yeah, I can't do it now. I could take it, but it'll be a couple of days. I'm a bit stuck at the moment because my van's broken down. We have met, haven't we? In the paper shop. I think so, yeah. yeah. Well, if you trust me. I'll trust you. Be back with it then. Good as new. As long as it doesn't cost the earth. Well, I'll come back payday. Whatever day that is. Not sure. All right. Ta-da. Ta-ra. So, you dimly recall some little bloke trying to flog you this space machine or whatever it's called. I never asked him to bring it round, Mrs Never Walker. it was brought round, as you've seen. Look, if I'm due for a slap on the wrist, OK, but I can't see that it's all that terrible. It's the noise, Fred. Well, the noise isn't that bad. If you can pull up with Stan Ogden and his mates in that bar... Mind you, what our best bitter must be doing to Stan Ogden's digestive system, <laughs> it's no joke. I admit that the licensed trade has its drawbacks and Mr Ogden may be one of them. 
Look, we can do with a bit of noise, Mrs. Walker. I mean, you won't let us have music. It's like a morgue in there sometimes. A morgue is an overstatement. I'd rather have a morgue than a space machine. Look, all I'm saying, Mrs. Walker, is why don't you have it on trial? Just a trial. Look at the order form. It says you can have it on a week's trial. Yes, well, a trial is probably the word. There can be little gold mines. Anyway, I met this other fella at the do, the fella that books the turns. Now, he's got this act, he's a one-man bouncy. He's got this drum on his back, the sticks on his elbows, cymbals between his knees, and a fugal on up his... Well, all I can say, Mrs Walker, is that... Uh, I hope he do not turn up tonight. Is that me, you, Mrs T? Oh, I thought I'd never land. I mean, you might as well walk with this traffic. It's a brew here, love. Oh, cup of tea will be a blessing, love. Didn't see your van. Yeah, but I'd knock back on that. Oh, how do you mean? They fixed it, like. Oh, they fixed it all right. Oh, yeah, they played a blinder. They know the gearboxes, but I'll tell you something. Well, they know how to charge, you know. Oh, stung you, did they? 80 quid. Well, I don't know much about gearboxes, but it sounds a bit of a dear do to me. Well, it knocked me sideways. I reckon out of what I've got, you know, thinking about something to live on, oh. I could afford 30 quid. They won't let you have it, like, you know, without paying. No chance. Oh. Even asked the laying back with her legs in the air, help us with laughter. I said to the fella, I need the van for my business. Yeah. It'll take me twice as long to get the money together minus a van. What did you say to that? Well, it's like talking to... Well, I said to him, why does everybody think I'm a con man? I my eyes too close together to summit. Sorry, son. I've lost too much trusting folk. Oh, I wonder if I went to see him. No. I'm not putting you to that bother. I'll just have to get out to work. I mean, like today. I wired a socket and I got this mixer off Mrs. What's-her-name. Mm. And I've got some wiring to do at Paradise Place. I'll get the readies, plus pay me whack, because I'm not sponging off you. Oh, I know you're not, lovey. <laughs> Go on. We're oh, 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 around to your place to see oh, Gail. All oh, oh, right. No. Yeah, it doesn't seem much more to go to the flicks or anything. Well, I dare say she could find more ways to flicks. We could arrange a night out. Hi, oh, three smart girls. Why oh, not? Yes. How many fellas? Fellas. Honestly, I'd be very ideal. You'd realise you'd cut me to the quick. Well, we don't want any of these Will stop No! Sniffing round, do we? Thanks, Mrs. Walker. You've got a fella called Will Watts. Well, I did have, but I think the flame of passion is flickering a bit. Bitter's going, Mrs. Walker. Fred! Don't break your blockade, Al. Don't break it! <laughs> Fred! 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 For the last time! Fred! Oh, I'm on my way, Mrs. Walker. Now, just a moment, Fred. We do need a new bag. But more than that, we need peace and quiet. Especially for those who are not and cannot hear their own voices. So, please turn that gust off. What, while the stock is still playing on it? Immediately. Hey, 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 Liberty, though, isn't it? I mean, fair enough. Bought me a Jill, but. Sour grapes after last night, if you ask me, Elf. Yeah, but it's not fair putting you up with a free half. Diabolical. I mean, you had a free game, didn't you? You could have got another free game and gone on and on. I could have played all night for note. You ought to have free beer for the rest of the night. Tell you what, the contacts I made last night, I could be in for big things, I'm telling you. Could I have a word, Fred? What's to do? This, uh, this Newton and Ridley do last night, you didn't order a Rover, did you? A Rover? That's right. You must be joking. So you didn't talk to nobody about cars, then? Oh, hang about. I did talk to some fancy dealer, yeah. I know you did. How? He was on the phone while you were doing the bitter. Well, what's he after? After you, isn't he? 
Mr. F.G., bar's manager of the Rovers' return, confirming that as per request, he will be calling tomorrow with a brand new spanking Rover limousine. Tuned for a test drive, sale room price, less of course part exchange on the old Rover that you're currently running. Flaming Nora. Still, at least there's one thing, Fred. You'll have transport tomorrow. Bung that space invader in the boot, and maybe, just maybe, if you talk to this fancy car dealer nicely, he might drop you at the job centre. People can be very kind. Never just under, is it? I'll take a slice off of you, like. No. You know, I bet you could feed red rum with what it costs you to feed that lad. Listen to me, Alex, a working lad. He needs a good breakfast inside him in the morning. Ah, well, you don't hear him complaining, do you? I mean, the four-star treatment you give him, it's, well, it's better than living in that van, isn't it? It's not stopping with the out of choice, you know. I mean, the sooner he gets that b van back, the better he'll be. Ah, the sooner he gets it back. Hmm. What have you got against him, Alf? Look, it's just I don't like to see folk taking you for a ride, making a mug of you, do I? I mean, you know nothing about the lad. Well, I know enough. Well, he told you he was an electrician. Well, he is an electrician. I doubt if Mike Bowling would agree with you. I know, Vera Duckworth will take some convincing and all. Alec nearly fried her. Listen, Mike Bowling's got no right to give him a job like that in the first place. I mean, he only wanted a job doing on the cheap. He's not qualified to do anything like that. What, frying Vera, you mean? <laughs> no, industrial stuff. But, I mean, give him a toaster or a vac and he's, he's got a touch like a brain surgeon. Well, I've no complaints. How's he going on anyway with his van off the road? Well... It's not easy, is it? But the sooner he gets you back, the happier he'll be, you know. Hey, listen, why doesn't he put a card in the window here? You never know, something might come of it. Oh, hey, what a good thought. I'll tell him. Mm, not a lot of point, though, really. If he's not going to be here that long. Oh, yeah. Definitely you, this, Fred. I can just see you belting round the country lanes in this. Oh, shut it. Porsche Turbo. Just the job for Sundays and bank holidays. Give that new Rover a rest. Look, what exactly did he have to say, this fella? He just said to tell you that he'd be round with the Rover for you to test drive it this morning, like he promised at the Newton Ridley do. Well, it must have given you some idea where they were from. He gave me the impression that you knew. What the heck were you on that night, Fred? Rocket fuel? Oh, champagne, you know it don't agree with me. You don't agree with nobody what drinks down to pie pots, love. Look, if you're having me on, Lynch, I'll have you for a doormat, I'm telling you. Did I invent that space invader fella? Well, no. Remember chatting him up, do you? Look... When Mrs. Walker comes down, you just chat her up, will you? Now, where are you off to? I'm going to make a few phone calls, aren't I? There can't be all that many Rover dealers about. Oh, put wood in Thor, Elder. It's blowing a gale through here. Not a flaming octopus, you know. Don't suppose you could squeeze another cup, could you? Hey, I reckon we could make toast off that warm smile of yours. What's up with you, Hilda? I'll tell you what's up with me, Bat Lynch. 365 days a year I'm at it, skivvying, fetching and carrying for all and sundry, cleaning up after everybody and never a word. Well, hardly ever, cos that's my lot in life, isn't it? But I don't think it's too much to expect that there might just be one day in the year when somebody might just say, sit down, Hilda, put your feet up, Hilda, have a nice cup of tea, Hilda. But, oh, no, what do I get? Put wood in the hole, there's a flaming gale blowing through here. Hey, I only asked you to put kettle on. I'm glad I didn't ask you to go to Chippy as well. I thought I heard your voice, Mrs. Alglin. You have to be on to the side of Yorkshire, not to. Now, bet that is no way to speak to our birthday girl. Many happy returns of the day, Mrs. Alglin. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mrs. Walker. Nice to know somebody remembered. Oh, so that's what it is. Many happy returns, Hilda. Yeah, well, I don't suppose you'd remember, would you? I bet I'm not the only one who's forgot. Unless your stands change the habits of a lifetime. Ah, well, that's just where you're wrong, isn't it? What's he bought you, then? Well, that needs to be a surprise. Oh, it'll be that all right. Look! You want to watch that tongue of yours doesn't pop out your head and throttle you one of these days, Bet Lynch? Now, that is quite enough. Are you sure that's all I owe you? I can make it more if you like. I believe you. Thanks very much, anyway. You need to have made a special trip, though. It'd have done when you got your van back. For you, darling, I'd have walked it. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a pound for every girl you said that to, I know. You're the first today. Cross me out. <laughs> Hey, that wouldn't be coffee I could smell, would it? You're a cheeky beggar, you, aren't you? I tell you what, I'll knock it off me bill. Don't be down. Yeah, that's a funny place to keep the coffee. I'm just seeing Nicky still in his pram, aren't I? I think he's got mountaineering blood in him. Heard from his dad, have you? Not yet, no. Mind you, I can understand it. All them belly dancers. I reckon I'd have something better to do than write letters and all. But you're coping all right, aren't you? All right. 
Tell you the truth, I haven't got used to him being away yet. Well, I'll come back when you have. You don't waste much time, do you? I haven't got much time to waste. Oh, well, I'd better get the coffee then, haven't I? And you can be on your way. Right, I'm off before that telephone goes again. Uh, if the wholesaler rings, the list is on the side. Right. There was someone else and all. Oh, aye, if, uh, if Fred brings my dress suit back, will you be a little love? Hang it at the back of the door. I'm going out in it tonight. I don't want to look like a bag of chips. At what time did you say this meeting was? Aye, I don't know. Oh, blimey. I'll see you. Hello, Alf. Time to go, Ivy. You're early, aren't you? Early? For your balm cake order? Balm cake order? Hey, hold on a minute, you. I'm supervisor now. Oh, you still eat, don't you? I might eat, but I don't fetch and carry for that lot across the road. Nor anymore, I don't. Anyway, I've just popped in to see if you can put me a little pie away for me dinner, love. One of them, uh, them little porkins will do. Yeah, they've just come in. You can take one with you, don't you? No, can I call for him on my way back? Because I'm just going down to the precinct. There's a sale on that curtain yeah, shop down there. Yeah, suit yourself. Oh. Hey, listen, I still can't get used to the idea of your Bert not coming in here in the morning. Is he settling in all right? Do you know what? If they told him he had to leave home and go and sleep on that factory floor, I'm sure he would. He'd make anybody think he'd never had a job before. I bet it's a wonder his tongue's not tied up, you know, where he's going on about it. Oh, I am glad, though. You're not the only one, are you? I tell you, that's what your girl's gonna miss, you know, somebody to talk to at night. Oh, love, she'll come to no harm. Me and Bert will see to that. Yeah, but it's not the same, is it, being left on your own with a little and Believe me, I know. Ah, but it's not the same, loving girl's case. I mean, ah, Brian's coming back. Anyway, will you save me pair for after? This morning, you said. I only told you what he told me. Yeah, but it's not morning anymore, is it? It's afternoon. So? So he's not coming, is he? Bye, Eccles, you really had me going there, I'm telling you. But I'll tell you what, you try pulling the other leg and I'll, I'll give you a right roast in. <laughs> I'm going down the cellar, get some tonics. Anybody serving here or have you gone self-service? Are you talking to me, Hilda? No, me flipping shadow. Give us another light tail in there. Oh, is that all? And here's me thinking you'd come to show us the Prezi stand for you. Oh, go on. Split your sides while you can. You'll be smirking the other side of your face before the day's out, I can tell you. What are you doing here? I've come over with dinner. Unless you're starving me because I forgot your birthday. Starving you? <laughs> Fat lot of good that'll do, wouldn't it? You could survive the next 12 months on your blubber. Give us a pint, will you? I've got a mouth like the inside of a binwin's welly. Well, come on, Stan. Surprise us. Hey? Hilda's Prezi. Well, he hasn't had time to get it yet, has he? Some of us have to work for a living, you know. Oh, that's right. Uh, Hilda will pay for this. She likes to buy me a drink on her birthday, you know. Here. Now, here you. Take this. Oh, da. It's not for you, so you can take that silly grin off your face for a start. I'm not having Bet Lynch or anybody else laughing up their sleeves behind me back just because I've got a fat lummox of a husband who wouldn't remember to get up in the morning unless I was behind him. Now, listen, you go out this afternoon and buy some chocolates or summit. And don't breathe a word about where you got the money, else you'll wish you'd never been born. Chocolates? Yeah, them little brown things in boxes. You used to get them with your toffee coupons after the war, do you remember? Ooh. Yes, Joe. I was looking for Mr G. My name's Dixon. Oh, you phoned last night. That's right, about the car. Mr G's expecting me, is he? He starts about now till so morning. Well, perhaps you could tell him I'm here, then. It would be my pleasure, Joe. Good afternoon. Frederick, you want it? Huh? What's supposed to do? Time to go to the bowl, Freddy. Your golden coach has arrived. Good afternoon, Mr. G. It's good to see you again. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm ready whenever you are. The vehicle's outside. Look, about this car. It's what? just as you asked. A 3.5 V8S. Very nice. Oh, it is. It's a beautiful motor. A real thoroughbred. Uh, so, whenever you're ready, Mr. G. Look, it's not quite convenient now, pal. Busy dinner time and all that, you know. Oh, uh, don't you worry, Chuck. I can manage. Let's face it, Fred. It's not every day you get the chance to drive the car of your dreams, now, is it? Come on, grab your jacket. Ta, uh, very much, Lynch. What's Mrs. Walker going to say, eh? If you get your skates on, not a lot. She'll not be any, any the wiser, will she? You can be there and back before she gets back. Come on, chop chop. Right? Right as I'll ever be. Makes you proud to be British, eh, Mr. G? This is the top end of the range. Electric windows, centralised locking, sunshine roof are all standard, of course. Look, pal, let's just get on with it, shall we? <laughs> Can't wait to get it, eh? Right? Well, come on, then. You'll not be disappointed, I promise you.
dry. That's right, Mrs. Walker. But Fred couldn't afford the petrol for a car like that, let alone buy one. Well, I know that, Mrs. Walker, and you know that. But apparently Fred got chatting to this car dealer and one thing led to another. Well, I didn't know that Fred knew any car salesman. Well, he didn't, Mrs. Walker. Well, not in that class, any road. Not until this Newton and Ridley do. Oh. Oh, flamey, Nick. Something bothering you, Mr. G? No, 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 sir. Are you sure there's nothing else you want to know? You've hardly said a word. Look, I've got to get back into work, pal. Is this your present, Rover? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Well, I couldn't offer you much of a deal on that, I'm afraid. Uh, you'd do much better selling that privately. Oh, yeah. Well, well, well look, pal, thanks very much for bringing it round and, uh... You'll well, be in touch, then? Yeah, I've, I've got to get back to work, say. Okay. Oh, if you need any help with finance, we, we can arrange that. Where is she? In back. Well, did you tell her where I was? I didn't have to. She saw you leaving. Well, what am I going to tell her? I wouldn't worry too much about that, Fred. I've got an idea she'll do most of the talking. Me, Mrs. Walker? Yes, Fred. Oh, well, I, I thought you wanted to see me. What about? Well, <clears throat> I, I've, uh, I've been for a test drive in this uh, new Rover. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, only it, it was this, this fellow I met at the do, you see. Uh, we got to chatting and, uh, like, <laughs> I told him that we had a, an old Rover and he said that he sold new ones and, uh, and it, well, bingo, up he turns here with, with a car for... Me a test driving, you know, he seemed to get the idea that we were going to trade yours in for a new one. <laughs> Which we're not. Well, of course we're not, no. <laughs> so, uh, what is this supposed to do with me? Well, it was just that, uh, well, I thought... Uh, you thought what, Fred? Well, uh, I thought you'd be mad at me for giving him the wrong impression, like. I should have thought that the car salesman would be more upset than me, having come here on a wild goose chase. Have you told him yet? Well, not exactly, no. I think you should, don't you? The sooner the better. Well, what am I going to tell him, Mr. Walker? Oh, I'm sure you'll think of something. You were obviously not stuck for words when you met him, were you? You don't get much for your money, do you? Well, it must it be chocolates. I mean, we've got some nice jars of sweets. So what about a tin of biscuits? Chocolates. Mm. I'll take that one. Right. Yeah. Hey, you know these are our centres, dear Stan. Oh, well, she'll have to remember to keep her teeth in, won't she? <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> love. Right. Thanks very much, Stan. Darlow. To Darlow. Uh... Yes, Bet. What can it I was Alpha you? wanted, love. Well, I can take your money off you just as well as he can, you know. True, but can you fill his dinner suit as well? Give mm. him a shout, love. Well, I'll have to shout flipping loud. He's gone to a council meeting. Come here, give it here. I've been expecting it. Tis in one piece still, I hope. <laughs> no, two. Jacket and pants. Uh, oh, well, that's something to be grateful for from what I've heard. Hey, have you heard the latest? He's only had this fella down to give him a test drive in a brand new Rover. Fred has. As true as I'm riding my bike. <sighs> Some other fella he met at this Newton and Ridley do. Swears blind he can't remember a thing about it. Why do I never have nights out like that? You and me both, kid. Mm. He must have had one heck of a good time. Oh, you can say that again. Uh, you've got to hand it to him. He never does out by halves, doesn't our Fred? Oh. Oh dear. Hello, my love. I didn't expect to see you here. Thought you said you were going the other side of town. I've been. Well, you're back early. That was a dead loss, wasn't it? Oh, nothing doing. Well, it's not that so much. But by the time I've paid me bus fare and spent half the day wearing shoe leather out, it's hardly worth me while. Mm. If I've played a tenner, I'm lucky. So you've still not made enough to get your van back? No chance. Well, how much are you short? Forty quid. Oh. So it looks like I'm stuck with you for a bit longer. Oh, thank you very much. Now, you know I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> no. I'll be sorry to say to that to you, you know oh. that. But I'll not be happy till I get that van back on the road. No. Forty pounds, you said? Well, it doesn't sound much when you say it that quick, does mm. it? The daft thing is, I'd have it in a couple of days if I had my van back. I told the garage and all, but I reckon that foreman, he wouldn't trust his own mother. I trust you. Hey? Go on, I'll lend you the money, love. But I'll have to go to the post office because I don't have enough money in the house like that, you see. I couldn't take it from you, Betty. You've done more than enough for me already. Dobby's a daft. 
You want to get your van back, don't you? I mean, you've got no other ideas. Well, no, I haven't. Well, right then. Oh, it's all better. Oh. I'll pay you back. You know I will. Yeah, I know you will, my love. Come on, Nicky. You like that, no? Come on, good Lord. What are you doing here? Well, I've been doing a bit of baking and uh, I've made you an apple pie. Yeah. So I thought, right, I might as well bring it round and stop and have a bit of tea with you. Uh, what about Bert? Oh, you're not being too late, hello. Hey, you've not had your tea, have you? Well, I haven't. He has. Well, really, anyway. Hey, have you been your tea yet? Hey, you have this little bit for your nana? Uh, hey. It's very nice of you, Ivy, but you know, you, to... you need to come round specially. Well, nobody said I'd love. No, but you were Nicky. here yesterday and all. Well, I'm not complaining, love. I can manage, you know. Honest, I can. Now, have I said you couldn't? I've got to learn to stand on my own two feet sometime, haven't I? Look, uh, Gail, if you don't want me to come round, I mean, you've only got to say so. Is, is, that, is that what you're trying to say? No. Of course it ain't. Right then, go and put that kettle on and stop worrying about me. Come on, darling. Do you want this little biscuit? I'm sorry, Mr Dixon, but... It's just not what I'm looking for. Well, no, it's nothing like that. I mean, it's a lovely car, you know. It's just that, well, it's not me, if you know what I mean. A Jaguar? Do I echo's like? I'll give over, will you, pal? I'll see you. Ta-da. Hey, Fred, got full of little green men and goes at 150 miles an hour. Well, how do I know? I need to have space invader. I'll flip in two for you, Lynch, I'm telling you. Hi, gum, when you think of the way things have changed. That's true. You know, when I was Brian's age, if you worked on the other side of the cut, you thought you'd been abroad. And now look at him. Wife and kid working on the other side of the world. And he's not the only one, mind you. Money isn't everything. Ah, well, it is if you haven't got it. Yes, but that doesn't apply to Gail and Brian. I mean, it's six months out of their lives. Yes, but they've got plenty of time ahead of them, haven't they? God willing. But, you know, there's one thing you can't do. So how much money you've got... You can't put the clock back. <laughs> you don't have to tell me that, Mrs. Walker. There you are. No, Tilder, I'm watching me figure. They're not for you, they're for me, aren't they, off him? That's right. Yeah, so now you can take back all them incinerations you was making this morning, can't you? Yes, you can. Looks like I've not got much choice in the matter, have I? No, well, now we've got that little matter sorted, I'll have a gin and tonic. And I'll have a pie. Uh, I'll pay for these. I thought you were skins. No, I changed them one you gave me the chocolate, you know. That much? Well, I don't see spending it all. I mean, after all, it's done. It's only the thought, isn't it? Yeah, and we all know what you thought and all, don't we? Just tell us some Stan. How is it I've managed to stay all these years married to you without separating you from your breath? Hello, mate. Don't you hello mate me. Look, what do you call that? Oh, hey. What on earth's the matter? Alex? That's what's the matter. Oh, Fred, really? I'm supposed to be going out in this tonight. Well, I've never seen that before. Let's have a look. No, hang on, Alf. I mean, how do I know that wasn't like that before you, you know, when you let me before? It was not like that when I linked it to you, and it won't be like that next time either, because there won't be no next time. Well, what would you expect me to do? I expect you to return this to me in the state you got it in, so you can get yourself round to the dry cleaners tomorrow and get it seen to. Well, how much is that going to cost me? Well, that's your headache, isn't it, mate? Fred? Yes, Mrs. Walker. I think you and I had better have a little chat. Oh, I wouldn't be in his shoes for a gold clock. I can think of worse things. So it does. Been in Alf's trousers? You <laughs> damn thing. <laughs> I didn't know his suit was like that, Mrs. Walker. Honest, I didn't. You don't know very much at all about what happened that night, do you, Fred? Well, it must have been the champagne, Mrs. Walker. You know, me, I'm a beer man. It must have just gone to my head. It would have gone straight to the head of anyone who drank it in the quantities you did. Yes, Mrs. Walker. Where is it all going to end, Fred? You bring that vulgar space machine and have it installed without a word from me. You bring that poor car salesman out on a wild goose chase. You've practically ruined our dinner suit. Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Walker, honest. It, it, it won't happen again. It certainly will not happen again, Fred. You can be sure of that. Because I do not make the same mistake twice. All that worries me is what other surprises you have in store. Because ever since that disastrous night, the things that have happened, I shouldn't be surprised if somebody came through that door and announced that you had bought Blackpool Tower. Well, there's nothing else, Mrs. Walker. Honest, there isn't. You're quite sure. Positive. I hope you're right, Fred. For your sake. Have you seen me blue T-shirt, Betty? 
It's in here, isn't it? Hey, it hasn't seen an iron since I bought it. It's not leaving here till it does. And you're not leaving here looking like a stray cat and all. How long will it be then? Don't worry, lovey. It'll be ready in the morning. I wasn't planning on being here in the morning, was I? I thought I might as well hit the road now. Tonight? Well, I can get an early start in the morning then, can't I? I thought I'd go out Earlham way. Earlham? Much more than the cock's tried for me. You might as well have a good night's sleep. I'll call you about seven in the morning if that'll suit you. You've done enough for me, Betty. Don't be so daft. You'll work twice as hard with a good breakfast inside you. You'll be a down sight comfier in my spare bed than you will be cooked up in that damn van. Well, I can't argue with that. Right, well, then that's settled. And now get that bag upstairs again. It's our Betty. Right. Hey, when you come down, you just might find a couple of cans of beer in the fridge. I don't know what I'm going to do without you, you know. <laughs> I think you'll survive, lovey. Now, you're sure there's nothing I can get you for tomorrow? Positive. Right, well, if you change your mind, give me a ring. I will. All right. <laughs> oh, expecting company? No. Hello, oh, Hello. Come in. Hello, oh, hello. I, I'm sorry, I didn't know you had company. Oh, Ivy's just going, aren't you? Yes, I am, because if I miss that muscle, I have half an hour to wait. Oh. Right, all right, my little judge. And listen, don't See you forget if there is anything. No, oh, well, well to try. To try. Let's <laughs> talk about her again, Ivy. <laughs> hey, I wasn't busting in on anything. Was Nothing I? that I'm not grateful for, no. Oh, well, I see, it's like that, is it? <laughs> Only she's not been off the doorstep since Brian left. Mm. I think I was about 12 the way she treated me. Well, don't flatter yourself. Eh? It's not you she's coming to see. It's this one here, isn't it? <laughs> and I can't say I blame her, isn't it? Gorgeous. Well, I think so, but I'm biased, aren't I? <laughs> what are you doing here, anyway? I'll go if you like. I didn't mean that. No, I just thought I'd slip round. Ken's gone over to the community centre and Uncle Albert's happy with Tracy, so I don't think I'll even be missed. Oh, I'll take your coat off if you stop it. Oh, no, I just, uh, I remember what it was like when Ray went. I know the circumstances are different, but it doesn't alter the fact that you're left on your own with a little one, does it? The least I thought you were, anyway. Hey, you're not too fussy. I've got half a bottle of sherry left over from my Christmas cake. Oh, why? I've heard about you suburban swingers. What? You've heard nothing yet. <laughs> I've got a packet of peanuts and all I think in there. Oh. Hey, I tell you what, our Tracy would love me to take you home with me. I could put you on a butty myself. Be warned, he's going to be a right one for the girls when he grows up. Yeah, hey, I bet he's a right one for the girls now. <laughs> he's got me wrapped round his little finger. Have you not thought about having any more? Oh, I've thought about now, tell lately. Thinking doesn't do much good, you know. No, oh, I know, but I'm not so sure if Ken's keen on the idea. I thought Ken loved kids. Oh, yeah, he does, but whether or not he wants one of his own is another kettle of fish, isn't it? Has he said he doesn't? No. As a matter of fact, he did say he wouldn't mind, but you see, that was before we were married. I mean, now we're all settled in under the same roof. I'm not sure that he thinks he's got all the family he needs. <laughs> Just because he hasn't said anything doesn't mean to say he's changed his mind. No, I know. But what if he has, you see? Yeah. I mean, what if he suddenly turns around and says, no way? I mean, where does that leave me? You have? Go. I don't see why other folks should lie pigging it in bed when I've got to be out and about in the cold, cold snow. Mm. There's nothing like a bit of good old-fashioned selfishness, is oh, there? Oh, it's my religion, Petal. Me first, me last, and me in the middle. It's the only way. Are you offering me a cup of tea? I'll think about it. Right, I'll stop for ten minutes. I take it you're not exactly rushing off nowhere? I am having a slop day. I shall probably put a face pack on to kid myself I'm still trying, otherwise I shall stay like this. I think I look very lovely. It's not fair, is it? Fellas don't even have to bother. They just have a shave, get into the gear and that's it. Well, we could if we wanted. I'm not going out without my mascara on. Not even when I pop my clogs, thirst can wait. Well, I'll tell you one thing. When we get past 21, we can help ourselves with a bit of pots of paint and powder and stuff. Fellas can. You're out of date, love. Male makeup's the latest thing. I'll tell you something. If I go out with a fella and one of us puts fresh lipstick on, it had better be me. If I could offer you a double date with two older, more sophisticated men, not too many wrinkles and positively no eyeshadow, would you come? Oh, I. And where are you going to keep them while I'm decided? Alf Roberts Freezer. Ah, oh, well, that's it, you see. I've not met him yet. Uh, I've got a night off tonight. So how about us going out, finding a couple of lonely businessmen who need a little bit of help padding out their expense accounts? Well, don't you think we're a bit past it? I mean, it's all right for kids. Since when was a good time only for kids? Well, we don't have a good time. It's always flaming disaster. You know that as well as I do. All right. So we go out, we have a few drinks, a few laughs and a bite to eat. If we meet somebody, it's a bonus. 
If we don't, it's still better than stopping in on your Todd, pumice stone in your feet and watching the latest doom and gloom on News at Ten. No, you have a very convincing way with you, Miss Lynch. Good, I'll tell the chauffeur to polish the Now, roll. look, I'm going nowhere pricey because I can't afford it. You play your cards right, it needn't cost us a red star. Now, All look... right, so can I help it if I'm an optimist? What's them? They're a couple of grilled over souls, what shrunk. Oh, they're pilchards, you crater. You've had pilchards before. I had them during the war. You've had them since. Not when I'm hungry. Well, when else would you eat them? Oh, snacks in between. They're not a dinner. Well, today they are. They're cold. Oh, anything else? Would you like to have them weighed and measured and their photos took before you condescend to eat them? You can't give him for a dinner to a working man in the middle of February. Quite right, Stanley. I wouldn't give him to a working man. But since you don't come into that category, there's no problem, is there? Now get a mess. I like someone solid. Oh, Stanley, you are somewhat solid for the neck up and down. Do you have to look at them as though they're poisoning you? You know, they're starving millions in Africa to be glad of them. Well, they can have them with my compliments. They're tasty, they're nourishing and they're cheap. Which, since it hadn't permutated your thick skull, is the reason you're getting them. Now, when you can give me housekeeping money what runs to rump steaks, Stanley, you can have rump steaks. You're not skint again, are you? No, but I'm down to my last five million. Well, of course I'm skint, you great chuff. What with Eddie being away and no rent coming in. And I'm down three quid on my birthday present. I bought you that. Well, I give you the money, didn't I? And I didn't get no change, I seem to remember. Now, just shut up and get them pills you'd set. Let me try and pretend for five minutes that you're not here. Elder. What? I don't have to eat the bones, do I? Do you know you remind me of stuff here? How busy. I didn't even know you were watching me. I thought you were asleep. You know, she used to iron my shirts just like you're doing. Sleeves first, then back, then front and collar last. You've got a good memory. Ah, if it's silly little thing, it's the big ones you forget. You know, I was trying to remember yesterday, the name at church for me and how Bessie got married. Could I think of it? Could I, I could I? I wish I'd known Bessie. Uh, she was a grand woman. She'd have taken to you. Thank you. Oh, God. Hello, Albert. Come in, love. <coughs> How do you know, Albert? I'll do. Alf said you were here. Yes, he's given me an hour off to catch up with this lot. The main thing is the bedroom curtains, because I took them down this morning and washed them, so I've got to get them back up, because I'm not sleeping in that room with no curtains. <laughs> anyway, do you want a cup of tea? We were just going to have one. Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll have mine in my room. Oh, I'm not chasing you away, am I? Well, you want to do a bit of natural, won't you? And I like a bit of peace and quiet. Oh, and uh, I'll have a chocolate digestive. That's if your Kenny's got any left. Hello. Hi. Sometimes I think you deserve a halo. Oh, he's all right, really. He can be quite a love, really. <laughs> he's just been telling me about his wife. Oh. Thanks. Anyway, sit your body down. Well, I've not come for anything. I've been in on my own all day. I just felt the need to see a human face. Oh, well, sorry. You'll have to make do with mine. <laughs> No, nah, he was just telling me about his wife, Bessie. Yes, yeah, so you said. I wonder why they couldn't have any more children, only their beatty. Well, if he had had a big family, you and Ken wouldn't have the problems you've got now. Oh, true. Still, you don't have kids just for somebody to look after you in your old age, do you? You have them because you want them. Well, you've got Tracy. Yes. I don't want her growing up an only child, though. Besides... Broody. Oh, horrible word, isn't it? It makes me sound like a big fat hen, but yes. Is there a problem? Well, I'm just not sure how Ken feels about it. Oh, surely you've discussed it with him. Oh. Yeah, before we got married, in a general sort of way. You know how you do. And? Well, he didn't exactly say no, but on the other hand, he didn't say an enthusiastic yes either. He was kind of, um, what's the word? Non-committal? Yeah. Oh, Deirdre, that was different. You're married now. Look how wonderfully he gets on with Tracy and the youngsters at the youth club. And I know how good he was with his own two when they were little. I don't know what you're having this conversation with me for, woman. You should be talking to your husband. Yeah. 
I'd better broach it then, hadn't I? I think you better had. Honestly, Deirdre, I don't know what you're so worried about. I see you're on your tod again then, eh? No, no, Deirdre's just, uh, just gone home for an hour, you know. No, I was referring to your personal life. Oh, aye. Yeah. You know, I was hoping you'd make a go of it with that Audrey Potter when she was here. Live while I like her would have been good for you. Well, you kept that very well hidden, Hilda. Oh, well, I admit I thought she was a bit too flighty. But I wasn't alone in that, you know. Well, now she's gone. Well, I can see how you're missing her. Uh -huh. Didn't think it was all that different. Oh, yeah. A woman can sense these things, you know. Annie Road, don't you worry, Chuck. The right one will turn up one of these days. Oh, I know it can't be much fun on your own. That's why do you think I stopped with him? <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy with me? Yeah, it's cheese on toast, and if you don't like it, you can take your custom elsewhere. Anything to say? No. Right. <laughs> I got your whistle, Alf. Three and a half quid, mate. Uh, yeah, pop it through the back, would you? I'll just uh, finish serving Hilda. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, it. Yeah, unless you feel like forking out for a tin of ham or half a dozen chops. You no, know I can't. Mm. Uh, I know my own worst enemy, but uh, go on. Go on, what? Well, it's against all Robert's rules, but help yourself up to some of that freezer. On thanks, mate. No thanks, mate. Hey. We can only have what we can pay for. Elder's rules. Since when? Since we hit the bottom of the barrel. Now, the only way we can go is up, paying as we go. Come along, Stanley. Yeah, I'll say something for Elder. She never fails to come up with something. Right. Uh, <coughs> uh, three pound fifty, Elf. What? Well, you know, the soup, the dry cleaning. Oh, very reasonable. Did they get all the stains out then? Uh, they made a good job. A bit expensive, as I say, uh, three fifty, you know, but uh, it looks like new. Yeah, well, in that case, I won't be lending it out to uh, no slob that doesn't look after it properly. So I end up going to a, a sprawny doing my lounge suit. If all of you look very smart, Alf. I look very different. I was the only one there that wasn't in evening dress. I take it you're not going out with the three fifty then, eh? That's right. Well, you were prepared to be a little bit more flexible with Hilda, weren't you? Yes. Well, you see, Fred, I allow myself one soft spot a day, and that was it. You know the trouble with you, Alf. The irons entered your soul, mate. It should have entered it earlier. I'd be a rich man. <laughs> oh, blast. Oh! All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. I thought you said seven o'clock. I didn't expect you here at the... Hello, Elsie. Well, hello, stranger. Am I coming in? Well, I've just watched me air. All right, guess that. I dare say I didn't exactly deserve a warm welcome. I'm surprised you expect any welcome at all. Well, I thought you might just be a fraction glad to see me. All right, I'm very glad to see you. How long is it since the last time? Eight weeks, six weeks? Or was it before Christmas? There's been reasons, Elsie. Oh, I see. No, you don't. I've no wish to go into them just now. Let's just say it wasn't that I didn't want to see you, I did. I know you may find that hard to believe under the circumstances, but it's true. Waited all night to hear from you. And even if you couldn't come, at least you could have given me a telephone call. I know. Sometimes you just take up all the wrong options. Make a mock of things, you know what I mean? You know what you mean? <laughs> I've got a degree in it. That's better. Right. Now, suppose we just smoke the pipe of peace officially over a nice dinner and a good bottle of wine, what do you say? Tonight? I, I can't. Well, you're not going to tell me you've got to stay in and wash your hair. No, I've uh, I made arrangements. Uh, I mean, I do go out with people sometimes, you know. Male or female? You're a swine, do you know that? Male or female? Oh, all right, female. Well, in that case, you'd understand. You would if it's the other way around. Go on, you go and get yourself ready. You just... Go you on. just can't barge in I'll it. be all right. Is the landlord in, please? Who, cop? Mr G. Oh, that landlord. Oi, Fred Fix. Yeah. Sorry, Mr G, there's a visitor for you. <laughs> Hello, it's me. Oh. <laughs> you did say I were welcome to call any time. Oh, of course I did. When was this, then? At the do, silly. I know you were a little bit tiddly, but you was very insistent I come round. The do? Oh, the Newton and Ridley do. <laughs> you, you wouldn't be one of the family, would you? It would just say Mother Night. Full of jokes. Is he always like this? Always love. Oh, I wonder, waitresses, you can't have forgot. Oh, now, isn't that typical of our landlord? There's no side to him. A real man of the people. Well, come on, Fred, aren't you going to introduce us to your little friend? Yeah, well, well, but this is, this is, um, Phyllis. Phyllis. Phyllis Lomax. You must be bet. 
And this is Betty. Fred's told me all about his stuff. <laughs> oh, Betty, how? <coughs> So I said, why didn't you talk to your father? And he said, that stupid Burke. I mean, not a bad lad, Pete, it's just that there's no communication there at all. As far as he's concerned, his parents could be from another planet. Anything wrong? No. No. Right, do you want another drink, or shall we go? Well, actually, Ken, there is something I want. I, uh, want us to have a baby. <laughs> What are you doing in there? Ah, oh, nothing. It's no good rooting, the cupboard's bare. I'm hungry. You've had your tea. It's very nice too, only... Only what? Not much of it, is it? Listen, there's starving millions. In Africa, yes, I know. Well, you're not starving, you great tubber lad. Are you? I'm famished. I'd have thought you could live off your fat for at least a week without noticing. Here, what have you done that for? I don't want to see that advert that shows sausages frying in a flipping pan, do I? Oh. Go on, then. Get down to the chippy. Fish and chips twice. Hey, where did you get that? I've been saving it. My insurance policy for a rainy day, in case I ever get up the gumption to leave you. Would have got me at least as far as Wigan. <laughs> hey, uh, well, I'm not quite as hungry as all that. I mean, uh, a couple of ales and a bag of kiss will do me, if, if you'd sooner. <laughs> Fish and chips, Stanley. And if yours has a bone in it, I hope it chokes you. It's my fault, I'm afraid. You can blame me. I'm the one that's hijacked her. Hey, I like your style. I do, Mike. Right. Thing is, I've not seen Elsie for a while, and the one or two things I need her advice on. Yes, and there's one or two things I need her advice on and all, like what I'm going to do on my Todd for the rest of the night. I'm sorry, kid. Truly, I am. Well, don't worry, cock. I'll do the same for you sometime. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Well... How'd it go? Did you manage to get Peter to talk to his dad? Oh, he says he'll try, but I doubt anything will come of it. I reckon he'll chuck up his apprenticeship and zoom off whatever anybody says. That he's restless. Uh, hello, um... What you said in the pub earlier? What about? You know what about? Why are you suddenly being so evasive? I'm scared. What for? Well, it's a big subject. Oh, is that why you just threw it in so casually? Well, I... I don't know, making a joke just seemed like the easiest way. But, um, I wasn't joking, actually, love. I do want another baby. But you were afraid to discuss it with me. Well, I just wasn't sure what your reaction would be. Well, I think we should... Oh, you're talking about me? No, we weren't. Then why did you shut up so suddenly? Look, Uncle Al, but we do have things to talk about that are private, even from you, sometimes. Oh, we were talking about you, love, honest. Anyway, we only say nice things about you. Well, I am. Pictures have gone into long narrow streaks on the telly. Oh, well, that'll be your horizontal hold once adjusting. I'll do it. No, well, they're not worth looking at these days. Only cowboy pictures. Who wants to look at cowboys at my age? Suppose you haven't got a pot of tea brewing. Thank you. Ah. Fetching a couple of drinks while we're studying this, eh? Um, gin and tonic and a large scotch and dry. Good memory. It is gin and tonic. Mm. I thought that was right. Hey, it's not been all that long. Oh, no? Too long, all the same. I missed you, Elsie. Oh, yeah. I have. You think that's a lion, don't you? Me shooting a load of bull. No. No, I don't think that's quite your style. No, not like our friend Mr. Bull. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't do his brand of chat in a million years. Nor would I want to, to be honest. So, am I forgiven? Yeah, go on, I suppose so. Life's too short. To hold a grudge. Yeah. That's my girl. 
So, what have you been doing with yourself? Oh, all manner of fabulous things. They're writing a book about it. The Adventures of Elsie and her amazing sewing machine. You have a life outside that factory. Oh, not so you'd notice. Not these days. I uh, used to, once upon a time. Elsie, you don't live in the past. You're too... Um... Young and lovely. Oh, vital. You're too much vitality. That's what I liked about you, first time I met you. Yeah, well, you may not be a practice line shooter, but you certainly have a happy knack of saying the right thing. It's not a knack, love. Just speak the truth as I find it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well... If we're drinking to truth, sometimes I think it's uh, better sugar-coated. Actually, I was going to drink to old acquaintance. May they never be forgot. Just look at her, she's not going. She's got herself glued to that spot here. You want to be more careful when you pick up when you're in your cups next time, Freddie. I never picked her up. She picked me up. I thought you couldn't remember a thing about it. Well, just look at her. I mean, does she look the type that I pick up? Yes, she's wearing a skirt. <laughs> Fred! <coughs> now you've got a bit of a lull on, perhaps you can show me a restaurant. Eh? You told me at the dance you do food here. And so we do, Cock. We do the best meat pies this side of Trafford Bar. Mm, meat pies? I thought you got a proper restaurant. No, I'm sorry, Flower, no restaurant. But we can do your lovely ham balm cake. Right. Betty is the queen of ham balm cake. She's got four stars in the balm cake guide. Oh, the, the, there's a nice chippy. It's just round the corner, only five minute walk. I don't want to eat. I want a job. You what? You promised me a job. Head waitress in your restaurant. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. G, restaurant owner and landlord of this parish, is there how tell she promised us? Oh, belt up, will you? Look, you, you, you must have got it wrong. It was a bit noisy at the door. You must have misheard me, look. Just <coughs> one, you said it. No, no, it weren't me, Flower. It was, uh, it was somebody else. Some other landlord? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd better be getting along then. Oh, do you have to go so soon, love? Fred will be disappointed. Well, I'm helping out at this 21st and I can't let them down. But I'll call in again if it's all right with you, Fred. Oh, yeah, no. of course it is, Cock. Pop in any time. You'll always be sure of a welcome here. Oh, that's kind of you. It must have been my lucky night that night. <laughs> I don't know. Yours too, eh, Fred? Oh, I'll take a running jump with you, Lynch. Right, I'm off. So you want enough? So not. Mike, uh, are you sure you don't want to change your mind about taking me out tonight? No. <laughs> I know what it is. You're scared you'll be unable to resist me the way I look tonight. Got it in one. See ya. He's lying, you know. He's not got a date tonight. That's the way it goes, you see, Fred. He's horrible to me, so I'm horrible to you. Yeah. Now, if he was nice to me, who knows? Nah, I'd still be horrible to you. You know, I know what I've been meaning to ask you. What would the name of church when me and our Bessie got wed? Oh, I have no idea. Well, you should have. <laughs> why should I have? I wasn't there. I wasn't even born. Well, it's family history, that's why. You know you ought to keep an order of these things. Well, I suppose I've got it in my album somewhere. It'll, uh, it'll do tomorrow, Uncle Albert. What? Tomorrow. I'll come home in my dinner hour. You can get the album out. We'll spend the whole time looking through it. You can tell me all about them. And all my pictures, eh? Every one of them. You know, I've got an idea that you've seen them pictures. Oh, yeah, but I'd love to see them again. Tomorrow. Right. You know, they bring all my past back to life, them pictures. And I show you one of our BK when she were little and we curls in her hair. She wasn't bad looking then, although you wouldn't think so to look at her now. Right, tomorrow's in the time, eh? Definite. It's a date. Right. to Mrs. Deirdre Barlow for gallantry over and above the call of duty. Oh, don't be mean. You know he likes us to go through his collection with him. Yeah, well, the first time's all right, or the second, even the third. It's when it gets to the 58th time round, it begins to fall a bit. Ken, hmm? you know you said you think we should... What? Well, before, when I was telling you about wanting another baby and Uncle Albert interrupted us, you said you think we should what? What were you going to say? Well... Wait for a bit. Wait? What the heck for? It's already getting too late. You mean you think I'm too old? Well, I'm not exactly 18, am I? And then there's Tracy. I mean, I don't want there to be too big an age gap between her and the baby. I want them to grow up together, you know. You talk about it as if it's a fate to conflict. Well, it is in a way to me. But honestly, Ken, to say we should wait, it's not reasonable, love. It isn't. Well, uh, 
And what about Uncle Albert? I'm not married to Uncle Albert. I'm married to you. What coat people do. The house isn't big enough. Then we'll move or, or build on or something. Honestly, Ken, these are not reasons. They're excuses. If you want a baby as much as I do, we'll find a way around them. If you do, that is. Well, obviously, I don't feel about it quite the same way that you do. Well, why, obviously? Is it only women who want babies or something? Well, we've got children, both of us. Yeah, but not together, not our baby. You don't want it, do you? You don't want us to have a child. Look, love, I, uh... I don't want any more kids. Not now. Or not ever. Not ever. Hey, Uncle Albert. Not a broken yoke inside. Well, that'll be a change. Pardon? No. I heard you, you know. Well, then why do you keep asking me what I said? Morning. Your breakfast's under the grill. Right. Aren't you having any breakfast? No, I'm, uh, I'm slimming. Slimming? Look, if you get any thinner, some dog will come along, carry you off and bury you. Yeah, but don't you think I look very spelt and I glamorous? I think you look very, very tired. What do you think, Ken? Hmm? What? Well, don't you think she looks tired? Yes, uh, yes, she does bad. Right. I'll tell you, Stanley, sleep is one of the few rights still left to us fellas. And if that elder's nagging you, keeping awake, then sue her for restitution of uh, shut eye, right? right? Definitely. You could take her to the highest court in the land, Stanley. I shoved me too emotionally in a gob once, trying to stop her. No good. I can't see a court doing it. <laughs> now, let's have a, a balm cake and a tin of mushy peas, please. How long get me eight hours in? Go back and have an hour while she's out work. One balm cake, one tin of mushy peas. Thank you. Tell me, Stanley, is there any connection between that and that? There is. What? I put the mushy peas in the balm cake and make a sandwich. Oh, really? Smash in, you want to try it sometime. Yeah, I would if I ever run out and smoked salmon. She left me no breakfast, you see, and I call that mean. So what's upsetting Hilda, then? Oh, because I forgot her birthday. I mean, at her age, you think she'd be glad to be forgot, wouldn't you? Well, you can always get back in her good books on Sunday, Stanley. What, say one of them sloppy cards? Yeah, one of those Valentine cards. Oh, no, I wouldn't get one of those. Besides, there's no post on Sunday. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Hilda, get a move on. It'll soon be opening time, you'll still be stood there with that duster in your hand. Well, if you can do it any faster, you're welcome to try, you know. Come on, love. Now you know you're behind. Well, what's the point? I mean, work's supposed to be just a part of your life, isn't it? Not the whole of it, like it is mine. Cos I've got nothing going for me except work. I mean, I skivvy at home, I skivvy here, I skivvy for Mike Baldwin, and what for? All I get out of skivvying is, well, just an existence. That's all, you know. Just a rotten, miserable existence. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm definitely not going anywhere. I'm just working and flipping existing. Nobody gives a fig, nobody. Flaming Harry, Hilda. I come into work, as usual, with a big happy grin nailed across my chops, only to find you doing a fair impersonation of a sopping wet parrot. Well, she's been like that since she landed. Right, Betty. Get the sherry bottle on the bar. In the middle of the morning? Oh, Mrs Walker's away, isn't she? Yeah, right. Get the bottle out. Oh. You'd like a drink, wouldn't you, Hilda? Well, I wouldn't say no. Of course you wouldn't. Well, that dust it down. Take a break. Way. You know we shouldn't be doing this. No, we shouldn't. But we are. So when? Oh, when, lovey. Thank you. So when? Eh. Uh, when? Right. Now, what is upsetting you, Hilda? Apart from your miserable and hopeless life. Well, that's it, isn't it? It is miserable and hopeless. So's everybody's. Am I right, Betty? Not exactly a bowl of cherries. Not in February. Round here. But you have got an extra burden that we haven't, haven't you, Hilda? Yeah. Stanley? 
Yeah. What's you up to now, lovey? Well, I lied to you. He did forget my birthday present, didn't he? What about that box of chocolates? Well, I gave him the money for them. Oh, Hilda. Oh, I know it's not a major disaster, not compared to some folks' troubles, but... Well, it's little things like that, you know. Remembering your birthday or your wedding anniversary. What makes all the difference between just existing and, well, feeling a bit special now and again. But, you see, they don't understand things like that, Hilda. Fellas don't. They're not sentimental about things like that. They're sentimental about pints of bitter and old cricket bats and Bobby Charlton. It's not their fault, love. It's just the way they're made. Hey, they're not all like that, though. Me and my Cyril always used to buy me a box of fancy cakes on my birthday. He never missed. Yeah, and I mean, look at him what Nellie Rowbottom married. Now, on her last birthday, she got up to find he'd stuck a red rose in her denture pot. Now, that's love, that is. Yeah. Well, it just shows there's still some thoughtful fellas in the world. Not many, though, Hilda. Oh, not many, I grant you, know. Not many at all. Hey, what's going on? Come on, which one of you boozy lot's going to make me a pot of tea? My mouth feels as if it's full of crackers this morning. Should I tell him? Yeah, you do. You're better at bad language than me, no. Take a hike, Fred, or we'll scrag you. Yeah, that's after we tie your big ears to your big toes and tickle your feet. Oh, we're red up poker. <laughs> All right, I'll make my own flaming tea. Women, only good for one thing, not always good for that either. How would you know, Fred? You still think sex comes just after five. <laughs> <laughs> like that, Hilda? Yeah, it did. Come on, cock, have another drink. <laughs> oh. I'll tell you something. What we Tied test up. you babies oh, I reckon, in another few years, fellas could just become redundant. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Right, thank you very much, Mrs. Thank Green. Ta da, love. Right. I'm off. It won't be a long meeting for right. an hour. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You get off, have a nice meeting, and try and get the rates down. We'll be talking about sewage. Mm. <laughs> Hello, Emily. Hello. Good morning, Mrs. Bishop. The shop and I are at your service. What's brought this on? This excess of civility. I'm not used to it in shops anymore. It's more your, yeah, we've not got any. Oh, not in this shop. In this shop, not only is the customer always right, she is never wrong. And I only want a loaf. I feel as though I should be doing my share and spending pounds. Am I a big disappointment to you? Yes, but one brown loaf coming up. Am I to assume that all this good humour might have something to do with them? joint policy decision by you and somebody we both know and love. Now, why should you assume that? Well, perhaps it was more of a heartfelt hope than an assumption. Ken uh, doesn't want any more children, Emily. Ken doesn't? No, Ken doesn't. You know him, as you were saying, love kids. Well, I mean, he works with them, so he must like them at least. But what if he doesn't like kids? What if he hates kids and hates his job? Deirdre. Why? I, I don't know why. I, I think he tried to explain to me last night, but I couldn't take it in. Something to do with his age and having Uncle Albert on his hands. I don't know. First of all, I was too flabbergasted and then I got mad and then, of course, I started blubbing. Oh, dear, I am sorry. But he'll change his mind. I'm sure he didn't mean it. But I mean it, Emily. I want another baby. If you want my opinion, I don't think Ken stands a chance of denying you. Similar, sir? No, thank you. One's an appetizer, two will be boozing. Aren't you, Mr. Perfect? Why didn't yes. I just chain myself to you the first time I saw you? Did you hear that, Stan? Some good advice for you, there. Like talking to it, Walt. <laughs> Bye. Bye, love. I suppose you want a refill? I never even tasted that. Well, you wouldn't, would you? Pouring it straight down, first thing it'd touch will be your other legs. <laughs> Human bucket, aren't you, Stanley, lad? Well, a man's got to enjoy himself, hasn't he? Cross More than your elder does, according to her. Hey. Why don't you make a bit of an effort, Stan? It wouldn't take much to keep your elder sweet. She's an easily satisfied little body. Take a notice, Stanley. Women are like animals. Treat them soft, they'll run you ragged. Exactly. Shut up, Freddie, you're prejudiced. Say that again. Just try and be a bit more thoughtful, Stan. 
I'm sure you'd see the difference if you just bought her a little birthday present or a little card even. It'd have to be better than it is now. I mean, when she's not pulling her face, she's bawling at you. Bumper, Stan, that's the only thing you understand. Ooh, hey, that hurt, Lynch. Think about it, Stanley. Plant a kindness and pluck a friend. I read that on a kludgy wall once. Well, don't try and forget her birthday. I don't do it on purpose. Keep forgetting it, Stanley. It's all part of the net they tried to throw over you, lad. Well, compare with, say, the early 70s, business is definitely diabolical. Well, it's not exactly dead like it was last year. It's like uh, twitching. Oh, I couldn't take another year like last year. I really couldn't. I mean, I'm not in business to just keep ticking over. I thought I'd be on my way to making me first million by now. As it is, I'm sending the bank manager flowers every week. Uh, you'll find the bad times have sharpened you up. You'll be like a stiletto when things pick up, slipping in there for the big kill. You say. You'll see. <laughs> I want 5,000 shares when you go public. Yeah. Oh, hello, well, see, just in time. It's my round. I've just come in for a pie. The cup is bare at all. You can have two pies if you like. Gin and tonic, is it? <laughs> go on, you twisted me arm, but only one pie. I'll never be able to get behind the machine when I get back to work. Uh, do they call a comfortable sofa fat, Elsie? Of course they don't, they say. Hey, it's well upholstered. I'm not quite sure how to take that one. I know how you'd have taken it if I'd have said it. Had a class, you? Right. Oh, come on, Mike. Stop making nails out of pins. There's no between us. We're just good mates. No emotions, no complications, nothing. Have I said anything different? No, but your eyes are saying it. They still are. There are no sausages. You sure? I'm absolutely certain. All there is is a drop of milk and a pound of butter at fridge. Well, I don't know what we're having for our dinner. Uh, Deirdre's here. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hello. Uh, there's no for dinner. Haven't you been to Chippy? No. Well, you knew I was going into work this morning. Ah, uh, sorry. What have you been doing this morning, Uncle Albert? Collecting my pension. All morning? Almost. I suppose it never occurred to you to call at the chippy on your way back or call and get something from the butchers? No. Yeah, well, it's not the end of the world, is it? Perhaps we can uh, open a tin or something. We will not open a tin of something. I'm flipping hungry and I was looking forward to fish and chips. And since neither of you two seem capable of going getting them, I'll go and get them myself. Like I seem to do everything else around here. But perhaps that was the idea when you married me. You just wanted a, a housekeeper, an errand boy. What's up with her? I'll tell you when you're 21. What sort of an answer is that? Hello, Albert. We'd almost given you up, but I suppose you couldn't resist <laughs> dropping in to see me, could you? If you hadn't been next door, I wouldn't have come in at all. Will you serve Albert better? I can't be doing with him today. What makes you think I can't? Oh, can. oh never mind. Yes, Albert, love. You know what I up. Why do you keep asking me? Careful, Albert. We're not feeling all that well disposed to cantankers, old fellas, today. You'll be cantankers if you sat through a silent dinner like I have. I don't you mean. Well, faces in the shoe tops, both of them. Ah, oh, what's wrong? I don't know. They won't tell me, will they? I reckon it's me, I must be getting under the feet. Uh, I've had children too, you know. Both lovely kids. Good reason to have more, I would have thought. Yeah, well, that was 18 years ago. Oh, what's that got to do with anything? Well, I was a different person in a different world. You mean you were younger? Oh, yes, and so was the world too. It wasn't so perverse. You, you're doing it again, Ken. You're turning everything into words. It, it's about... Needing love. It's not about thinking. Everything's about thinking. Otherwise, we're just animals. Oh, well, I happen to like animals. I don't think you do, you know. I've never seen you stroke a, a dog or a cat. Look, now, I've had children and you've had children, so we both know the, the joys and the miseries. No, that's not the right word. Uh, the snags. Such as? Well, the obvious ones are that uh, they're tired, they're demanding, they're, they're a continual concern, and they're around for a long time, a very long time. Yeah, so we're back to the age thing again. For God's sake, Ken, you're not Methuselah, although sometimes you act like it. No, but I am in my 40s, and I'm not sure I can switch onto the wavelength of a child anymore. And a child needs that from a father, especially a boy who wants a, a grown-up child to play with. Look, I'm trying to be honest. I mean, we're talking about a human being, not a toy. Well, I thought 
children were supposed to make you feel younger. <laughs> I've known a lot have made me feel very, very old in a very short time. Yeah, well, I'll play with him then, or her. I'm still in my first childhood. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not sure I want the responsibility of bringing another human being into this world. I mean, the billions who've come in already have hardly changed it one jot, have they? That's not a reason, Ken. I don't think you even believe that. That's just an excuse, and you know it. Oh, maybe. But it's an excuse for some very good reasons. I want a baby, Ken. Your baby. And I don't think our marriage will be properly fulfilled without it. You know how to put the boot in, don't you? Hey, what do you think you're doing? Hey! I said, what do you think you're doing? Well, I got rained off, you see, so I thought I'd go on and give you a lift while you're out for Baldwin. Oh, and that's what you call giving me a lift, is it? Well, I'm cleaning, aren't I? Stanley, the bag's full on that machine. You're not picking anything up. Still, I'm surprised you even know what it's for, let alone how to use it. I always thought you thought that was a stuffed animal standing in the corner. Well, I'll change the bag for you. Will you? Well, it's easy enough, isn't it? All right. And where will you get a new bag? Where to keep them? Ah, now that says it all, doesn't it, Stan? The only things you can lay your hands on with any certainty in this house is a knife and fork. No, I tell a lie, you can always find the bottle opener. But everything else is a complete mystery to you. Where food comes from, how it gets cooked, why we're not up to us ears in muck. Still, I don't suppose you'd notice that if we were, would you? You know, marriage is supposed to be a partnership, 50-50. You've never even got into double figures. You're not going to let it drop, are you? Me forgetting your birthday. No! What keep you a tick, love? I'll just finish this order. Right, carry on. There's enough in there to feed a regiment. Who's it for? Mrs Hartley, you know, that big house, ch corner of Church Street. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I used to know her at school. Do you know, her family were that poor, it was a case of first up best dressed in their house. Now she's got her own car and a poodle in a plaid coat. Yeah, well, her husband's a general trader, isn't he? I mean, he travels all over the country buying and selling stuff. Mm. Used to know him and all. He come and sat next to me in the Roxy once, but he smelled of paraffin, so I got up and moved. <laughs> now I suppose he just smells of brass. Right. What can I do you for? Oh, sorry. Oh, it's all right. I'm not in any hurry, except to jump in the cut. No, you don't say that, Hilda. Roberts, yeah. Oh, hello, love, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah, OK, yeah, I hope you feel better. All right, right, ta-da! <clears throat> Deirdre, not coming in this afternoon. I not feel too well. Uh, I've not felt too well for years, but I have to keep going. They give us five pound of spuds and a tin of corned beef. I thought you weren't feeding your stamp. Well, no, I weren't, but his belly started rumbling. I can hardly hear the telly for it. <laughs> hey, you, you know what you need, don't you? A little pick-me-up. Do you know what I find does me the world of good these days? Yeah. Just a little drop of port every now and then. I am copper enough to buy this lot, never mind bottles of port. Listen, take that. Pay me when you can. Put it back at cupboard and don't tell Stan. Oh, I won't. Hey, a bottle of port. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 where do you think you're going? Out. It's like you're not off. It's tomorrow. If I had to have every night off that I should have had off in the last couple of weeks, I'd be having a week off, wouldn't I? As it is, I'm going for a night out with the lads. I'm up to here working with women. Don't be back any later than ten. You'll not get no supper. Toodle pip. <laughs> oh, he's hardly been out, you see, since June is when. Except to the brewer's bar. Oh. <laughs> Here, come in. Is it true he asked the managing director's wife to go outside me? I wouldn't be surprised. He did everything else. <laughs> I think, you know, that's why Mrs Walker's gone to their Jonas. He made her ill in the end, you yeah. know. <laughs> shouldn't love, shouldn't we? <laughs> Give us another pint, love. I'll get that and a whiskey for me. Okay. Still, things still know better than Stan. Ah, oh, that's <clears> the same. This isn't helping, you know. Boozing in here. I told you at dinner time you should be a home for of some shelves up or summer. I tried that, didn't I? It didn't suit. Well, I told you what to do, didn't I? Send her a valentine. Good idea. Give the man a bun. I've got one. Here. Pardon? Uh, the valentine I've got here. Let's have a seat. No, 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 it's private. Oh, come on, be a sport. Give us a scan. We'll keep it a secret, won't we, Betty? Ooh, guide's on her. Just a quick thing. I got it from the post office. 
I've got the proper Charlie, I'll tell you. Oh, Stan. Yeah. What's to say? Go on, read it. Oh, I don't know if I should, Betty. It's so beautiful. Are you taking the mickey? Come on, let's hear it. Come on. Stars don't hide their light, nor the moon above. I can't hide my passion for you, my darling love. Yeah, that's rude, isn't it? Ah, oh, it's very nice, Stan. It's not as so obvious, some, you know. Here, give us a ear. Well, hang on, are you going to sign it? Uh, yeah, of course I am, with my name. Well, you can't sign Valentine's with your name. Of course you can't. Will you sign it, uh, Teddy Bear? No, no, Tiger. Don't be silly, Michael. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm not, for, for me, if I don't sign it. Well, she'll guess it's from the only man in her life, which is you. You are the only man in her life, aren't you, Stan? Of course I am. I'm just making sure of fine Oh, uh, yes, please, love. Well, you see, well, it has to be sort of like, you know, anonymous. That's the whole idea, you know, for Valentine. But they reckon that's right on, on the envelope, won't Good you? thinking, Stan. I'll get somebody else to write it. Perhaps one of these two gentlemen would oblige. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Give it here, Stan. All right. <coughs> you know, she'll be over the moon when she gets it, Stan. Yeah, with that lovely message. She reckon? Oh, I'd have an early night Saturday if I was you, Stan. In case she goes a bit wild when she gets that Sunday. I can cook. Don't worry. Hey, listen, I'll stick this through your letterbox Sunday morning. Thanks very much. Right. You've pulled a good stroke there, Stanley, for a change. Well, that was thin, so. Oh, yeah. oh bless. What are you doing here? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, charming. Do you think you should be somewhere else? Well, nothing on tonight, I'm sure of that. Oh, you got a bit funny, or what? Look, I'll have to get on with me, Annie, and I've tried to start it at least six times. Well, don't mind me. I won't. Know what it is? I'm unsettled, Elsie. Ah, yeah. Well, it's an anticlimax tonight, after last night. You can say that again. Mind you, this is the real me. Mm. Slogging away with an iron. I was only playing at being Cinderella last night. Good night, though. Perfect. We've had a few good nights. We have. We have. That's what I mean. I thought, uh, what are you going to do with yourself tonight, Will Thorson? And the best I could think of was... Uh, to come round here. Play snooker. Oh, I see. So I'm only second choice, second to snooker. Well, am I playing snooker? Am I here? What was up? You take the wrong turning on the way to the Conservative Club or something? I got as far as the door, actually. Then I thought, I know what, I'll go round and see Elsie. She's probably feeling just like I am, so we can cheer one another up. Well, we're not doing so well so far, are we? But we will eventually. I mean, we always do, don't we? That's a fact. Yes, we do. Uh, well... Hmm? Why didn't you just go home tonight? Ah, well, there's the thing. Well, why didn't you? Difficult. Have you had a row? No more than usual. Truth is, Elsie, I don't go home much anymore, except to sleep. I haven't gone home much ever, really. No, that's not true. I've gone home, then I've come out again. But I haven't even been going home recently. I see. And the more I don't go home, the more I'm sure. Sure of what? I should leave my wife. I'm thinking of doing it, you see, Elsie. I suppose you're surprised. Well, well, yes, I am, actually. It's not an easy thing to do. No. No, it can't be. Do you mind me to take your toaster off the chip? That grill of yours is just about knackered. Do you what? Your grill, Stanley. It's only got one set and burnt charcoal. There's a brown mist hanging over the yard now. Well, get us a new one, then. Oh, typical loggy response, that is. Typical. Hey, you sure your Hilda isn't doing a stint at Baldwin's today? How many times do you want to tell him? Do you know what he said this had happened? He said it had happened in the beginning. CB radio would unite the masses of the people. It'd bring together the ordinary man and woman in a way that wasn't possible before. And it has, hasn't it? I mean, a couple of days ago, I didn't know Stardust live from a hole in the world. We still don't know her. I know her voice, though, don't I? I'm very succulent, it is, and all. Hey, I bet she's excited. I mean, a couple of days ago, she didn't know her Slim Jim. Why do you call yourself Slim Jim? Well, it's uh, whimsical, Stan. A lot of cold names are whimsical. Aye. 
Maybe she's whimsical too, you know. Might be more coal dust than stardust. Sticks and stones, Stanley. I'm not going to let you spoil it. Oh, well, see, you don't. Turning a bird up on the wireless is one thing. But entering Mike's flat in, with Ella's keys is another. If it's your flaming idea. That's what you'll say if you get copped. Don't get copped. Oh, ye of little fate. Do you know about the uh, burglar alarm? What burglar alarm? Mike Baldwin's flat. The one Ilda got in trouble with, with the police. Oh, flaming Nora, I'd forgotten all about that. There you are, you see. Hey, do you know how it works? No, I don't. She'll tell you. Oh, very funny. Well, uh, we'll clear up when we finish, Tilda. I never doubted it. Hard work shopping, was you? Do you know, he's a cheeky sweep, that fishmonger. And she's no better, neither, her from Harper Street, that gopey decorator's wife. <laughs> Stood there in a fur coat, thinks she's got the right to go to the top of the queue. And he'd have served her and all. By heck, to them what has. Didn't let her get away with it, did you? Phew. So it wasn't him, then, uh, sent you the valentine, the fish fella. She knows who sent it. I know who you want me to think it was, Stanley. Well, that's far from being the same thing. Why do you have to destroy me, moment of happiness? You wouldn't catch me doing that if it was you what got sent to Valentine. I might wring your fat neck, but I wouldn't destroy your moment of happiness. I reckon it's a butcher, you know. I think he popped it through the door. I mean, he's always had his eye on you. I mean, look at last week. He saved you them giblets, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could be. He saved you them giblets out of charity because of your hard luck stories. Because of... You shit! I don't tell hard luck stories. Got me pride, I have, unlike some I could mention. Uh, he might have given me them out of sympathy, knowing who I'm married to. Say it all wrong to Shilda, you better yourself. You go catch that butcher. Mm. Especially if you get shut to stand. <laughs> it's got one of them big houses, you know, on Claremont Park. A lot of money up there. I'll tell you what, every house has a burglar alarm. Huh. That's something we'll never need. Yeah, but they're very ostentatious, aren't they? I mean, most of them are just for the top show. Don't you reckon? You know, it could be that butcher. Don't I reckon what? Them burglar alarms. I mean, most of them are just like a box with nothing behind them. Ooh, Mike Baldwin's isn't. By heck, it's not. Oh, no, but uh, you've had personal experience of that one, haven't you? Yeah, I have and all. Mind you, I've got it taped now. You see, when you open the front door, you hear this buzzing sound from this box on the wall inside. Now, you have to open the box and switch it off with this tidgy little key what's on the ring. You have to look slippy, mind. Otherwise, you're in a right mess. Tidgy little key on the ring, eh, yeah. Yeah, this is science marvellous. Do you know, I never knew how them things worked. <laughs> you should have done with your old line of business. <laughs> Still, they say you learn something fresh every day, don't they? Oh, they do, will they? They do indeed. Crack it, Stan. Hey. Oh, go back to your GGs. Well, it keeps him out of mischief, if nothing else. And he's always wanted to build a house from scratch, anyway. You told me that. Mm, you can keep your eye on him from bedroom window. <laughs> I could if you were building it next to a cabin. Crafty, though, isn't he? Sends me out at way to work. Oh, don't they all? Steady on. We're not all tired with the same brush, you know. I wouldn't have my wife going out to work. And neither would you. Right, Squire? Correct. Listen, my New Year resolution was to be nice to both men and women. So I won't send no wife of mine out to work. I'll bet. Well, you can shut up for a start. Haven't you worked it out yet? It all depends on who you pick. I don't know. You women, you make the wrong choice and then it's mo, 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 mo. See, you should have picked him. Of course you should. I mean, by now, I should have had a nice house. Half a dozen kids. Jag in the garage. Look good. I suppose it's too late to change my mind. That's the tragedy of life, darling. You can never go back. So, it's perhaps as well we're happy with what we've got. Okay, try. It is, isn't it? Uh, where are you operating this morning, then? All around Rainy City. Put in town, Clogger's Alley. Yeah, well, uh, watch it if you're going up the Khyber Pass, cos uh, Smokey's got the portrait painters out, you know. Ten four, Slim Jim. Hey, have you declared yourself redundant or what? Can't you see I'm talking to a lady here? Just give us a minute. Uh, sorry about that, Stardust. Uh, got uh, stepped on. One of my sheep herders wanting instructions. Hey, don't forget our eyeball at half one, will you? Can you repeat the 20? 
Was it St Paul's Gardens? Uh, Roger Stardust, I'll see you there. Roger Slim Jim, three's late. Ten tens and we meet again. <laughs> what with all that rubbish? It wasn't rubbish, it was jargon. Rainy City pudding down, it's rubbish. Look, she said she was operating round Rainy City, right? Which is Manchester, right? Now, Pudding Town is Berry and Clogger's Alley is Bolton. What about the Khyber Fast? Because that's in China somewhere. Not in CB's Jargon, it isn't. In CB's Jargon, it's Blackburn. So I said to her, if you're going up the Blackburn Road, watch out for Smokey, because he's got the portrait painters out, which means... Look out for the coppers, because they got the radar straps out, which we heard in that previous transmission. Now, is there anything else you'd like to know? Yeah. You're going to lay a finger on a bin again. Well, stop shouting at me, then. I'll stop shouting when you stop talking rubbish. Wives aren't like razor blades, you know. You don't chuck them away just because the edges are dulled. It's... It's like my cousin says about emigrating to Australia. <laughs> emigrating to Australia? You're not too old to listen, you know. Now, he says there's a negative and a positive. And he says there are two reasons. If you leave England because you want to go to Australia and because you like it, that's fine. But if you leave because you can't stand England and you can't wait to get away, then if you're in the second lot, you're doomed. Because he said chances are that if you can't make a go of it here, you'll make a bigger mess of it out there. Well, I wasn't thinking of going. No, you know what I mean. Make the best of what you've got. You know, from what you've told me, it doesn't sound so bad. Look, I've had three husbands, you know. Not that I meant setting myself up as any bright and shining example, but... Well, you're a level-headed fella. What do you want to leave home for? Because she's old to live with and paradise is waiting. Doesn't sound like either of them things to me. You reckon? That's what you wanted, isn't it? A cup of tea and a plate of good advice. It was a good cup of tea. Oh, thanks very much. Come on, Elsie, we're all the same. We only want folk to tell us what we want to hear. Oh, and what might that be? Don't you know? No. Fair enough, then. End of conversation. End of conversation. Did she give you a bad time? She nags a lot. Where have I been? Who have I been with? Well, I don't blame her. I'd be the same. Not a lot to choose between you women, is there? Not a lot. But as we all looking for the same thing. All of us looking for Mr. Wright, and most of us settle for Mr. Not So Far Off. At least we think we do. And you see, he doesn't settle. Not after the guilt's worn off. He goes looking around. And there's so many other women looking for Mr. Wright. He's not always the man, you know. Oh, whoever puts their shoes on and walks out first. That's usually how it starts. Oh, if that's what you think. And that's what you think. I'm not being unfair, you know. Just careful. Very careful. Total slow. Slim Jim. Pleased to meet you. You're just like I thought you'd be. So are you. I saw them on the Kyber Pass Road, like you said. Smokey with a camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any trouble? No. They put in a suicide jockey in a TV rental. Bah. Saves him right. Should have been one of us, shouldn't he? <laughs> he should, shouldn't he? He'd have known that, wouldn't he? <laughs> My name's Edward Yates. But my mates call me Eddie, like, you know. Mine's Marion Willis. My friends call me Marion. Call me a lot of other things and all, you know, but... Hello, Marion. Hello, Eddie. Oh, 
I'll keep you a minute, Hilda. Oh, it's all right. I'm not in any of it. Hang on a minute. Alf. What's that? Something steaks large. H. Haddock. Haddock steaks large. That's never an H. Of course it's an H. They taught us to write when I was at school. Not like this present lot. I think my doctor went to your school. Have you seen writing like that? Oh, yeah. Anyway, give her my regard to be seen. Yeah. We're at school together. Oh, she was a dentist. Used to write for the Might see them. Yes, Hilda. Oh, wait. Just a, a, a pound of my bacon, please. Uh, that sounds snarf over. Oh, that's all right. Call it a pound. See that it's you. Oh, well, yeah, you're privileged. Yeah, I am, I'd say. Shall I uh, take the money, Elder? Oh, yeah. You did say call it a pound. Aye, why not? <coughs> there you go. Uh, Thank you, Hilda. Thank you. For everything. I never touched her. Hey, don't worry about the buzzing. It's just a burglar alarm, you know. Come here. It's a little miracle. Scary, aren't they, those alarms? Yeah, but necessary, though. I mean, uh, when you tot up what's in a pad like this. It's lovely. Yeah, it is, isn't it? What's up? Oh, no, it's... I don't want you to think that I'm being... Well, it's the way you talk. I mean, you know, just like... Oh, I'm, I'm not saying anything against it. What, you mean like working class, like? Yeah, well, uh, I'm a working class lad, aren't I? Just got out the rock, like. I'm probably what you call your uh, original self-made lad. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. What do you do exactly? I'm in the haulage business. I uh, I move articles for uh, a variety of articles for the general public, you know. You've probably seen me wagons around town. Do they have your name on them? Uh, no, no, but they have the name of the firm, like, you know. Uh, won't you sit down? Uh, give us your coat. Sir. Right, sir. Uh, what's your fancy to drink? What have you got? Um, I'll tell you what. Try and pick something I'm sure of. All right. Uh, I'll have a sherry. Any kind, that'll do. One sherry coming up. It must be lovely living in a place like this. I've only got a bed sitter. Just one room, but I can never find anything. Funny that, isn't it? You'd think with it only being small, I'd never lose anything, but I do, all the time. But with somewhere like this, everything could have its special place. Have I asked for the wrong thing? No, no, you're all right. Sherry you wanted, and Sherry you shall have. Well, now, don't go looking for a special glass. I mean, I drink mine out of a teacup. Well, I don't think it tastes any different, really. Oh, I, I wouldn't like to think of drink. I mean, I don't drink much. Yeah? <laughs> you done that deliberate, didn't you, so I wouldn't feel embarrassed? Put it into this glass. Oh, yeah, well, you don't have to be a gentleman to go to Arrow at Eaton, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Here's to you, Stardust Lil. Here's to you, Slim Jim. Ooh, dark here. I'm here tonight. Oh. Come and sit down, Chuck. Get yourself warm. Stan. Yeah? I just want you to know that I'll never leave you. I mean, I know you need me, and as long as you need me, I'll be here. You, uh, you know what I mean, don't you, Chuck? Yeah. You see, Stan, you never know what's going to happen in this life. You never know when people you've known a long time suddenly, well, show their true feelings, become affectionate-like. 
But I am aware of my responsibilities and I want you to comfort yourself with that. I am the mother of your children, aren't I? Yeah. And I always will be, Stan. There's nothing can change that. But I'm also a woman. And you mustn't deny me the little happinesses that a woman needs. Like, well, like knowing that somebody holds you in our regard. You want about that Valentine fellow again? Oh, now, you mustn't upset yourself, Chuck. It's happened and there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, it's not going to be easy for us. I mean, we'll be seeing him every day, so we'll just have to try and behave like civilised people. But like I say, I'll be here with you. And me dreams. It's half Robert Stan. Haven't you nothing to say? No, you did believe. It's a nice job, because people are always pleased to see you. I mean, when I knock on the door with a beautiful bouquet of carnations and irises and freesias and that, well, you're bringing happiness, aren't you? Yeah. But you don't have to hold that all the time. I'm perfectly capable of finding it for myself. Well, it's it's me daily woman, like. She's, uh, she's very fussy about fagas, you know. Put it down. Tell her not to be so fussy. It's your flat when all's said and done. Yeah, of course it is. So you're, uh, you like your job, then? Oh, I love it. It's very clean. Makes you smell nice. Oh, I think that's my perfume you're getting, is it? It's amazing we carry on, really, because they're terrible price flowers. But it doesn't seem to make any difference, though. Perhaps it's not surprising. There's nothing a woman likes more than a lovely bouquet. Must remember that. That'd be nice. I'd better go. I've been... I've got a board meeting. Oh, no, don't apologise. You're a busy man. Where are the cups? I washed them up when you uh, powdered your nose. Oh, you shouldn't have. I'd have done them. You're silly in some ways, aren't you? Yeah, well, I suppose most men are, aren't they? Am I going to see you again? Oh, yeah. You, you keep listening. I'll ring your bell. <laughs> Ten four. You'll be late for your meeting. Yeah. Yeah, look, um, I'll follow you down. OK. Eddie? Yeah? Thanks for bringing me. You're very welcome. You lot were slimming over there. Oh, we are. But we try and enjoy it. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not against it or anything. Just I thought I might make more profit with slimming biscuits. <laughs> oh, that you do. <laughs> That's uh, 125, please. Oh, blimey, I don't know. You don't do so bad out of this lot. No, I'll see. We've got to make a living, haven't we? Mm. Anything else? There was something, but it slipped my mind. Uh... Oh, go on, Hilda. No, it's, uh, it's all right. I don't mind waiting. No, get in there. I'll be half an hour. My memory's failing. Go on. Uh, well, it was just... It was just to say, Stanley knows. But don't worry. I don't want you to worry. That's all. I heard that. So did I. What's she on about, Stanley knows? Search me. But that's a novelty in itself, isn't it? Stanley knows anything. <laughs> What's up? Well, the alarm's not on. Oh, thank God for that. For a minute, I thought I'd been ripped off. Oh, I don't know. That flaming woman. What, what was that, then? My so-called cleaner. She gets so excited about turning the alarm off, she forgets to turn it back on again. <laughs> Still, it's not the first time. I don't suppose it'd be the last. Right, take the weight off your feet. Sit down. What you can have? Scotch? Yeah, fine. Well, you're not exactly talking me socks off, are you? Mm. What's up? Something wrong with the merchandise? No, no, far from it. If anything, it's getting better. Oh. In that case, I'll tell the girls that. 
<laughs> now, on second thoughts, I won't. They bleed me dry. Uh. Well, what is it then? Delivery? No, no, that's fine. No, it's not business. It's personal. I thought it might help having a drink and a chat. You don't mind, do you? Me bending your ear. <laughs> I don't mind. Try me. But uh, whether I can help or not, I'm... I... I just want you to know that uh, I understand. I mean, I know it was difficult for you after your wife died. And, well, like it says in the song, woman needs man and man must have his mate. That no one can deny. No, no but... No, let me finish. I'm very flattered. I'm very flattered indeed. I mean, all the more so since you've got to, well, bottle it up like, not show your true feelings, seeing what they're like around here. But these things happen, and when they do, well, I just don't want you to build your hopes up too high. Hilda. I could never do anything that would hurt Stan. You do see that, don't you? Look, look, I I'm sorry. I I've got a feeling I should know what you're talking about. But I don't. Oh, there's no need to pretend anymore. I know it was you what sent me the valentine. Oh, I did. <sighs> I see what you mean now. You recognise the handwriting? It was yours. Oh, I'm not denying that, yeah, but it was Stan that sent it. You see, I, I just wrote out the envelope so you wouldn't know where it come from. <laughs> Shall I get you that drink, Hilda? No, no, it doesn't matter. Sorry to have troubled you. I'm sorry to have troubled you, Hilda. Yeah. Can we get some daft ideas? Checked it, Stanley. Hey. My reception, loud and clear in your backyard. I'll just give Stardust a moment or two to get on the road and then I'll give it a buzz. Oh, your wireless machine. That wireless machine, Stanley, happens to be an integral part of the communications revolution, mate. You what? No, I'm not saying all that again. I'll tell you what I will say. <laughs> You won't know this, because you're so ignorant, but the motto of the BBC is nation shall speak unto nation, which is hard luck on the likes of you and me. So to even things out, the motto of the CB riggers is Joe Egg shall speak unto Joe Egg. And it's happened, hasn't it? It's brought the ordinary people of this world closer together. And you think that's a good thing? Well, in most cases, yeah. Looking at you, not every case, but then you can't win them all, Stan. Cheeky. I mean, take me, for instance. There I am. Copy in the mail on me old Charlie Brown. And don't talk that rubbish to me. I'm trying to do me pulls. All right, I'm listening in on me CB rig, aren't I? And suddenly I hear the dulcet tones of Stardust Lil, who is now my young lady. Now, how's that for a miracle of modern science? You've only met her once. Yeah, but she's impressed, Dan. She's impressed with me standard of living and me luxury pad. Which belongs to Mike Baldwin. Come the revolution, it'll belong to everybody. I'm just anticipating a bit, that's all. You carry on winning your three quarters of a million, mate. I'm going to do wonders for me love life. Five, four, three, two, one. Come and get it, lasses. Oh, I'm ready for this. Hey, oh, me. Hey, hello. Thanks, Joe. Hey, yeah. That's how it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wonder if you'd heard anything about Will. No. I offered him a kip down last night and he said no. I thought he'd be with you. Did you? Well, he wasn't and I wouldn't have offered. All right, Elsie, don't snap my head off. It is the way of the world, you know. It's not the way of my world. Not this time, anyway. Yeah, well, you know my feelings, don't yes, you? Yes, play it any way I like, as long as I don't screw up the business. Right, first time. Now, hang on. If I see him, shall I say you were asking? Yeah. You can say I was asking. Oh, that's sugar. Oh, well, oh, well, sir. How's the romance getting any hotter, is it? You should know, Vera. You seem to know everything else. <laughs> but does his wife, oh? <laughs> Give it a rest, Vera. I mean, after all, we've got fellas of us all. She hasn't. Oh, do you wonder? Hey, how's your girl going on now? Brian's left her. He hasn't left her. He's gone working abroad. Well, it's the same difference, isn't it? No, it's not the same difference. Because, for one thing, he's only gone working abroad for a few months. And for another, he sends her a lot of money home, and that doesn't happen when fellas leave their wives. Oh, stop being so damn touchy. I'm only asking how she's going on. Very well. She's a capable girl. Oh. Oh. Don't just stand 
there. Do something. You're supposed to be the man of the house round here. You need a neighbour? Oh, I heard you move in. Yeah, come in. It's a gale, isn't it? That's right, yeah. I've been asking round. I'm nosy like that. Have I come at a bad time? I'm trying to unblock the sink. Oh, stay where you are. I've got a plunger. And before you say anything, it's no bother. Tell your mammy to stay where she is. So keep on the peg. There's a smoke screen two miles this side of Las Vegas. Okay, big gem four on that, Mickey. Come on. Hello? Uh, hello? Sound like we've got a smooth leg on the side. 10-10, ten, ten, Jugger. That's a four for sure. Whiskey, whiskey, we pulled the plug. Come in the breaker on the side. Oh, uh, uh, hello? Hello there. My handle's Tricky Mickey. Reply. Uh, oh, oh, this is, um... Just a minute. Uh, this is Shady Lady. Shady, eh? Oh. Sounds good. What's your 20? Pardon? Where are you, Shady? Oh, oh where, 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 where the field? Whereabouts in Thundertown? We could have an eyeball. You are? We could meet up, get to know each other. <laughs> Look, Shady, we got heavy background. Let's take it to 32. Hello? Hello? Stanley? Mm. Never mind. <clears throat> what time's dinner, Hilda? At one o'clock. Right, I'll see you then. Oh, are you ready? What does let's take it to 32 mean? What do you want to know that for? Oh, I just wondered. Yeah, but how come you wonder a thing like that? Well, I was reading about it, like. Hey, and you want to be careful. It says in the paper you can get radioactivated off them things. Hilsa, you've been listening to some old wife, cos that's one of their tales. I'll tell you what, worry about me when I start glowing. <laughs> Stanley. No. What would you say if I told you I'd just been conducting a mad, passionate affair on Eddie's wireless? With a fella called Tricky Mickey who wants to get to know me better. Serves him right. Keep smiling through Elsie just like you. I'll clap you one in a minute, Vera. I told you before, get on with your work. This is marvellous. Can't even have a bit of fun now. Fun? <laughs> hey, he's here. <laughs> uh, left your arse outside, have you? Have I what? Well, I thought Prince Charming had horse, you know. I sold it, love. Bought myself a bike. <laughs> Tandem, were it? <laughs> Elsie, Elsie, give me an answer, do Right, Elsie. So oh, that's all. 15th of March delivery, OK? Oh, no problem. We'll make that out. See you. Right, on, mate. See you, Will. Well, I take it you've heard. Yes, I have. I think we've got one or two things to say to one another. Can you make the row? It's about half past one. Yeah, I can. I'll see you then. <laughs> Everything takes ten days to a fortnight. I mean, I'm twiddling my thumbs waiting for material. I could have had the flaming house finished. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. It's very frustrating, Squire. It's like them uh, offers you get in the papers, innit? Allow 28 days for delivery. I mean, what do they need 28 days for? Well, they're not daft, are they? They keep your money 28 days at 15%. Oh, you're right. I never thought of that. Yeah. Not working, Len. He's just waiting for some game, is he, Walker? <laughs> well, not to worry. I read somewhere that Sir Christopher Wren had to wait 35 years for St Paul's to be built, and then he died before it was finished. I wasn't banking on waiting that long. <laughs> Oh, where she is, love lonely, Lily. Oh, for a sock in it, Vera. You're getting on everybody's nerves. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying myself, I am. <laughs> Lost the bob and found a tunnel. Who, me? And why the long face? I wasn't aware I'd got one. Come on, it's down to your knees. 
Go over there, Owen. We'll have a little chat about it, eh? Give another pint and a G&T, will you, love? Okay, my love. <laughs> Look, Len. Look, Elsie. I'm not some fellow you just met in the street five minutes ago, you know. Is it Stockwell? He's left his wife. And that's bad news? He says it's not because of me, but it is, Len, and I'm not being big-headed. I know you're not, Len. No, you don't. You don't know anything about it. You don't know what you're talking about. See, he thinks he wants me, but he doesn't. <laughs> he wants anybody. Anybody bar his wife. Do you want him? I don't know, do I? You're not sure? Yes, I am. Excuse me, lovey. There you are. She's looking well, isn't she? Well, of course she is. She's with me, isn't she? Oh, is that it? <laughs> Look, Len, don't worry about it. I do, though, don't I? Yeah, it'll sort itself out. I've been up and down that road. I know every crack in the pavement. And it doesn't get any easier, does it? No, it doesn't get any easier. She... range of cassettes for the adult wire. Sorry, viewer. You'll be getting the leaflet, but I felt that a few important customers deserve the personal approach. After all, there's nothing like it. See you soon. Sorry, China. The old man's in the trade. Hello, Slim Jim. This is Stardust. I don't like bringing you to home, but I thought I'd better. And in case you're wondering, I got the number when I was at the flat last week. Anyway, I'll tell you what it is, because I know you're busy. You said you might get in touch later on today, only if you do, you won't raise me, because I'm in the shop all afternoon doing some arrangements. So could you make it tomorrow morning? Bye, Slim Jim. All the golden numbers. Sorry it took so long. It was at the bottom of the only tea chest we haven't unpacked. Is he asleep? Uh, no, not yet. I've just put him down. He's all right. I like doing odd jobs, you know. I got all the gear. It's one of the advantages of having a husband who works in a supermarket. And before you run away with the wrong idea, he doesn't pinch things, just gets them at cost. <laughs> I wasn't thinking anything of this sort. Talk about honest. He cut his hand off first. What's we doing standing here gossiping when there's a sink to unblock? Well, good luck. Stand back. Oh, well done. Got any shelves you want putting up? Doors rehanging? <laughs> Just say the you word. <laughs> you deserve a cup of coffee. Oh, well, of... Hey, better still, stop and have some lunch with me. I'm just going to make mine. Really? Yes, yeah, spaghetti bolognese, all right. Oh, spaghetti bolognese, all right. She says it's my favourite. <laughs> but I must phone my mother. I left Lucy with her. That's my little girl. She's three. Are you on the phone? Uh, no, not yet. We've ordered one. Uh, my husband's working out in the Middle East. Well... Qatar, you know. Yes, I do know. And you're on your own. Don't you ever be lonely. If you ever feel you're going round the twist, just knock on the wall and I'll come with you. Any time, day or night. <laughs> That's very nice, thank you. Don't kid yourself. I'm thinking about me as well. But apart from the odd night out with the girls, I don't get out all that much, so now I've got a ready-made excuse. I've got to go downtown with Gail to take her out of herself because she's terribly lonely. <laughs> get the spaghetti out. I'll go and phone me mum. We can have a great time, you and me. to see you here. I've just brought your laundry back in. There's no time, so I won't stop. Hang on a minute. Listen to this. Hello, Slim Jim. This is Stardust. I don't like bringing you at home, but I thought I'd better. And in case you're wondering, I got the number when I was at the flat last week. Now, that is either a joke or somebody else has been here, right? 
Oh, it'll be a joke. Well, I hope it is, because you and me are the only two people who've got keys and I haven't lent mine to anyone. Have you? Me? No, I certainly haven't. Well, it's some flaming joke. Has Len gone? Well, I heard him say that he got to pop to the yard, but he'll be back. Would you believe it, Elizabeth? The waste disposal pipe is loose again. Only needs pushing back, of course. He wants a professional hand. Well, I'll tell him. It's been simmering for years. Suddenly, I... We can't talk here. Come round to your place tonight, about eight, right? No, no. That was one of the things I wanted to say to you. I, I, I don't think you should. Not for two or three days, anyway. But I want to see you. Why? I thought I had to flatter myself. I thought it had nought to do with me. Well, don't give me a hard time. Well, that cuts say. two ways, you know. No, I've got to go. Two or three days and give us a ring. I'll see. For God's sake. Don't let that over there seem any more than they have to. Two or three days. That madam, that one. Oh, and you're an hypocritical soul, so what about all your fellas? Yeah, but they were only a bit of fun, weren't they? I didn't leave them looking like that. Oh, I'm... Um, bust me. Ah. There goes your diamond mine, Stanley. <laughs> hey, Hilda, I've just taken your stand for every penny he's got. Mm. And you're still got now. Now put them cards down. I want to talk to you. Where do you take this stardust lily yours when you do your courting? Oh, various places, you know. Like Mike Baldwin's flat? Mike Baldwin's flat? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to take it there. Oh, no, you couldn't, could you? She must have got the telephone number mixed up with the corporation tip. What telephone number? She rang up, didn't she? Left a message on his telephone answerer. She never. I wondered why you were so nosy about that burglar alarm. Did you know about this? No, I didn't know. No, it no. was your flaming idea. No, I just said it was an idea to get a fat like Mike to take her back to if she could, but you started it. Oh, listen. Never mind you started it, cos I'm finishing it. You pinched my keys, didn't you? Well, you've done it for the last time. Because from now on, these keys never leave my possession. I'm sleeping with them under my pillow. Does he know it was me? No, because it's not just you, it's me and all, isn't it? And I'm not losing my job. So just don't think you're getting your sticky hands on these again, because you're not. I said it'd get copped, didn't I? I've not been copped, Stanley. Baldwin knows nothing about it, and Hilda thinks she's put the kibosh on it. What do you mean, thinks? She has. Maybe. And maybe not. Stanley? Duplicate keys which are easily obtainable if you've got a pal in the trade. You crafty devil. <laughs> you don't know what a godsend you've been. <laughs> Thank you. I'd gladly take him shopping with me if he wants such a little devil. I parked him outside Bradshaw's the other day and an old man bent down to play with him and then he just nicked his glasses, didn't you? You won't give them back. I thought he was going to break him. Isn't your mother a worrier? <laughs> no, it's no trouble. My mother will always have Lucy and Jeff picks her up on the way home, so any day I want, I can be free till six. We'll have a cup of coffee then. No, no, I won't. I'm treating this place like a cafe, and I must get Jeff's dinner on, so don't try and stop me. Oh, hang on a minute. Are you in there? Hello, love. Listen, is it all right if I leave my bike on your wall? Won't knock the house down, oh, will don't it? Don't be cheeky. Oh, heck, sorry. Well, don't be on my account. I was just going. This is my new neighbour, Jackie Moffat. This is Brian's father. Never. I thought it was your boyfriend. Hey, hey, I like this one. Some other time, love, eh? Right, I'll go and get my promise. dinner on. <laughs> Bye. I'll pop round in the morning. Bring the baby. Yeah, I will. Seems like a nice girl. Yeah, do you know, I met her this morning and I feel like I've known her for years. Good, cos it'll be company for you. Hey, hello, pudding. Come here, you. Bye, yeah, you weigh a ton. You just not weigh a ton. <laughs> a cup of coffee? No, thanks, love. I beg. I'll pick to it. Why not? I'm earning my keep now, haven't I? Hey, ain't your granddad earning his keep? <laughs> yeah, from our Brian? No, not yet. Mind you, it's early days. I suppose he's busy. It's just that his mum's mithering, you know. I think she expected him to drop her a line and put it on the plane coming back as soon as he landed. <laughs> Still, yeah. he's got to settle down, yeah. hasn't he? Hey, I bet you wish you were there, don't you? All that sea and sand and camel. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll draw you a camel. I will. And what's more, I'm not going back. On your own? I gave you a fair warning. But what I noticed, did he you knew my Jack, didn't you, Elizabeth? Oh, yes, Mrs. Walker. Oh, yes, of course you did. I get mixed up at times. The years fly by so quickly. Oh, they do. <laughs> he hadn't a great deal of formal education, but he was wise. Yeah. Very wise. <laughs> 
I remember him saying to me shortly after we moved in here, when we were both young in heart and spirit, uh. he said, entering the licensed trade is rather like entering the priesthood. Mm. One's clients are the members of the congregation, and some of them will insist on using the bar as a confessional box. Mm. Now, if they want you to listen, then you must listen. Mm. But if they don't, you must pretend you haven't heard, and you must guard their secrets with your life. Mm. You know, Mrs. Topper and Mrs. Yeah, but just leave him, Mrs. Walker. Yes, Mrs. Tupper is leaving her husband. She's not, is she? Mm, I'm afraid so. Well, what's he got to say about it? Apparently he doesn't know yet. Oh. And that, dear, is the measure of our responsibility. Yes. Very well. Have you seen Bert, Betty? Oh, not since last night, lovely. Not under one of the tables, is it? Either a caution, aren't they, fellas? <laughs> we're out tonight, so come home early, I says. I've dashed out outside of mid-time, and where is he? Yeah, I don't know, they beat cockfighting, don't they? <laughs> I won't mind, but when he ain't got a job, you know, and he could do what he liked, he made himself a prisoner. I couldn't drag him out of that house. Now he's got a job, suddenly he's free. He can go boozing with his mates. He's never in blooming house when I want him. Which way would you rather have him, lovey? Give us half a lot. <laughs> Hey, aren't you a clever lad? Are you dancing? Say nana. Nana? Nan. Blimey, O'Reilly, look at the time. What's the matter? I've got a goal of. Shh, I'm under orders. Here, give it a cop for him. Well, what about your coffee? You're joking. She'll murder me as it is. I've got to do a red jarris now. A what? Oh, what it is to be young. See you, love. Who's red jarris? See you across the road then, Elsie. Not if I can help it. <laughs> Excuse me. I wonder if you could tell me where I could find Mr. Baldwin. Yes, love, over there in that little glass office on the left. Thank you. Mr. Baldwin? Yeah? We haven't met, but I think you know my husband, Mr. Stockwell. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, of course. Uh, come in, will you? Sit down. Now, what can I do for you? Well, if you know him as well as I've been led to believe, you should know why I'm here. I imagine he's told you that he's left me. Yes. Yeah, he did. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh. Yes, he would have done. Likes to unburden himself. Well, Mr Baldwin, Unlike some women, I'm not prepared to let things be and just fade into the corner. I like to know why, and I like to know who. I understand that you were instrumental in my husband's meeting this other woman. Oh, please. I told you, he likes to unburden himself. He's told me everything, except her name. Which is why I'm here. Good evening, Mrs. Tanner. Good evening, Mrs. Walker. How are you? Sharp sorry when we close. Mm, can't wait to get them in bed, Miss Hill. You know, I'm constantly amazed at the resilience of we women, both in body and in mind. And of course, our philosophy is admirable. I've always agreed with Skaldahar, you know, ever since I first saw the film. Tomorrow is another day. With all the snow and ice that you've had, it couldn't get too hot. But believe me, love, it can. He's kidding. <laughs> Tell him to come back here and I'll go out there instead. I lie in my bikini all day, turning a sexy golden brown and do my best not to moan. And he says they went to a native market, but it was very crowded and a bit smelly, and they were warned to watch the wallet. Sounds just like the Arndale Centre on a Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Any road, he seems happy, does he? Yeah. He says he's missing us. Mm. In a way, I think it's worse for him with Nicky. How do you mean? Well, he's changing all the time, isn't he? Six months is a long time in his little life. Yeah. 
I mean, when he gets back, I won't have grown four teeth and learned to walk and say cockut, will I? <laughs> what the ex? Cockut. <laughs> Chocolate, you should know that. You've got one of your own. <laughs> Mine says top top. <laughs> if you should put them together, they'll grow up bilingual. <laughs> we go for a mooch around then? Yeah, I'll have to go out to the bank now anyway. Brian sent a great big fat check with his letter. Mm, must be nice. It is. Especially after the money worries we've had. Yeah, I know, but... Well, what are you going to say? Well, I don't want to be nasty, but you can't cuddle up to a cheque, can you? Elsie, Elsie, can I have a word with you? Oh. Shut the door. No. Had a visitor last night. Oh? Mrs Stockton. Whoops. Exactly. And she seems to have got it into her head that it's one of my employees that's breaking up her marriage. That's a load of cuds, Wallace. And she will not rest in her now solitary marital bed until she finds out who the culprit is. Marital bed? They haven't slept together for years. Oh, see, I'm not interested in the sordid details of Stockwell's sex life. Anyway, he seems to have got his marital knickers in a twist with or without your help. I see. So now she's after somebody's blood. Yeah. Well, it won't be the first time, will it? Does she know it's me? No idea. I just thought I'd warn you so you'd know what to expect. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, any advice to offer with that friendly warning? Only one. Have a word with Wolf. It's his problem as well, you know. Oh, mate. Hi, hi. Been given a push again, have you? No, I haven't. I'm on early shift. Hey, and don't say things like that, not even in fun. What's that, then? This. This is me, uh, CB. Greatest invention since salt and vinegar crisps. Oh, right. does it work? Does it work? Of course it works. Only because we're the gear here. I use it to uh, communicate to my girlfriend, you know. Oh. How do you do it then? Well, I'll show you. It's uh, pull this out like that, mm -hmm. right? And then you uh, turn to the channel that we listen on, you know. Oh. Like that. And then listen. Start a slow to Slim Jim. Come in, Slim Jim. Eh. <laughs> uh, start a slow uh, Slim Jim here. Hi, Slim Pet. I've been waiting for you to call. Are you still on for tonight? Oh, oh definitely, yeah. Uh, what time suits you? Any time after seven. Shall I come to the flat? Uh, well, uh, no, I've got a meeting, a uh, business meeting in town, you know. It might be more convenient if we met there, like. I was hoping we could have a cosy evening in your place, Pet. Wouldn't you sooner? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I'll have to speak to me personal assistant, you know, find out what my movements are. I'll, uh, I'll uh, get back to you later. Uh, take care. You too, pet. Yeah, you see? It's uh, mostly in cold like, you know. Hey, Petty, do you ever hear from that lad now? Alec, you mean? Yeah. Oh, he drops me a line. Why? Have you heard from him? He didn't mention it. Well, I, I must have forgotten. <laughs> yeah, but has he paid you that 40 quid back? That's the main thing. Oh, no, it's not. I mean, the main thing is that he's well and doing all right. I mean, that's what I lent it him for. Yes, altruism is all very well, Elizabeth, dear. But on occasion, it can be misplaced. Yeah, but not on this occasion, Mrs Walker. He'll pay me back when he's ready. <laughs> Hey, Stan, any idea where your Hilda is? Still in there. She's shampooing the living room carpet and she certainly won't belong. Oh, well, I'll have a pipe while I'm waiting, Mrs. Walker. Oh, ta. What for? Oh, go on, make it two pints. And uh, whatever Hilda wants. Hey? Oh, ta, very much, Eddie. I'll have a small floor, please. Fine, gum, it were filthy, that carpet. Slightly soiled, Mrs. Elgin, which is not surprising after the winter we've had. Nothing in this establishment is ever filthy. Apart from the jokes. Hilda, <laughs> <laughs> have you uh, done Baldwin's place yet? Yeah, first thing. That reminds me. He accused me of having a go at his whiskey. You haven't been making free with it, have you? Well, I might have had the odd little nip. I didn't think he was the sort of person to go measuring the bottles. Oh, I wouldn't count on it. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. I'm only thankful I put a stop to your tricks. And I'm very grateful for it and all, Hilda. Hey? For making me see the error of my ways. Wouldn't happen to know if he was in tonight, would you? Why, what do you want to know for? Well, I just thought I'd uh, nip around with a bottle, you know, uh, Replace what I'd had, you know. What, and tell him it was you? Don't be daft, no. Tell him it was a belated Christmas present. 
It just eased me conscience a bit, you know. Mm. Well, it'll have to stay uneasy for a bit longer. I'm sure it'll survive. It's had plenty of practice. He's got a very important business dinner with a man who's coming up specially from London. I know, cos I ironed his best shirt for him this morning. They've booked a table in Nutsford. Nutsford, eh? You were on the board, didn't you? Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Never mind, I'll have to do it another time. And in case you're wondering about anything else, them keys are stopping in my pocket. <laughs> oh, quite right, Hilda. And I just hope he appreciates your loyalty. <laughs> You know, to hear him moaning, you think I got to fetch Undertaker in, but he still managed to eat a big plate of hot pot tops. Typically. Hang on a minute. Uh, shall we go and talk about it in my office? We talked about it privately last night, Mr. Baldwin. I don't recollect what we got very far. Are you in charge here? Yes, I'm supervisor. Then I presume you must know my husband. Mr. Stockwell. Yes. Yes, I do know him. He's, uh, he's one of our customers. Look, uh, don't you think we should... I shan't uh, keep your staff for more than a minute. I just want a little information, that's all. I understand that my husband's become rather friendly with one of these, um, ladies. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. No. No. Oh, you do surprise me. Well, perhaps somebody else might. Hey, I hope you don't think it were me. I don't get to mix with big wigs like your husband. No one's accusing you of anything, Vera. Well, I just want to be left in peace, Mr. Baldwin, to get on with my work. Well, there's no need for any drama. I just want a little chat with my husband's friend. And I'm led to believe that she's one of your ladies. Bit authentic coming in here like this. Look, there's no point in arguing in public, is there? It's all right, Mike. I'll talk to her. Yeah, well, uh, go in there, or you could use my office if you like. I'm not to say that I'm going to be ashamed of. Thank you. There is a limit to the amount of dirty linen I'm prepared to wash in public. Right, come with you lot. Back to work. Hey, but I'm I said back to work. You know my name. Do I get to know yours? Mrs. Tanner. Now... I've no objections to discussing anything you want, but I agree with Ivy. Coming in here like this is dead off. Frankly, I don't give a damn what those women out there think. Their opinions are no concern of mine. And if Mike Baldwin chooses to get embarrassed, well, that's his fair, isn't it? I mean, if he hadn't set up this cosy little foursome with you and my husband in the first place, none of this would be necessary. None of what? What is it exactly you want? Have a look at you, for a start. I must say you're somewhat older than I expected you to be. I see. Well, if we're going to have a slanging match, do you mind if we move away from the audience? You might not care about that lot out there, but I do. They're my mates. Oh, I've no intentions of having a slanging match. I just want to make it quite clear to you that you will get out of my husband's life and you will stay out of it. And if you don't, I shan't be responsible for the consequences. Oh, I see. Threats. Oh, no. You're the threat, Mrs. Tanner. Threat to my marriage. I won't tolerate oh, that. Oh, don't give me that. That marriage was collapsing like an unsat jelly long before I ever met Wilf. I don't know where you got hold of that idea. I got it from Wilf. That's where. Now I've met you, I'm more inclined to believe him. He said you were a cold, hard, conniving bitch. He wouldn't say that. No, not in so many words he wouldn't, because Wilkes too much of a gentleman. Yeah, but you chose to draw that conclusion. Is that how you usually justify stealing other people's husbands? The men are martyrs and the women are bitches. Just a minute, what the hell do you think I am? I should think it's perfectly obvious what I think you are, Mrs. Tanner. Is there a Mr. Tanner, by any chance? No. No. Listen, you've had your say. Now you'll listen to me for a minute. I suggest you keep your voice Don't down. come in here telling me what to do. I didn't ask you to come in and shout in the odds all over the place. I met Wilf in a perfectly innocent manner, through Mike Baldwin. I did him a favour. I thought he was a very nice man, and that was that. I didn't ask him to take it serious. I didn't ask him to take it more importantly than it was meant. I'm not trying to entice him. Oh, good God, he's a grown man. Yes, well, as far as his emotions are concerned, Wilfred's always been rather immature. I don't think there's anything immature about wanting out. 
And all of the reasons are at your door, lady, not mine. That's utter nonsense. Oh, I see. So he's perfectly happy before, was he? Look, my marriage is no concern of yours. You flaming well made it my concern. Only in so much as I want you He's out of it. left, you woman. He'll come back. The minute you disappear from the scene. It's not to do with me, but I'm certainly not holding the door open for him. I should have thought you'd fall over backwards, a woman of your age. Well, don't. You've got a hell of a nerve. I've got a right to fight for what's mine. Will's not yours. He's not been yours for years. All you want him for is what you can get out of him. Certainly, I... I value my material considerations. And I'm not about to lose them. Well, that's between you and him. I certainly don't want out out of him. And you won't get out. Not a brass farthing. Tell Wilfred for me, will you? Next time you see him. That if he persists in this foolish separation, it'll cost him. Every penny he's got. Bye. When he first told me about you, I thought he was coming it a bit. Now that I've met you, well, all I can say is I don't know the poor devil stuck it so long. Ooh, this room smells like a Turkish talking shop. And when were you last in one of them, Stanley? What are you fancying yourself up for? Listen, it wouldn't do you any harm if you paid a bit more attention to your personal grooming. What do you mean? I have a wash, don't I? Oh, yeah. And you've been known to have a bath once every blue moon with Hilda nagging at your hurricane force. It's just that women expect a little bit more effort than that, Stanley. Oh, so it's a woman, is it? Well, it certainly isn't a fella. You're ready, old bird. Her name is Marion, as you well know. She's not a bird. She happens to be my young lady and I'm very fond of her. If you're very fond of her, why do you give her all this codswell about being a tycoon and Mike Baldwin's place? Yeah, well, all that stupid misunderstanding was your idea, wasn't it? Wish I'd never started it now. Oh, I did, yeah. Well, I didn't know I'd want to see her again, did I? Well, I didn't know she'd want to keep coming back to the flaming flat. You're not taking the flat tonight, eh? Yeah, just one last time. Well, that's living dangerous, isn't it? Well, I've gone to the trouble of having the keys copied. I may as well have one last fling. And what? Oh, I don't know. I suppose I'll tell her the truth. Ah. Uh, tell her it was a big joke, you know. And I can hear her laughing as she says, ta-ta. Not necessarily. Look, you don't think she's falling for your aftershave, do you? She thinks she's got a tycoon. When she finds out she's got a dustman in Diggs in Coronation Street, you won't see her heels a dust, mate. I know. I know, women. Stanley, you're a cynic. No. Married. No, I'm not doing nothing. I'm glad you came. But Jeff was watching some war film on the telly, so I thought I'd just pop in and keep you company for a bit. You must get fed up sitting in on your own. Yeah, I do. Evenings are the worst. Well, you should go out sometimes. If you sit in here every night, you'll start growing fungus. Should mean getting a babysitter. Oh, well, that's a major problem. Oh, they couldn't even find the answer to that one on Mastermind. <laughs> Not that. Now, where would I go on my own? I'm neither fish nor fowl, me, am I? I my single girlfriends go out dancing. My married ones go out with their husbands. I don't. I always go out with my husband. Thursday night, I have a night out with the girls. Monday night, he goes out with the lads. We have done ever since we got married. Brian suggested that, but I didn't fancy it somehow. Why not? It gives you both a break. When he was here, I was happy just being with him. Well, he's not here now, Petal, so you just have to make do with me. Look, come out with us tomorrow night. Jeff can babysit for two kids just as easy as one. He'll not mind. And if you won't, there's always my mother. Oh, I, I don't know, Jackie. Never mind, I don't know, Jackie. You're coming. Well, where do you go? Oh, boogieing at the discotheque. Getting blind drunk, picking up any talent we can find. We go to the wine bar for a bowl of chilli and a natter. What do you think? It sounds very nice. Right, you're booked. You're coming and no more arguments. Oh, there's just one problem. Oh. I don't like chilli. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I brought these for you. Well, <laughs> not for you, really, more for the flat. <laughs> so? She had them left over. She let me have them, Chief. Well, she goes to the market again in the morning. Are you going to put me in water? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. What sort of a day have you had? Oh, so-so, you know. I suppose you've done a lot of deals. Uh, a few. You must get around a lot. Oh, yeah, you cover a fair charity in the day. And meet some very interesting people, I expect. You had a fair cross-section. What are you looking for? Well, I'm... I'm looking for a vase for these. Don't you know where you keep them? Yeah, well, this is early help, you know. She has this uh, habit of hiding things like that. <laughs> you should tell her, then. She probably takes advantage of you with you being a man living on your own. What's her name? Uh, Mrs Ogden. Oh, never mind that, pet. You can do it later. Come on. Come and sit down. Looking very pretty. Thank you. Not pretty enough to get offered a drink, though. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Ed. Well, it was just that uh, I didn't think I'd bother, like, because I've got a bit of an upset stomach, you know. Oh, you'll want a brandy. That'll settle you. My mum swears by it. Brandy? Yeah, you've got a bottle over there. Yeah, but... Five star. That's supposed to be the best, isn't it? Uh, yeah, they, they reckon it is, yeah. Trust you to have nothing but the best. Look, uh... Oh, no, pet. You lie there. If you're not feeling so good, I'll get them. I think I'll join you as well. I quite like brandy. Why can't he fetch around to our house if he's that smitten with her? Is he ashamed of us or something? No, of course not. Well, where's he took her tonight, then? Well, the cinema... Uh, what's he doing here? Well, he's entitled, isn't he? I thought he said he was going out tonight. Oh, yes, so he was. Hey, what happened to Nutsford then, Mr Baldwin? Nutsford, as far as I know, is where it has been for the last few hundred years. William Murray from London, if that's who you're referring to, didn't catch a train. Ah, oh, what a shame. After me ironing your shirt so nice and all. Then, mum, I'll have an early night change. Where are you going? Well, home, Stanley. Even an international playboy might like me has to put his head on his own pillar sometimes. Cheer up, Elsie. Get a sort itself out. Oh, yeah. Oh, heck. Well, oh. what's the matter now? Hey! Fat Lump's not up to his tricks, is he? No, that's daft. He can't be. I've got the keys. That's right, yeah. So what are you dodging about? Like you've got a ferret up your trousers for, Stanley. Well, well look, you, 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 you've got the drinks in there. I'll, I'll only be a minute. Where are you going? Well, I think I'll have the back door open. We don't want burglars, do we? Well, by the heck. If burglars find out worth pinching in our house, I'll gladly go halves with them. Aren't you glad we didn't go out? Say that again. Don't have to rush home, you know. How do you mean? You can relax, pet. You seem so tense. Here, I'll give you a neck massage. Hey. Come on. Is that nice? Yeah, fabulous. What are you doing? Uh, well, I'd just like to have things tidy, you know. You're worse than me, Auntie Dolly, you. And she's dusting under your plate while you're having your dinner. Yeah, well, while I'm on my feet, I might as well just wash these glasses too. Are you like this first thing in the morning as well? Well, I, I just like things in their place, you know. I bet you even wake up ready shaved. Maybe I'll have a chance to find out. Well, I've said I'm staying with my friend Karen. I can stay with Karen, but I don't have to. Hey, look, I'll get here. No! Yeah, yeah, it's here. It's for you. Hello? You what? When? Oh, flaming Nora. Yeah, no, thanks, mate. Yeah, thanks. Come on. Well, where are we going? It's my old Uncle Stanley. He's, uh, he's had a terrible shock. It could affect his heart. But, Pet, do I have to go?
show with you. I mean, I could stay here, love. No, this could be an all-night nice job, this Oh, love. I don't know. I think it sounds fascinating. A hobby that helps you to get to know the different lifestyles of people all over the country. That's right, Mrs. Walker. You see, only this morning, Eddie was chatting up this young lady, you know. You see, it widens one's horizons. Now, where was she from? The other side of Rosamond's. Oh, God, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, it's mine. You can't have your money. No, I know. It's disgusting. That's where she's from. Hello, look. She's got a tractor down. Well, you said you wanted to see me. I said tomorrow, didn't you? <coughs> you sounded pretty urgent on the phone, so I thought I'd best get round it up. This is the last place you should have come. A uh, small scotch, love, uh, yes. gin and tonic. Uh, one for yourself. Oh, thank uh, you. Fetch him over the table, can you? I will. Or should we go back to the house? Oh, it's too late now. Sit down. Well, Dorothy came round to the factory. With a zone off shotgun. No, this is serious. She shouted her mouth off in front of everybody. I'm sorry, love. I'll talk to her. You shouldn't have to put up with this. You mean you'll go back to her? Well, I never said that. Well, she said if you don't, she'll have you for every penny you've got. Can she? Well, the law doesn't favour the husband too much in these cases. She get half of everything. But knowing Dorothy, she's probably screaming for everything else she can get. Well, if you can't let that out. Well, I'll put up a fight, but, uh, well, that's the price I have to pay for my freedom. So be it. Well, you can't give up so much after a lifetime. I might be losing a hell of a lot, Elsie. But look what I have to gain. The Soap Hour continues with an action-packed Emmerdale Next on Plus, whilst over on Breeze, it's classic interiors.